Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Power to this world is Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. 
Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD Ryzen. That's a lot of work to keep done for Deathmaker. Let's bring it to a 2v1, but still a little bit too much to ask this time for Deathmaker. It's a great attempt, though, but open from heaven. This is just a game that keeps on giving. Someone's got headshots. That's Deathmaker, though, juggling the guns! Oh. But eventually, the weight of the Vandal will weigh heavy on the Shemaine. It is time to fight back. It is time for payback. It is time for glory. Arise, South Asia. It is time for Sky East Post Champion Series. We are ready. We are coming. Good afternoon, Chennai! I like the energy, of course. It's going to be a wonderful match. Not just one, but two of them. We had two crazy matches yesterday. Two giants coming out on top, which are going to be playing in the evening as a second game, which leads to one of the most exciting matches in the circuit, which we so lovingly call the Val Classico. But that's not it. That is not it. We have one more matchup coming, which is going to be the first one. And nobody knows this apart from the teams. It's called the Parsec Hill Derby. Who's going to mark that territory? Is it going to be Enigma? Is it going to be the Apes? We'll find out. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at the first team in question.
Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Enigma Gaming! You only stole in one. Huh? One like this, take it now. Yes, take it now. Give it to us too. One more. It's a brother. It's a brother. But you don't want to show brother in the match. In the match, one more. That's all he right there, expressing his love. But, as many people are watching at home, you, on land, you're a force to be reckoned with. On a good day, you cannot be touched. But if things go, start rolling south, it becomes difficult. But right now, what do you say for the team's preparation? Nothing. Like, it's uh, the mantra. जो पहले दिन से कि यू नो जस्ट गो हैव फन एक्सप्रेस योरसेल्फ एंड यू नो प्ले लाइक हाउ वी प्ले दैट्स इट हाउ यू प्ले दैट्स इट बट अ लॉट ऑफ सपोर्ट फॉर बोथ द टीम्स टुडे इट्स गोइंग बी इंटरेस्टिंग आई होप आई होप द क्राउड कैम्स आर एक्टिव एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू फोक्स वाचिंग एट होम कैन फील द एनर्जी बिकॉज़ इट्स इलेक्ट्रिक इन हियर बट सामने वाली टीम भी आएगी उनके फैंस को क्या कहेंगे आप uh i mean nothing uh, just support your team meda best win team jo acha khelega wo jeetega and uh, just ha hum log ke taraf tak aawaz aana chahiye itna zor se chillao feel hona chahiye chhati mein wonderful wonderful first of all good luck i'll take the mic no i'll do it properly good luck but ladies and gentlemen that's the first team but now let's have a look at the second team in question Gentlemen, give it up for the A Barmy! I love the energy over here, Vipul. Yeah. Yeah. किसको कितने लोगों को लेके आओ इट्स इवन दो इट्स लाइक 20 पीपल राइट नाउ इन योर जर्सी इज सिटिंग बट द एनर्जी इज इलेक्ट्रिक दैट्स व्हाई इट्स कॉल्ड द एप आर्मी वंडरफुल आई लव इट आई लव इट आई लव द एनर्जी आई लाइक हाउ हाउ दिस इज ऑल बीइंग बिल्ट अप वी ऑफ कोर्स हैव वन मोर स्पेशल सेगमेंट प्लान आई हैव गूसबम्स राइट नाउ जस्ट फीलिंग द एनर्जी बट हाउ आर द बॉयज प्रिपेयर्ड बिकॉज़ यू आर गोइंग अप अगेंस्ट एनिग्मा फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई मीन यू प्लेड अगेंस्ट देम बिफोर but abhi koi special preparation or is it just another day in the office just another day in the office just another day in the office do you have anything to say to the enigma fans because when aunty se pucha tha what will you tell the og fans lekin aap enigma fans ko kya kehna chahenge nothing i i, I mean just try to be louder than the a pami but i don't think you can oh i love the band i love the energy i'll take the mic away good luck for the match but we have one more thing planned i love the camaraderie between both these teams i would like to invite Jai and Yash from OG, and I would like to invite Aryaman, ladies and gentlemen. A huge round of applause for both, all three gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. Hey, go, Aryaman. I want to come to you first. So, calling this a Parsik Hill Derby. What's the backstory with this? So both our boot camps are actually right next to each other at Parsik Hill. Um, so you know, I mean, we we this is the first time we're going to be playing against each other, and we're going to be playing each other in the upper bracket final. It was a great feeling. So we were discussing before before the matches. You know, we should give it a name. We should make it interesting. We should be as make it as much fun as possible for the audience watching. We decided Parsik Hill Derby is a good way to go about it. Oh, that's wonderful. I like I like it. I like the rivalries which are being built up over here because it's not easy to do. All the players are pumped up as well. But if I could just come to you, yeah, show here, players. The audience, everybody's pumped up. Are you feeling the energy? Yes, I am. I think the Ape Army can hear me too. Let's go! That's wonderful. That's I think, wonderful. I think it's going to be an electric match. All the best to both the teams, and let the best team win. And yep. No, let's go to Ape. No, that's wonderful, Jay. Can I have a word, from, word with you as well? No, I think uh, in the last few days, both the teams are you know enjoying practicing together. Um, 
I think both the teams are pumped up. Uh, we qualified from the upper bracket, so you know we decided to uh, have this gesture on stage because BLT and Global have been dominating for years, and now there are new two teams who are going to be the future in the country. So yeah. No, oh, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful idea. You guys can go ahead and have the jersey exchange. I can help you with it if you need, need me to hold one. No, no, it's okay. The players can go in. So oh, that's wonderful. But, but, one second, before I let all of you folks go, I want to come to Ghost. Ghost, you had something to, to, to say to your team? Yeah, I definitely, definitely have something to say to them. Who? 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 So that's wonderful. You guys can have the, ha the handshake, settle in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what Sky Esports Champion Series is all about. Do not forget it's presented by AMD and powered by Router. But we'll talk about all of that. We have our panel ready, which is going to break the game down. So over to you folks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Sky Esports Champion Series. We've got some amazing games today. I mean, later on in the day, we have the Val Classico, Global Esports and Velocity. But now, for this particular game, I think we have a new name too. It's called the Parsicle Derby, and I think that's a very appropriate name. It fits it really well. Well, finally, we have got a new name for the battle between Team Enigma and Team Orangutan. I am Tanya, alongside me, it is Crips. We are extremely excited to discuss about this map. Yeah, sure, it is going to start in no time. But before that, what are your prediction scripts? Because this, is ha this has become a routine Ooh. pattern where we discuss about it. Who do you think is going to make a move? Because it is not just about the win. It is about the very first slot for the finals. Exactly. The stakes are super high over here. The team that wins this game gets a guaranteed slot into APAC. Now, at the start of the tournament, I predicted Orangutan versus Enigma in the Grand Finals. This is not the Grand Finals, but this is like the Upper Bracket Finals and they're meeting each other right now. So. Yeah, I think, I don't, I can't predict which team will win here, but what I can predict is whichever team loses will go into the lower bracket, beat everyone else, and we're going to see a rematch once again, OG versus Enigma in the finals. I think that's my prediction. Well, so what about the Well Classico then? Don't you think that we are going to witness any of either of those teams heading towards the final slot? Yeah. Whatever happens, happens for a reason and may yeah. the best team move ahead. And yeah. today the winning defies a lot more. Even if the team doesn't pick up the trophy, still they are going to be the part of APEC. So this lot is going to not only mean them the victory, but also going to mean them the future that they are yet to create. Exactly. A future where the Indian flag flies high over the APEC region. And to quote the words of Ghost over here, Velocity and Enigma, I'm sorry, Velocity and Global Esports have been dominating for quite a while now. It's time that these two new teams come in and try to show who's the boss now. It's about time that we upset the hierarchy of the Indian Valorant scene and I think this is the match that's going to set the standard for the future ahead. Well, the standards are high, hiring day by day because previously we only had three teams, two teams battling, winning, moving ahead, but now Orangutan and we must also appreciate the team Enigma because they are the undefeated victors by far. And mm. let's see if it is going to be the case of scenario still, if they are still going to be undefeated. Mm. On exactly. the other hand, if you talk about Team Orangutan, they are beating all the odds, beating all the teams, and they are the newest team created among the, among the entire lot. Though a few players us have been playing a little while, Vibor in person. I don't know how, but Vibor is doing the perfect IGLing required for Team OG. 
Yeah, and you gotta consider this, right? Orangutan is barely a few months yeah. old, and they're still doing so well. But then again, they're meeting a team, Enigma, which has been undefeated throughout the tournament. While both the teams have not lost a single match on the LAN event, but in phase two, Orangutan did lose a game. And Velocity, I'm sorry, uh, Enigma went undefeated uh, in the online phase as well as the LAN phase. So that tells you all you need to know about Enigma and what kind of a great form they are in. So while Enigma might be the clear favourites on paper over here, Orangutan, no matter what happens to them in this game, I think they can already be proud of themselves. They can keep their heads held up high. Never in the history of Valorant has it been possible where a team within a month wins a tournament like this. Well, month and a lot of grind. And ladies and gentlemen, we are here ahead with the map Pito between Team Orangutan and Enigma Gaming. Split, Breeze, Fracture, Bind. These are the four ma maps that we are not going to witness, but we are going to witness Icebox, Ascent and Haven. Well, talking about Icebox, Team Enigma has done a very good job on the map of Icebox. In particular, they have got a very good win ratio, but the win ratio is on the attacker's side. Here, what concerns me is they are initiating on the defender's side. Will they hmm. be able to defend the never losing title? Yeah, that's a good question. And unfortunately, I don't have an answer to what's going to happen on Icebox. That map is still up for grabs. But I am a little concerned about Ascent and Haven. Orangutan lost Ascent against Global Esports and Reckoning. Meanwhile, in Haven, they suffered defeat against Velocity in Phase 2. So, it may or may not look flawless, those last two maps. But Orangutan definitely have a chance, a good chance that too, to win Icebox. Yeah, sure. They do have a good chance to go ahead, win the map of Icebox. And then talk about the next map though. Uh, again, it is going to be the map of Ascent. Well, on paper, we very well know Orangutan have got uh, extra bit of winning percentage there. Mm. But then that percentage, how do, how do we compare it with Enigma? Because they are pretty new in terms of um, competing in the matches that they have played. But uh, I believe they have been doing pretty good on the attacker side. And now they are going to initiate on the defender side. There is a lot of switch happening. The team performing pretty good on the attacker side is going to initiate on the defender side. But I believe that should not matter much, at least not on the map of Ascent. Yeah, on the map of Ascent, it really shouldn't matter all that much, mm. right? It's a pretty neutral map. It's yeah. not like it's, you know, favoring one side a bit too much. And regardless of whoever starts on whichever side, this map is going to be so fair that nobody can predict what's going to happen. I mean, every single game on Ascent in this tournament so far has been extremely close. Either fringing on the borders of overtime or going into overtime and double, double triple overtime sometimes. So Ascent has been super, super volatile in this entire series. Haven on the other hand, now this is a little bit of a concern for me. Enigma on Haven are super strong and this is one of the first maps that they started playing on and they have almost never banned out Haven. They are super comfortable on a map like this and they face teams of all calibers on this one. Enigma on Haven are like a boa constrictor, a dangerous snake who likes to surround you from every direction possible and then just squeeze the life out of you as they you know, as they tighten their coil more and more. Well, talking about Team Rangtan here, I believe they are not going to get squeezed so easily because they they have squeezed several teams. I must also appreciate the way Team Rangtan has taken down several other teams, got into the first slot where they, they may win it out. And uh, it takes a lot of efforts to reach here. And I believe maybe they are new but they are functioning as equal as any other team in the circuit right now. And let's compare them with Enigma itself. Uh, on the map of Haven though, uh, again, on paper, it is for sure more percentage ratio to uh, inclining towards a uh, team Orangutan. Now Enigma has got a lot of experience. Just in case, if I have to see an overtime happening, I believe Ascent is the map where we hmm. can expect three to four overtimes at least. Yeah, definitely. Ascent is the game that's going to really drag out Kramer and Vivek's voices. <laughs> Those guys will be probably, you know, requiring more water and requiring more beverages in order to get through that one. But do you think it's going to be a three-mapper or will it end in the first two? 
well, it is going to be a three map without a doubt. There's mm. no second choice where the players are going to let it loose. Mm -hmm. And there, it, to no surprise, even in ice box, if we get to witness over time, because they are going to give 100% because as we talked about it, mm. the stakes are pretty high crypts mm. and they cannot afford to lose this one. They want to go very easily because once they fall into the lower brackets, they will have to have two more matches. Yeah. Now that is the long route towards uh, heading for the slot required. This is going to be the easier way. Easier, yet the most difficult one. Yeah, it's not going to be an easy way at all. I mean, there's difficulties all throughout and you're going to have to get through plenty of hurdles. The first hurdle being Icebox. And you know what ice does to you? It slows you down. That's what Orangutan have been doing lately. And this is very surprising for me, you know. They were the kind of team that goes on defaults, spreads out and gathers as much information as possible playing on their own individual skills. But yesterday against Global Esports, I saw them trying to slow things down by clumping up together mm -hmm. and camping one person. Like it happened in Breeze where SK Rossi and Hell Ranger were pushing towards A halls and they didn't show, like Orangutan didn't show their faces at all. And then all of a sudden, all five people peek at once. And I'm like, if that kind of stuff can happen in Breeze, it can easily happen in Icebox. That map is so much more conducive to surprise peaks and double, triple peaks. So Orangutan, they've been becoming very, very versatile lately. They've been changing their playstyle. And at this point, I don't even know what they're going to bring to the table. But what I do know is that Shooter is going to bring that big, massive operator. Well, big, massive operator, for sure, without a doubt. And also the stunning showstoppers. But what about raw fuel here? Is he going to go for the jet place or the chamber place? Talking about in particular on the map of Icebox, I believe he has been doing a commendable job as a chamber. He might go ahead and pick it up. But if you just talk about the ACS happening, it is so close. And uh, it, it literally is head to head without a doubt. If mm. you talk about KD ratio as well, it is so near. So comparing these two players, they are going to, I might, we might get to see these two players on the MVP cards as well because they look pretty equalized. Exactly. That's why these two players have been shown over here being compared to each other directly. They are the shining stars of their team. They are the tip of the spears. But is that tip going to be enough? They cannot be the entire spear, right? I mean, the stats might be similar for almost both of them. But the damage stats are super different. Like, Shooter has way more damage, like almost 10,000 more damage than Rawfuel. Now, that tells you exactly how much heavy lifting he does for the team. Even though Rawfuel doesn't always convert the round into a victory, Shooter almost always gets his team an advantage. But now, let's talk about the IGL, Antidote. He also happens to be the secondary operator for Team Enigma Gaming and if Raw Fuel's op isn't enough then he will also pick it up. Raw Fuel with an operator is already massive damage to the opponent and I believe if he is also functioning exactly as required for the team and if picks up the operator they can bulldoze, steamroll the opponent but on the other hand we must also say Shooter is not going to allow everything so easily but coming back to Antidote he has got pretty good stats, ACS of 224, kills 207, every uh, round he has managed to get more than one kill and has been a lot assistive as well. So that is also going to get counted, if he gets one kill, sure he does, but he also lends a lot of damage to other players, so that assistive frags are also going to get counted and he is, he is shouldering his team, his, his sense of responsibility that these two players are the ones where you can go ahead, grab a hold on to them and get the frags converted and Antidote is doing a commendable work for his team. But uh, what do you think on the map of Icebox? How will Antidote go for the agent pick? I think he's going to probably pick up something along the lines of a Viper. If he doesn't pick it up himself, he'll probably try and help his team out with the Sentinels. Now, my concern over here is how can you let an IGL frag so much? This guy has an impressive amount of KD and uh, ACS. Usually IGLs, they aren't expected to frag. If they can, well then that's amazing, but they aren't expected to, right? Antidote over here, he defies all those odds. He doesn't even mind being the first person to rush into the site, even if that means that results in his death. And sometimes he uses it to his advantage, right? He goes in first. If he dies, 
then it gives him more bandwidth to look about his teammates, to think about what they're doing and proceed to give call-outs. So even if he is dead, beyond the grave, he helps his team out quite a lot. Well, buried six feet under, yet always there to support, and that is what exactly makes him the ideal for the team. Not his bodily presence, but his mind presence matters a lot, and uh, he, uh, he is doing a pretty good job at that. Uh, in that perspective, but we must also talk about the top five draggers of phase three during playoffs. SK Rossi standing on number one position with a total of 19, 19 points of MVP, Nine, 19 MVP, MVP titles. MVP, yeah, MVP titles kills 384. Nobody is even nearing to it. No doubt, we do see that maker almost nearing, but still, the buffer is way too high. Next, it is lightning fast coming in from the side of Global Esports. Then we can see Revenant, Knight Rider, GE G skills. Now, Krip, how do you feel about it? Top five fraggers out of which he comes in from Global Esports. Oh, man. I mean, here I was thinking that Orangutan and Enigma will go to the finals. But after looking at these stats, after seeing three of the members of Global Esports be in the top five, it kind of changes my mind. I really feel like these guys are in good form. But then, almost every single game that Global Esports have faced, it has been super, super close. So that's probably why these guys have been able to stat pad and get more kills than anyone else. What I am not surprised by is the fact that SK Rossi and Deathmaker are on top. That was kind of expected. But what is surprising is that not a single member of Enigma, <laughs> nor a single member of Orangutan is on this list. How on earth are you telling me that Raw Fuel or Shooter aren't able to keep up with these people. Now, that's kind of hard to believe. Well, that is pretty shocking. I know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they should, at least one of the players should have been on the top five. But also what catches my eyes is Death, Deathmaker on position to sure. But look at his headshot percentage, which is mm -hmm. way beyond what SK Rossi has. I don't know if that is considered inclusive of the tour day force strike that uh, Rossi takes. But 30% and above of headshot, headshot ratio is godliness in himself. Coming exactly. in from the side of Team Velocity. Now we are going to talk about the player of Orangutan, Vibor, the legend for the team. And on Icebox, we are going to witness Vibor as Viper. There's no second opinion there. Very good massive kill, kill that ratio of one frag and uh, headshot ratio of 24%. Everything and is pretty clean, isn't it? Yeah, this guy is a clean player. He's got cleanliness written all over him. You'll never see him panic. I have never seen him even break a sweat, never even frown. And this guy, you know, we always make jokes about YB being the poker face guy. Mm. Well, this guy is the second poker face oh. guy. He almost never shows any signs of stress. And that's the best part about him, right? When this guy was playing in Velocity, he was the default sentinel of the team. And he was pretty aggressive for a sentinel player. But now in Orangutan, he's doing all the other roles as well. He's playing as the controller in certain maps, Viper in Icebox and Breeze. He's playing as the Breach in certain smaller maps, like let's say Bind, Split and whatnot. I mean, Orangutan almost never plays Split, no. they always ban it. But whenever they are in Bind or let's say somewhere in Ascent, this guy doesn't mind picking up the Breach. So maybe we'll get to see him on that one. For sure, he is also going for a KO pick sometimes and especially mm. I believe he's going to go for KO on the map of Ascent where we are expecting an OT happening, not only OT, mm. OTs over OTs. Let's see how everything is going to pan out in the next map but Vibor definitely, you can call him the second poker face. I just had conversation with the coach of Team Enigma YB, I was asking, mm. how are you feeling for the day? He said, I'm well prepped. Then mm. I asked, that's a pretty good answer and I was talking to the teammates as well. How is your coach with you? Is he strict? Is he not? And why he was just standing? Uh, he was just standing by me. He said, uh, "Okay, ask all the teammates." And what teammates said, he is pretty strict at the time of practice, and then he's all fun guy. So I said, "I'm watching him for the very first time, smiling and jolly." Yeah, exactly, right? Whenever we see him on the camera, whenever he's sitting in the coaching booth, he's in the zone. He's fully focused, so he'll just be sitting like, "That's it." Just standing there, absolutely doing nothing, just chin, uh, hand on chin and just fully focused. But outside the guy, out, outside the coaching booth, if you see him, he'll never even walk straight. He'll always be jumping around, dancing, talking to his friends and, you know, just being an overall happy person. Uh, and over to that, what, what Antidote said, 
will play expressive and mm. th that is what it is they are yeah. going to make sure they express themselves maybe yb is not going to express but the players are going to express their play style and have fun because ultimately whatever the goal is sure it is serious sure it is of the priority nonetheless having fun and enjoying what you do is equally important oh no now some of you guys might have noticed that the reason we aren't able to start the game just yet is because shooter is currently facing internet issues all his teammates are there on the venue they're just sitting over here readying practicing except for ghost he's chilling he's just he's put his head down on the table and he's just trying to relax as much as he can meanwhile enigma gaming i mean i'm sure they want to have a fair fight but if shooter doesn't come in the next 15 minutes then enigma gaming might be getting the first map for free i mean while enigma should be happy about this i'm sure that this is not the way in which they want to no. win they are pretty proper sportsmen and uh, without shooter team orangutan will be already shaky enough and uh, let's wait and watch how the things are going to end up by the uh, by by the start of the match or yeah. it is going to are we going to miss the very first match internet issues are massive for the online game hmm. and wo i always enjoy watching shooter uh, the gaming chair with a shooter t-shirt play yeah. there how yeah. emotional it is how bond how yeah. strong bond does it show there exactly he might not be on the venue but he's there in spirit what else i like about the stage other than the shooter jersey are the soft toys that these players bring yeah. in now Andy Road has a tiger, a soft toy which was given to him by his girlfriend. Oh. He also places three small toys just underneath his monitor stand. One of them is a little Pikachu keychain, again gifted to him by his girlfriend. One of them is uh, a flash toy, uh, the, the 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 Marvel, uh, no not the Marvel, I'm sorry, the DC Flash, uh, the one the speedster. He got that toy as a Kinder Joy toy when he okay. first landed in Mumbai in his first boot camp and he's kept it with him ever since. And the third is a little Ganesha idol. So he keeps all these ornaments on his desk and they give him power. And almost every member of Enigma Gaming has soft toys like these. Once the camera pans to them, we'll take a look. You can see the tiger in front of Antidote. Then uh, surprisingly, RVK has a little monkey a monkey soft toy so when i asked him about it why do you have a monkey when you're facing orangutan and you know what he tells me he's like you need an ape to beat an ape whoa that's pretty <laughs> i don't yeah, know that's how a, that's a cool dialogue yeah, right sure it is he is here to beat an ape so he's keep petting one making yeah. it easier for him hmm. and uh, let's see how are the things going to pan out but i do do like the way they want to have that homely feel hmm. on the land as well they are carrying their soft toys the keychains whatever they believe in mm. and ultimately it is about the belief what you believe in mm. and if it makes them feel stronger if they if that makes them feel this is going to close them up towards the victory so why not exactly and on that monkey toy he has a little badge you know those pin up badges yeah, you yeah. put on your jacket and that badge has the blaze logo on it blaze was the team in which he first got an opportunity to play professionally and at that time he was playing alongside mazel who's currently in vitali sports mm -hmm. not in this tournament but yeah, he got his first break with that team. Then he was picked up by all the other teams and noticed by everyone else. And he's like, yeah, I am never going to forget my roots. I started off as nobody. Right now I'm playing on the biggest stage in Indian Valorant scene and I have a chance to go internationally represent my country. And boy, I, I, I'm just so proud of this guy. How the growth step by step. Exactly, inch yeah. Inch by inch, he has created his career so nicely and it takes the effort. He, I believe he have had his nightmares he have had his good days and everything crossing by now he's on the platform just a day away to get the slot in the exactly. apex yeah well i would love to see these guys in action and uh, let's see what these guys are up to right now excali has always been up to some cool shenanigans whether it's the ko whether it's the race this guy is so on point with not just the same but also his utility Half of his damage comes from just those ordinances. This is a very unique stat, you know. We may not be able to see the amount of damage he's caused just by utility, but this guy is always creating impact. 
And even though he sometimes plays the initiator, his initiator game is also more or less like a duelist. Yeah, He's a super aggressive guy. He knows when to push. And whenever he does push, whether or not he gets a kill, he will at least create space for his team by hook or by crook. And that is what is going to matter. You have to win a round, you have to win a, win a map. You have to win the match and you have to win the slot. So much on the winning streak today and everything you have to get it by hook or by crook and may, and everything is going to go by the crook scripts i don't feel oh, yeah. that the fishes are going to open up the mouth and you're going to carry everything by the hook very easily on fishing everybody is going to keep their mouth closed so don't they don't get hooked but everything is crooked yeah but they will need to open their mouths to be on comms <laughs> yeah I, I i and i really hope that comms are on point for both these teams Enigma are pretty chill with their comms, you know, you'll never see them panic unless they're in like an overtime situation. But Orangutan, to some extent, I feel like they have some chaos in their comms. Um, I don't even blame them because two of their teammates, I'm sorry, not two, I'm three of their teammates are from out of country. Talking about chaos hmm. from the team Orangutan. Hmm. The audience creating the chaos with the sounds of who, who. That is pretty chaotic and entertaining oh, as course, well. Of it, course. It really gives me the vibe. I wish I could go there and cheer as well, as equally, because on the analyst desk, if I do that, you're going to be feeling what is happening here. We are yet to discuss the teams that we are cheering for a team or no. But yeah, fear the Enigma and Ape Army. These are the two fans in the land studio and outside at your home. Keep on cheering for your favorite teams and players and continue with what you were saying about the chaotic comms by Orangutan. Yeah, I mean, one of their players is not even next to them. He's having internet issues, poor guy is sitting in Karachi, while the four of those teammates are in Pakistan over here. So, the fact that he's not right next to you itself creates a little bit of chaos. Secondly, they have an international lineup. Five players from mm -hmm. four different countries. They've got a Korean player, a Filipino, a Pakistani and two Indians. So naturally, the language barrier is going to be a factor. I hope they're able to sort out all those issues and find a way to communicate effectively. But it's just been a month and I'm sure that a month is not enough time for a team to nail down communications to perfection. They're still learning, they're still evolving. And I really hope that Orangutan are able to step in with their A game today because they're going to need everything to be on point if they want to beat a structured and disciplined team like Enigma. Well, when you say A game, I believe Enigma has A split already without hmm. losing a single match. So now, pulling an A card against an A team, how do you feel about it? I think the other A required over here is the Ape. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Those who understood, they sure did. <laughs> well, um, the monkey brain in Orangutan is kind of what makes them unique, right? Uh, we've been chilling with the players, mm. having breakfast, dinner and everything else with them and we keep talking about who do you think is going to win and etc, etc. And while they will always say, oh yeah, my team's going to win, almost every team has underestimated Orangutan and yeah. they've paid the price for it. I kind of feel that Orangutan will make it to the finals because they are new. And hold on, I know this is going to sound really dumb when I say it, but bear with me. The fact that they are new, the fact that they haven't practiced enough is the exact reason why they'll win. Why is that? It's because they will end up relying on their individual instinct more than the practice that they have yeah. done. And while you can shut down certain strats, while you can counter certain combinations, while you can outmaneuver and outbrain whatever a coach has taught you, you cannot shut down instinct. You cannot shut down instinct and they have got not only six cents, they have got seventh sense as well. I the don't know. ape sense. The mm. ape sense yeah. would be the apt word there. L ladies and gentlemen, now the seventh sense is going to come into the action in no time. But uh, coming back to Team Enigma, this is the team who has been following the ritual very logically or what mm -hmm. we call ex te textbook friendly would be the mm. apt word here. 
so they have been doing it very nicely, very wisely. But talking about the team orangutan here in phase two as well, because they have they had to qualify through phase one hmm. to get the slot here. Exactly. Unlike other teams who have got the slot immediately due to their performance, previous performances. So now the study with the current patch, I believe opponent team should have that study. But every single time, team OG are getting unpredictable. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes them such a good team, right? Because they're unpredictable, they cannot be countered. So the only thing that you need to focus on is just playing your own game. And that's what Enigma bring to the table. I think this is also one of the primary differences between a team like Global Esports and Enigma. Global Esports love to counter their opponents. Enigma, on the other hand, they don't necessarily look to counter, but they want to enforce their own playstyle and kind of force the opponent to confirm to their norms, confirm to their kind of playstyle and adapt around it. And They're not the ones who adapt, they make you adapt. And once you cross the line, yeah. they clean wipe you and win the round. And yeah. that is the Enigma and that is what they are making it. That half year to enter our servers, to enter our circles and it's not going to be any easier but Talking about Orangutan, they are pretty fearless as well. We have seen hmm. them play. We have seen them play over time now. No doubt we have mentioned this over and over time. The newest form team seeding for the finals. But still, the play set, they are very unpredictable. But sometimes what they do is the repetitive moves. That is one they get caught off guard. And I believe for the stakes too high, they are going to open up all the cards. Except two, which they are going to use in, in the grand finals. And what do you think those two cards are? They have never played textbook. Hmm. So maybe they are going to adapt into some new formation which is least expected during the grand final. So that those two cards will be safe for the finals. Rest all is going to be open. Same comes for Team Enigma. They are also not going to save anything. Because sure you want to qualify and if it, if it calls out to, to open up all your play skills, why not? Because slot is of the importance. Yeah, exactly. The sort is the most important thing over here and that's what the teams are competing for. But I love the fact that you mentioned the textbook and I kind of want to bring it up. Enigma are the kind of team that define what the textbook should be like. They read the textbook, ratify it <laughs> and then they're like, nah, this is not good enough. This is one of those old 2012 textbooks which were created by the education board and it's not relevant to helping you find a job or in this case a slot. So they make their own notes. Yes. They modify that stuff. And that's what I like the most about them, right? They copy certain strats from teams like Paper Rex, from teams like uh, Liquid, but then they mix the two. I mean, if you take a look at a team like Paper Rex, they're such a wild and energetic team. I would usually use Orangutan as an example, which is comparable to Paper Rex, because they're also wild and individualistic. Yeah, yeah. But then you take a look at any other team, like maybe, let's say, Crew or Fnatic or Liquid. These guys are a little more disciplined, right? That's what Enigma does. They take those strats and they marry them with the wild play style of Paper X and they create a hybrid of sorts which is suitable for them. And while Orangutan can also easily copy strats from something or the other, they can't exactly enforce it because the play styles of their own players will be vastly different. So Enigma do that really well. They find a fine balance between a disciplined and a chaotic play style. And they keep varying that balance meter. They keep tilting back and forth between the two, depending on whoever they're up against or whatever the situation is. And talking about textbook again, what I like the most is they create their own textbook. They are readable, but hmm. every single time they have an update there, yeah. which is and a massive miss on the other side. Exactly. And those textbooks are only readable to the Enigma players. Yes. Anyone else <laughs> who tries to read them, it will be like gibberish. It will be encrypted. Yeah, it is going to be encrypted and we really don't know what that language is created by Team hmm. Enigma. So they might be, they, they can read some of the tactics, indeed more than some of the tactics, but retaliating those is going to be a long run. Ladies and gentlemen, Shooter is ready with the internet issues being resolved. We are pretty excited. I hope you are too. And by the way, viewers, whom are you cheering for? Make sure you hit it in the comment section about you are cheering the ape army go ahead spam some apes if you are cheering for team enigma make sure you go for the hashtag fear the enigma definitely go ahead and show some love on the internet as well because over here in the arena i'm not sure if you can hear them but the love is in abundance and, and this uh, this is kind of a chant now as soon as they see the yeah. players rolling they start singing these chants 
and this these chants matters oh yeah the definitely the energy the positive vibes they send it all the way from the audience towards the stage exactly and these chants are so loud that even my microphone is not louder than them <laughs> like they're beating technology with their sheer primal energy so that that that's the kind of stuff that uh, orangutan are really good with now Absolutely. let's go ahead and take a look at the love in the arena and talking about energy crips what better way than to show this energy and as soon as the camera is facing them they got a little conscious and they stopped dancing i didn't want that i wanted audience to see how they are dancing oh i think they're going to dance they're going to do push ups salty literally did that the content creator for uh, orangutan said that he will do as many push ups as many kills host gets and uh, yeah good luck for his arms but let's see if he can do it again or not so while orangutan are ready now we should be getting into the agent selection pretty soon for ice box although before we get in there i have a few things that i've noted down that i want to talk about the last time orangutan faced global esports mm -hmm. they had only one weakness orangutan were getting cut off in their rotations because global esports was taking mid control first so every time someone tried to go from a to b or try to rotate global esports were punishing those rotations i hope that they don't fall into the same trap with enigma well i believe the traps are also going to get broken today records are going to get broken today and records are meant to be broken let's yeah. see who breaks the record if at all a team enigma is taken down by orangutan it is going to break the records about the newest team formed and getting the first slot in the grand finals and if not enigma has done it uh, they are undefeated into the entire scs season so let's see if they are going to continue their legacy of never losing a single round You know what I love the most the guy wearing that ape mask. I mean their jerseys are cool, their flags are amazing, but that mask man. That is the best part about it. <laughs> He's thumping his chest so loudly like a that's not even a yeah, exactly, orangutan. Yeah, exactly, that's not even a orangutan. That's a, that's a gorilla right there. That Monkeys, chipmunks, orangutans, gorillas, King Kong. <laughs> the entirety of the Homo sapien uh, breed, the genome, is gonna descend down onto the servers today and give us some wild, wild Valorant action. And at this point, orangutan and Enigma are just basically having a scream off. Let's see who can be louder. I think it's about time we stop talking and we just let them do the screaming. That's that itself is so enigmatic and so energetic. The tiff between the audience, the tiff between two different teams is already on and they do tend to tease each other. They tend to tease each other pretty quick about the winning round about the losing rounds. and this is going to continue for the entire map and that is really heart touching about how you support your players oh these chants would you want to sing the chant as well uh, i would but not here not in the analyst panel not right now maybe later on after vivek and kramer take over i'll go take a look at the audience and chant a few lines with them i hope i don't lose my voice though <laughs> Voice is a lot of action following for the day for the event. Still, we do have three more days to go, but I believe mm. today is going to be one of the most exerting days about who gets the first slot, and that is going to be very, very impressive if Team OG goes ahead and grabs the slot. But for Team Enigma, let's see if they are going to do it. It is going to be a clean sweep entry in the grand finals. Oh, but do you think it can be a clean sweep? Do you think it can be a two nil? Ah, not very really sure about two nil though, but they can do it. Uh, they have had one map loss for sure. They haven't been like two zero into into the entire phase two segment. Mm -hmm. They have lost a match. Uh, they have lost a map, but never a match. So even if it is two one score line, Enigma shall be able to pull it through. Hmm. Now the question still remains: How easy or difficult Ape Army is going to be to tackle? Because those unpredictable moves are the question marks. that not even we can read enigma gaming up pretty versatile you know even on simple maps like ascent they actively hunt for information 
whether it's by committing their bodies, whether it's pushing out one side or by just using utility, they will always make the first move. And they only play passively if they realize that the enemy team has like an eco round or they'll go for some experimental push or if they have secured the man advantage and then they just want to fall back and retain it. That's the only time these guys are going to play passively. I don't see any passive approach coming in from either of their side because the way these players are looking all set, all charged, over hyped, over excited and the excitement is coming all the way from the audience part because the way they are cheering the teams, that is commendable and they're not even losing their voice once we roll we tend to have that effect but i believe the cheering and the victory is giving them the inner power to follow it over and over time exactly another thing that i want to point out about enemy gaming's playstyle is that they have this really cool push and pull dynamic if they're gonna push out of um, let's say one of these sides let's say if they push out of a main the b players will pay passive and they will just keep tabs on mid if they push out of B, then they'll play passively on A. And they never over-regress. They will never try to push out both the sides recklessly. And they know when to fall back. That's the best part about Enigma, right? A lot of these teams have this aggressive playstyle and they know when to push. But Enigma Gaming, they're not like Spartans. They don't believe that falling back will bring them dishonor. They know when to retreat and cut their losses short. And it's that retention of the advantage that's going to bring Enigma Gaming the trophy home. Well, full force push. Today we are going to see the game of every aspect and every angle, whatever is as and when required, but still they are going to still stick to the same play pattern. They are not going to change it. They are going to make some tweaks towards their textbook play set about how they require to change. change. Because we have seen Team Enigma losing two to three consecutive rounds they tend to bring something unique, then they go for the three consecutive rounds of win. So losing two rounds and winning three rounds is just like stepping one step behind and moving two steps ahead. Yeah, and it's important to keep a step ahead. It's important to not lose the economic battle in the first place. And uh, that's exactly why I think Enigma Gaming can have the edge over here today because their economic game and their momentum can be really strong once they start to snowball. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the players have loaded into the server. Shooter is back. So is their coach and their manager. All the managerial staff of both the teams are actively cheering for their boys. And very soon, we'll be taking a look at what agents these guys have selected for themselves. Agents is also going to break up pretty easily. Oh, 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 wait. Hades got his own jersey, his own Enigma jersey. Hades happens to be like the operations manager of Rangadan Gaming and Enigma gave him a proper jersey with his name printed on it. Unlike the jersey exchange that happened on stage, which only had the default names of the players. Mm -hmm. So this means they've got them created for him specially. That's the love between these teams. And even though they are going to fight to the death with each other, they love each other to bits. Well, battle on the stage, friends and family beyond that. And that is what matters. They are the family of the esports community and very well renowned names now and uh, i really appreciate the way head is also going ahead cheering for the opposite team and the, I, I believe uh, while uh, ho our host mamba was just discussing about how you are going to perform they are neighboring boot camps and they have never performed against each other so let's see how the performing prevails and here are some content content creators for team enigma cheering for their team as well I kind of feel like Orangutan are a little more energetic, energetic and a little louder. It's probably that ape energy flowing through their veins, but I'm sure the Enigma guys will start screaming when their team starts to perform. Now, as we head into Icebox, the agent selections will be up on your screen soon, but since this is one of those maps which has been like a staple for a long time, I'm not expecting wildly different agent selections. We kind of know what picks Enigma will do because we've seen them do it so many times before. Orangutan may be able to throw in a surprise or two. Well, now all the fun part is over. There is a little bit of silence about 
or maybe just the aim practice happening right before mm. the bat and they need to do it they need to do it they don't want to miss that head shot they don't want to miss any single shot let alone head shot whatever they can connect is going to chip off a damage and that damage can be converted into a frag yeah this is the calm before the storm the chanting will stop but only momentarily only to get louder as the body start to hit the floor as the blood starts to be drawn drop by drop they are going to draw the blood blood bath will be a sure scene but i would want to see who wins the first crystal round because that is where exactly my eyes always are um, and i'll tell you why because first pistol round it always used to be the second consecutive round won by the same team but now the strategies have been countered the teams who are losing the pistol round are also forcing themselves with the specter to equalize so now the second consecutive round still is not going to be a sure shot thing judging from excali's screen i think he's playing kale Oh, never mind. We don't need to wait. We can see that already. So we've got the Killjoy, Sage, Viper, Sova, and Jet. Shooter, obviously, on Jet, which isn't a surprise. So Rangadan have also gone for more or less staple picks. No surprises coming in from them. Although uh, the Killjoy wasn't a surprise pick, it's because they haven't really adapted to the chamber playstyle yet. But Rofuel is more than comfortable with the chamber, and Excali indeed is on the KO. So, yep. We have a double sentinel on the side of a Rangutan. Meanwhile, on the side of Enigma, we've got a double initiator. Let's see uh, if these guys can make a difference because they also have a double sentinel too. Absolutely no duelists on the side of Team Enigma. So that basically means Rafael is going to be a pseudo duelist. Yeah, sure. Solo duelist, how they are going to perform. And I do like the way with the double sentinel, double initiator. And now this is the tweak that we were talking about. This is the switch that we were talking about. Enigma creates their own textbook. And this is the chapter for the day, the map of Icebox, where they are creating the lineup of Asian selection, which they prefer playing. And they are pretty sure about they will be able to win it. And on the other hand, if we again talk about Team Orangutan, uh, they are also not being something something unique and uh, ladies and gentlemen I would really want to welcome Krema the caster for the map of Icebox and alongside him I also welcome Vivek to cast the match where Krema and well, uh, Vivek please go ahead as the countdown begins who 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 who? Who? Welcome as Orangutan take on Enigma. We're in our upper bracket match here. The winner will be guaranteed a spot at VCT APAC. I cannot think of a better prize for what is going to be an absolute bloodbath of a match over on Icebox to start. I'm your Castle Crabber 3. I'm joined by the wonderful Vivek. Would you make of this one, bud? We'll get them in just a moment. As <laughs> Rangutang, they start with an early list over to B. She set them to lead that charge. Not quite able to catch out anyone just yet, though. As Rawfuel. Oh, opening. Shooter. Clean opening. Tries to double down. It's Cali. Not able to double down. It's Shooter to continue a bit of a magnanimous opening. But Antidote's back on the response to Sage being a true battle Sage as Ghost gets the next say of the matter. Three on two. Spike down. And they've the retake now under way here. The Swarm Grenade's already in position for Persia, making this retake really difficult for Enigma. But luckily, while well, Rexy is going to be hacking at a wall, we've got a Sage on a bit of a flank here. Vibor. First player, or Vibor, first player, let's take this engagement, sees the Adron coming, spotted out by it, Rexy not quite able to uh, guard too much control though with the resistance of the Sage, it's going to be down to Rexy to try and lead the opening to Shock Dart, won't quite land, however, where Shock Dart fails, where Arrows fails, will it do that bit better, Vibor able to get that first kill, Sage will down, Antidote trying to stick that blood halfway down, Death from above, the kills are trying to catch him out, but it's Ghost! deliver the final blow as a rag attack take the pistol round going 1-0 into the lead 
great stuff coming up from Orangutan. They needed that momentum, Krema. They wanted to get off to a good start, and winning your pistol on offense is crucial. There's a fun little statistic about Orangutan, and this is something uh, they were telling me earlier, that Icebox is their strongest map. The other fun statistic is that they've never played Fracture. I was doing research for this, Krema. I learned a lot about apes as a species. There are over 260 varieties of apes, but there's not a single game that Orangutan have played on Fracture. No data on that, and no luck for Anti as he gets shut down immediately. A simple, straightforward round for the side of Orangutan, but will Anti and the boys on Enigma let them have it? There's only a couple of sheriffs here or there. It's certainly not going to be an easy endeavor for Enigma here. Rough fuel on the headhunter. This will take a bit of early damage. As Vivor shuts down Excali, there's the opening for that to Rangatang once, and from then on out, it's One just still white to wash. Every oh. member of Enigma collapses. Tesseract to give, deliver that final blow, and a Rangatang, they take the anti eco without taking even a grimace of damage there. Yeah, solid stuff coming out from them, making anti ecos look very easy. Tremor, I now consider you one of us in South Asia. And there is a certain thing that's a ritual in South Asia, which is right. winning anti-ecos and struggling in anti-ecos. This has always been an issue for Indian teams. And uh, to just see Orangutan win it with such consummate ease is really refreshing. Look at the confidence on Shooter as well. He picks up a Vandal. He, he's not buying a Marshal. He's not saving for the Operator. He's not even playing with a Spectre. He's going straight for the Vandal in the second round, and now Orangutan are going straight for A. The Viper wall committed, but there's a Viper that they need to get past. Oh, it's it's RVK, tucked away in the back of sight, waiting patiently. Recon gets thrown out. Mind you, the Recon didn't quite Ooh. tag RVK, but the Dillities are pushing him out of that corner. He's holding. RVK will have his day, have a say, with the Bulldog, with the Classic. He's found two crucial kills, and he's nearly put in Enigma with a fighting remaining. chance in this round. Spike and Excal and Raw Fuel will ensure that they get oh, what they need to win this Ooh. round. Enigma punch back. It's early days. And if these rounds are any indication of this series, Crema, it's going to be hype as heck. Oh my god, that was an incredible round there from um, from, from uh, RVK particularly. How does he stay alive for that long? Able to be caught out backside. At that point, one kills your objective, right? You kill one, awesome. If not, don't worry, you were overwhelmed. The fact he's able to not kill one, but two, and the second one with a classic is just insane. And that's brought enough time for the rotations to come in. And for Enigma, it was a very swift cleanup past that. However, they are still around down. They are moving against the full by now of Orangutan. Vandals on every single member. Antidote two away from the Resurrection. Vibble two away from the Viper's Pit. Same for RVK. I would actually really like to see some really early usages of these Viper's Pits. Because mm -hmm. particularly on Icebox, they can just render a site off limits. Yes, you can do that towards me as well as me. Uh, we do see a lot of Vipers do that. Uh, obviously, on offense, you want it for your post plant. Rarely do we see it as a means to take a side. RVK, this man has no fear. Again, in a one and done situation. This time, he gets Take's one light. and he's done. Doesn't get two. But more importantly, Orangutan have the numbers advantage. And apes together, apes together, Krema, they're strong. And these apes are storming the side. Rexy getting pushed out. The snake fight, it hurts. Rexy gets one. But Ghost will pull it back. Ghost takes out Rexy. Raw fuel the chamber dead. And it's one man. Man, Excali. One man on a mission, Kramer. How much can he do? You will not kill oh, my ally. A lot, but one v three. That's certainly going to make it a bit more difficult, isn't it? Excali is going to be able to detect a fair few players with that dagger, and it may be a bit of a false positive here because the Rangatang they've set their gaze back to B. But Excali's read this. What a read from Excali! It's instead going back to this B site, and without, I don't think they have a safe wall, so being able to plant here is going to be really damn difficult. Excali can punish this in heartbeat. He out the first player. There's the opening. Oh my God! With this is winnable. He's read the rotation of Persia. There's the second. On for the third now. It's down to Ghost. A one versus one against the likes of Excali. And Super Cali goes ballistic. But Orangutan is just atrocious. A one versus three. Shut down by Excali. And what a way to show Orangutan that they are ready. That was absolute nuts. Excali on a spree. 
gets not one, not two, but three. Sure, bloodlust in his eyes, color in his hair, and a little bit of good cheer everywhere as both these teams and their fans are really hyping up the arena. Crema, earlier on, you weren't able to hear the audience. But now, I'm pretty sure you're not able to hear me over the audience. And that's very true. Do you know how long I've been holding on to that Super Cali with Ballistic line? I've, I've had that prepped and ready for eight months. <laughs> I am so happy we got to use it. I was terrified that Enigma, every player would do well. And so Cali doesn't get to have a standout performance. I'm so happy. <laughs> like, I don't care about the outcome of the series now. We, we can end it here. <laughs> and I love the fact we're actually seeing a, a tactical timeout from Enigma afterwards as well. Really is... wanting a riot attack to sort of stew in their failure, which is a really, really strong psychological game. I mean, Kremer, you're holding on to your Zingers and Excali and the boys over on Enigma. They're holding on to their nerves. Great patience coming out from Excali. In a one-way feel like that, you get a read, but to read and rotate off that read that quickly is unusual. Great stuff coming out from Excali. Yeah. Enigma, they play like a team, Kremer, but they've got the individual brilliance as well. And that is really, really key. Um, do you want a translation, Kremer? Yes, please. Kal Ana, which means see you tomorrow, but that's basically because you're not doing anything today. So see you tomorrow. Wow. Wow. Well, that's uh, 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 Kali looking to prove that wrong. He's doing a lot today with Shooter looking to aggress. Brings out the late storm. Instantly going to be slowed off the back of the fragments as well. Now he has to be quite aggressive here. Caught out of rotation. Those players are able to punish it. Followed by Null Command, Kali looking to continue a heroic performance. Flashes four players, unable to kill any of them, eventually gets the first of it. He is traded by Persia, down to the three on three. Rotations of Enigma are there. They push their players on the back side of B here. And with Warfield also, wielding this operator for Orangutan, this may be a very difficult execution. Particularly now your Viper's dead. You should run. It is indeed difficult. I think Orangutan might want to wait. Uh, to see if they get anything with this lockdown. They could also wait for the recon bolt to cool down. Commit the recon bolt, get a little bit of information, but now they peek dry, they get the wall. Rockfield misses, uncharacteristic stuff coming out from him. That was a Spike sitter, planted. but Enigma can still recover. It's a 3v3 after plant, and now nobody's gonna oblige Rockfield. Nobody's gonna peek that operator. Tesseract has taken care of the enemy controller as RVK is dead. He's gonna watch from the sidelines. Nanocom's committed. Rockfield doesn't even get to fire a bullet. Tesseract so goddamn fast. Some people just justify a 360 hertz oh, monitor God, and Rexy yeah, making yeah, yeah. a case for the same. Two kills, now a 1v1. Enigma, they've clutched an insane round before. Can Rexy be an Excali? We'll have to wait, we'll have to watch. But now he's pushing wisely, pushing slyly. Rexy needs to win this duel oh and he's doing it! He's taking out Porsche! Oh my God! What? Again? I mean, Excali's mind is blown. Excali's like my clutch. I mimicked Excali's position there exactly. My head in my hands. What an opening from Enigma. Back to back. One versus threes. Oh my God. Vivek, we're only five rounds in. Absolutely. I need to change my pants, Krama. Just give me a minute. I, I think we need more Red Bull, dude. <laughs> this, is, this is incredible. And I put Enigma as my favorites to win this. But I did it with a pinch of salt, knowing full well a Rangatan can't be underestimated. But if Enigma are able to bring out 1v3s on command, what? Yeah, what do you do? What's the answer to that? Uh, just to put that round in context, the side of Orangutan had a numbers advantage. They got rid of Raw Fuel's operator. I believe Tesseract got another kill after that onto Vipor. And despite all of that, Rexy is still clutching it out. At the way tail end of that round, the last kill that Rexy needed, he had less than 30 points of hell to work with. This is sheer bonkers and orangutans. I mean, they aren't homo sapiens quite yet, but they know that they're up against a little bit more evolution favoring their opponents, and they need to evolve. They've called a tactical timeout, and they're going to figure things out. But if you ask me, Krema, they're not doing anything wrong as a team. It's just that Enigma are absolutely bonkers. 
What do you improve? You, you've ended every round in a three on one. That's really good. <laughs> it's like, how, what do you need to fix as well? Because they were on, they were on two verticalities taking that peak, that, that, that peak and it was still one. Right here. Tesseract being a little bit more passive now. The quarter force has come out from Enigma. This is accompanied by a fair few ults sort of in the bank. Both teams have their Vipers fit. Neither have used it early, which is kind of interesting here. As the Sheriff starts to slowly make some inroads over to me. Yeah, I mean, Vibor doesn't want to commit his, right? And RBK is going to commit his now on defense. They're still going to commit the safe wall and get a plant. He might not be ready for Tesseract. And indeed he is. And Tesseract has snuck into the Viper's pit. And he's bringing him down to the Phantom. The Sova finding an opening. But I want to remind you, Tema, the spike hasn't been planted. And Excali still on the server. Vibo taken down. The Viper still on offense. Not available. Rexy wants information. Will he find any? One play attack towards yellow. Rexy tagged himself. Both the Sovas and the exchanges. The Hunt is fully committed. Tesseract. Well. Gets a little bit of information. That's about it. 4v4. I want to read out the numbers because this is a numbers game. But when Excalion and Rexy are on fire, does it even matter? Teleport ready. More fuel. I'd be afraid opening here. 4 on 4. Still very winnable for Ryan. Well, both teams actually. That's right for the opening. Cali to trade. Raw fuel flashed off the angle. Can't engage just yet. Now to a two on two. Tesseract doing an admirable job of trading right now. But eventually, Cali finishes the job. Shooter in the 1v2 spots out the first. Switch to the second. Raw fuel on the 90 degree flick. Finishes off Shooter. A bullet straight to the cranium. And the only thing to be felt by Orangutan now is the cold embrace of death as Anima go 4 2 up. Having shown now that these guys not just they know how to retake. Oh yeah, they know how to retake. They're really feeling themselves. When you feel yourself individually, when when you have the confidence to make moves like that, when it's not one but the other, when it's not the other but yet another, that's when it doesn't get any better for any team. Enigma. They are uh, working with Antidote's ultimate. Antidote has been rather quiet so far, but it is a Sage. Not much really needed to be done. He did get a very effective Sage wall in that retake. Excali gets tagged. He's going to be pushed back. Is Shooter going to push forward on this? He's got the dash enabled, but he doesn't have any information anymore. The Owl Drone has done its bit. Orangutan keeps pressing D, but he is not too kind to them. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's a bit of the boo boo but the spike will get planted nonetheless. The spike is committed to the team. So much damage, and he's just being shot down and brought down by raw fuel. Shooter that Yul is dead, four members alive on either side. Orangutan in this afterplan, the Viper's pit committed, but there's the medic. The doctor's arrived, antidote. He's pulled Rexy back into the server. Boy, get up, go clutch. But Tesseract has got something to say. He's brought down RVK, 4v4, stale. All because of the Sage, they have priority in terms of numbers. Excali with the flash, who does he see? Well, he knows effectively where one player is, but it's Ghost Tesseract and well, some other players on the side of Enigma lining up the kill feed. It's again Raw Fuel. Raw Fuel on the verge of a clutch. Please, this is not okay. And Vibo says, enough is enough. Sit down, son. Sit down, stop clutching, because we're a Rangutan, and we're not going to get pushed over this easy. We can only see so many clutches, right? <laughs> we can only see so many 1v3s. And now we rang a tang and sort of shift back into control. You see all of them starting to get on their feet. The chance are coming out. They realize that actually, yes, a couple of 1v3s may be good, but it doesn't beat Tesseract, who currently is going 12 and 6 already. Another Hunter's Fury is available for him. And the, even in that run, he sort of adopted what was momentarily a lurking sober, which somehow he makes it work. Down to the eco for Enigma, a couple of sheriffs, the old head hunter. Shooter pissed out, he's going to be able to shut down RBK with the opening. And for Enigma now, it's just a matter of trying to get a few kills where you can, if you can. Yeah, their money is not great. So like you said, Kramer, they want to probably upgrade weapons and save them if they win the round. It's a big bonus. It's really unexpected. 
For now, though, they're struggling to find any sort of a read on what Orangutan are up to. And Shooter's made deep progress. He's deep behind enemy lines, but it doesn't matter. The head will be hunted. Raw fuel will shoot him down. He can upgrade his weapon. He's still got a trademark to work with. The rendezvous Spike and a planted. couple of bullets in the chamber's chamber. How much more can he do with these bullets? He's moving towards kitchen. And Vibor awaits him. A gun in hand, Raw fuel. He'd love another kill, and he wants to send his chance, but Vibor will not entertain. He doesn't suffer fools. He's going to take care of raw fuel, while Anti will knife the German engineer's finest creation. But Persia says, OK, I'll just shoot you down with my gun. Goodbye, good night. And he had no business winning that round, and Orangutan pick up another. Another in relatively clean fashion as well. Uh, Orangutan really starting to build some momentum, but we need to highlight, of course, this is Orangutan's tactic. They are in their home territory here. So they're, for now, what I want to see from Enigma is, even if they don't win the map, I want to see him try to make it close. I want to see him try and find a way to keep some confidence moving on to, of course, Ascent, which is our next map. For Excali, no command is available. Raw fuel one away from another sort of force. So we are going to have two rounds of sniper from him. Unfortunately, the sniper this round won't get to be tested because Orangutan, they've set their gaze to the same site of position, which is being held relatively passive from a new I mean, they've been passive in the past, right? You remember how we came in the very beginning? Getting those two kills, they know how to play, they have a way to play in, Antidote, well, making us look good, finds a kill. RBK finds another, it's the same box, it's caused one too many problems, two kills for RBK, but we bold, the enemy wiper punches back. He's opened up the A side, he gets the spike planted. Will anyone let him? An owl drone causing problems, he's been tagged, he's got two angles to worry about. For now, he feels like he needs to reload, or rather, he gets the spike planted. Spike KO Knight, being tossed out, and Scally coming in from the heavens, there's the non command. No utility, no abilities for you or Angitan. As Scally says, done, we gone. Mano, a um, Mano, and he's gonna win his duel. Rexy and Excali will put together that round for Enigma as they win a fifth. And Tremor, the audience is absolutely electric. I wanted to ask you one thing. I mean, I heard the panel ask you. I Excuse me, I saw chat ask you. Uh, but what is your prediction for the series? Ooh. God, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, I'm leaning to a 2-1 Enigma, uh, but I, I really need to emphasize that is not a strong prediction. Um, right now, Orangutan are just playing so damn well. Tesseract is playing so damn well. I don't know if Enigma have a solution to that. I want to see some adaptation come in. As we hit the full by, we are going to see that. Shooter way. brings out the Blade Storm early on. Raw fuel sneaking through mid on the ambitious angle. We're just going to kill the turret and remove a bit of info gather that Orangutan may have. But they're not interested in info gather. They're interested in the same site. Shooter to lead the charge here. Ready to try and catch up on the first where he can. This is the first few blades. Cali finishes the job. Hunter's Fury comes out from Tesseract. Cags first player. Can't quite kill the second though. Retreating fruitlessly into the knights here. As Vivo on the wide swing. Still yet to kill. Still yet to draw blood. As X Cali, assisted by the Aldrone, is going to see that orangutan. They've disengaged. They've disconnected. They want nothing to do with a safe site anymore. They tried to bite it a bit back and they, well, not interested in that. Yeah, this is great stuff coming out from Orangutan. They realize that Enigma are playing deep in the side. Oh, okay, I thought this was great stuff, uh, but I'm gonna have to correct myself because Tesseract is dead. Their main source of firepower are dead. It's all up to Vibor uh, to really do a lot of the heavy lifting. But Ghost says, hold on, friends. You get a second chance. You're not a cat. No nine lives for you, but you can fight once more if you want. RBK, though, is pushing. Generally, the tendency 30 has seconds been left. to play towards the back of sight, but they want a little bit of information. And if they had information, they'd know that Vibor has swung all the way towards B. The Viper's Pit committed. The spike needs to get there. The spike is not yet there. And Enigma are already waiting. Will they push the pit? Excali gathering some information to a It's Tesseract One. who needs to win this duel. He's taken care of Excali. No One man who can clutch dead. Still two Stay more down. on the server. Antidote being one of them as well. He's taken down Ghost. What else can he find? Tesseract though has undone Antidote. And RVK has taken out the enemy Killjoy. RVK in a 1v2, the 1v2 of his life. He's coming in from under tube. He's got the Viper's Pit himself. This could be madness. So much toxicity in the server. If he commits the Viper's Pit, does he really want to? Is it wise? 
well. RBG thinks he doesn't need to. He's just gonna try his luck and Vibor will shoot him down. Vibor, calm, composed. The IGL of OG will secure the round for OG. Just like that, OG, they start extending their lead a little bit here. Seconds showing left. an increment of that, yeah, we will be free. Ten seconds left. Left. And what I really like is a rank attack is disconnect from A there. They realize that Enigma have been able to dig in pretty successfully. And without too much land really grabbed, it makes a continuation of that attack worthless for a rank attack. Instead, they pack up, they hightail it out of there, and they then get that B site. It's an unorthodox planting spot. That means that for Enigma now, having lost that round, they have no investment going into this ground. There's a tour to force this judge, but it's not what you want when you are on the precipice of what could be a guaranteed minimum draw in let's see if they get that guaranteed minimum draw the judge on Excali has done enough can antidote pull a kill back or two no shooter says it's a bit too easy and Vibor will ensure that Excali doesn't get a gun to save but it's drop duel with the dope no! he gets two kills Vibor and shooter dead will drop fuel clutch he's got two bullets to work with two enemies to take care of the spike has been planted drop fuel wants someone to beat him and he'll oblige he'll bring him down goes dead it threw the last man on the server and this man is no ordinary man tesseract has taken care of raw fuel but there's still our vk RVK just sticks the defuse he's gonna get away with this oh no he won't tesseract will not allow it og that was a really touch and go anti eco that they had to play but they'll win the round nonetheless Sort of celebration from Tesseract there as well. They realize that this is a this is a game to win. This is a map to take off of Enigma. And as you look over to Enigma now, currently 6-5 down in this half. Yes, they have a buy, but they don't have momentum. They haven't found a strategy that works against the Rang Attack. The effectiveness that we've seen from Enigma has come from their retakes, their clutches. We've not seen them hold the Rang Attack on their tracks. Four of the five rounds they've won have all been defuses. These retake setup isn't really working for them here. And I want to see them take some tempo, take some aggression. As you see X Cali push through mid, that's exactly the adaptation we needed. Hmm. Yeah, X Cali's been given the job of controlling mid. And uh, I don't feel that Orangutan is really doing much towards mid. But if X Cali can address, get into mid, it off. could be handy. Nobody knows that he's pushed that far out from Tube and Orangutan are just gonna pass. Now, I'm not quite sure if Excali heard footsteps, he might have. Now, he's, he's heard Persia. He's certainly heard Persia. And Orangutan, they're starting to make rotations on the minimap. They know it's an A hit. The wipe of fuel is available. The wall to mid is a snake bite coming out from the offense. It's Antidote playing RVK's angle. Can he pull off some of that magic? He doesn't need to. RVK with the Viper Spade will ensure that Antidote gets one. Excali, well, he's not going to be even needed right now because Rexy and the others are taking care of Orangutan. It's just Persia alongside Tesseract. Persia doesn't have health. Persia doesn't get the spike down. Oh my god, this is going horribly wrong. We're looking at a 6 6 half unless Tesseract pulls out a miracle. Spotted out, he tries to deal a bit of damage. Kali drops the fragment and the flash drive. He's trying to buy time at this point. 10 seconds left now. And the Tesseract may have to just come down to whether or not he can play Team Deathmatch here. The wall falls. Tesseract in for one. Kali instantly there on the train, taking the 1v1 and bringing Enigma there. Equalization. And that's a really, really strong performance from Enigma. I really like the fact that we're seeing them now go into these aggressive starters to really try and push the and as well. As you see here, they just trade so beautifully. I'm really impressed with RBK getting that vibe to down, then dodging every bit of utility that was thrown at him. The fact he was able to stay alive there was just perfect. Yeah, great stuff coming out uh, from the Wiper. But one thing I want to point out, uh, Kremer, is that this is supposed to be OG's strongest map as a team it is. unit. And Enigma are definitely putting up a fight. Having said that though, six rounds on offense is not too bad. But it's again going to boil down to this pistol. Shooter's been rather quiet compared to Tesseract. Yeah. He's not been that active, that involved in terms of skills. We know what Shooter is capable of. And he's still got one half to step up. For now, the Owl Drone 
Will probe the A side. Do Enigma get any access to the A side? Shoots up. Has to be careful here. Pushed up here. against the Radiolite boxes, hoping that for Enigma, they don't hard clear this position now. Being very, very quiet and almost inviting Enigma into taking this engagement with them, but Enigma want no pass in that. They leave this A site. They set the games back to mid now, where Vibor is going to be the player to be tested. Now, Vibor, he was very good in the opening series of this tournament. If he's kept that form, then Enigma may have some trouble ahead. Yeah. Troubling times uh, for Orangutan because they're struggling to put together any sort of read. Only now are they all swinging towards B. Shooter points towards mid. Shooter might make early contact with Vibor. The rest of Enigma want access to the B side, but once again, look at draw fuel on the mini map. He's just swung into A. He's got free access to A, but the spike needs to get there. That's the issue. Draw fuel with the lurk has got to the side. If he finds the kill, it could be huge, but discipline is paramount. He knows he's not winning that duel. He's going to rendezvous the heck out. Out of there. They can swing again. They would love to swing again, but they just haven't got the time. RBK left. will find Vibor. And now Enigma with an opening kill. Can they get the spike down? No, they can't. Four seconds on the clock. Enigma will not be able to plant. They need to go for the kill. RBK and Antidote are trying. The spike gets planted. I was wrong. OG though, they're still fighting. Tesseract with the ghost. Two crucial kills. Now a 1v1. What is this round? This shouldn't be happening. Will Tesseract get the defuse? Will Anti allow him? Anti swings wide, just the classic in hand, no shields to work with, he's got to be patient, patient personified oh. as Anti clutches it out, what a round coming out from Enigma, for a moment I thought they weren't going to get the spike down, but somehow they pull it back, and then Tesseract pulls it back for Orangutan, these teams are at it, and it's so close Crema. I have a humble request to the Sky social media team to tell us how long in milliseconds was left on that spike plant because it must have been one or zero zero something as a spike plant it, it is circa five seconds but not five seconds exactly if there was even if there was even if even if it was an analog keyboard that wouldn't have been clutchable <laughs> that's how close that just came and for Ryatang, a heartbreaking way to lose your pierce round. Tesseract almost clutched it out as well. It's like every single round has like two layers of performance to it. And it gets, it's good that it gets better. And as we see the uh, anti-ego come out now from the members of Enigma. It's specters on every single player. They're against the odd Marshal, the odd Sheriff. It's nothing they haven't handled before. But have they handled a rank attack? Suppress it! Ah... <sighs> I mean, both these teams, not much data we can look at for what they face off versus each other. But so far, this has definitely been a very memorable encounter. Ranked and formed recently only in May. They've got a girls team and a free fire and a BGMI team. But now the focus is on their defense. Their defense on Icebox. That defense, probably. And rightly so, Kema, they haven't got the best of weapons to work, but they're going to try. Tesseract with the Sheriff, always good for one. Always good for one, but one and done. And one is sometimes just not enough. 8 6, Enigma, getting comfortable on this map. Orangutan really like recognizes. Orangutan. What Pardon? I really like from Orangutan is the support they get from like the Orangutan family. Like oh, yeah. even even when even when the game changers team is playing, the um, main Orangutan team they'll come in, they'll watch, they'll cheer, as will the management, as will the staff, as will everyone who can in Orangutan will show up to every game. Save the game, oh, yeah. um, save the game changers team when they're playing, everyone's there. Vice versa, guarantee you they're watching it now because the support from Orangutan. Awesome. I guarantee you, if they didn't have such an amazing environment to play in, these guys wouldn't be anywhere near as good as they are now. But they do. And because of that, they are now bloody scary. Enigma, they set up for an execution for the safe site. However, a rare attack seems pretty well uh, well informed as to what's coming here. Flash off the angle. Plojo has to hide for the time being. Tesseract taking a lot of damage. Plojo able to trade, but Antidote's able to overwhelm the defenses, giving a rare attack a, four, a three on four retake circumstance. Oh, yeah, this is great for Enigma. They're really so pleased about this. They, I mean, they can smell victory. It's going to take a miracle for Enigma to clutch this, and this is crucial, right? This is uh, Orangutan's first buy. Uh, they want to win this buy. And Ghost is probing screen. Excalibur playing on the Raptors. Gets caught looking the wrong way. 
Reborn and Shooter get two crucial kills. Orangutan are pulling this back, but Enigma, they've got Lexi with the Spectre. And RBK with his orb, but Ghost is defusing the wall. You shall not pass. Stand behind it. Watch and burn as you shall be bested by sheer tactical genius. The architect of that round, the one that put it together, the Sage with her wall. The, the absolute discipline from Ghost there as well to just hold it, knowing that his opponent is getting closer and closer and closer. Really, really the strong, footsteps. strong round. Can I get a translation on the sign, please? Finals? K. I, I didn't read. I just read that much. Finals K. K, I, I mean, guess we go to the finals. I mean, <laughs> of the finals something. Yeah, I, I didn't read the whole thing, but... Our, uh, yeah. Very enthusiastic camera, man. Will show us more signs, and indeed, I will translate the best I can, Tremor. We have about nine languages here, but the language that reigns supreme is that of Valorant. And this is some quality Valorant that we've had the privilege to watch so far. 8 7. Can the Wild Classical live up to this, Tremor, is what I'm wondering. Right, trying to go aggressive, spotted out by Raw Fuel. Thankfully, the Vimble so swift on bringing those smokes up there. Keeps Tesseract alive. Tesseract. I'm sort of and Ari about going through this. Raw Fuel shows her exactly why he doesn't want to. But look at the Exodus now. Through main from Shooter. Peeks out. Spots the first player. Blade Storm doesn't get any kills, but is able to bring out Spectre instead. Persia, he's good for one. Raw Fuel able to trade his second of the round now. No, he's going to kill for as well. His second of sight may prove to be very difficult. RBK, a crucial kill that was able to miss. Ghost able to shut him down. But for how long? One Raw enemy on remaining. Three. Rexy, the utility finishes off Persia. The low HP kill joy. And now it's left. all down to V. Bulldog and had three players to find. They click, click, and maybe get the bang, bang. You can see that first kill. Oh my, it could happen. This could very well happen here. Rexy tries to run, takes some extra damage. Shit, it's going to start adding up on the high ground. Suddenly, as no goes, he jumps. It's down to middle. 1v1. One one. Catch is about. John! He wins it. And Rangatang equalizes at 8 to 8. Trevor, when it rains, it pours, and it's raining and pouring with both for days as he clutches out a 1v3. If you can clutch, so can we. A smile on his face. This man didn't even flinch for a second, hanging on the rope, but weapon accuracy isn't at its best. He pulls that round together, fall side of Orangutan. It looked as if Enigma were finding confidence. It looked as if they were going to run away with the map, but Orangutan still fighting. And I want to remind you how this round started, Trevor. It started with a push of sorts. Not the best of buyers. It really did. It's suddenly... I quite like how Rangatang, they're changing their playstyle quite a lot. They were very retake oriented mm -hmm. first three rounds. Last round, we see aggression into mid. You want now to play, let's have quite play. A poor buy. Let's see if Orangutan are going to change it again. With a fairly forwarded angle from Shooter here. The Zord of Force has been brought out from Enigma. Shooter's been spotted out, caught out by Excali, a clean shot. And once again, a man advantage falls to Enigma. Yeah. Both teams haven't got the best of buys. I mean, the money and the utility is leaning towards OG. Orangutan, unfortunately, I'm missing a man. Shooter, he's been rather quiet on the server in general. Raw Fuel, he's worked wonders with the Doty Force. But Enigma do not have any information towards the inside. Antidote will jump, that's the right nose. He's ready. Will he find the kill or two? Yes, he does. He finds two, but Raw Fuel will find the trade. Orangutan, very happy with that sequence of events. They found the kills they need. 50 seconds on the clock. Enigma have got to start moving. They need an opening. They need to get to that side. The site can be tricky, especially when there's a man coming in from kitchen and a man playing back of side. That man is Wibbo. That man clutch around single-handedly for Orangutan. This time he barely survives. Shoulder peeking, flirting with death. Finally, enough is enough. No we go and not take in this option. The spike still hasn't been planted. Let's see without the fury. RBK with the weaponry. Finally, RBK drops the wiper's face. The spike will be planted. And Orangutan are missing two key members of this lineup. But it's Ghost with the vandal. He's clutched before in an afterplant. Can he do it again? He's doing it bit by bit. This sage isn't a medic. This sage is meant for war. But can this sage win the duel that matters most? Versus Vexi, the hunter. Sova being patient. He 
if that rune flew a second longer, he would have spotted Ghost. It doesn't matter though. Ghost gets the resurrection. Vibo forced back into play. 2v1 now. The defuse being stuck. Ghost has done this in the past. But Dexy gets the kill. The defuser dead. Vibo oh, will win the duel. Has he got time? It looks like he has. Orangutan clocks it out. It's Vibo and Ghost putting it together. Both the members from India putting things together. And the apes are going wild. Oh my god! What on earth was that from Arayante? And bear in mind as well, they're doing this... Uh, it was essentially a clutch from, I believe, Ghost there on the stage. It was, yes, they're able to resurrect the final player, but they were only able to do that thanks to killing both and then forcing the third out of position. Some immaculate decision-making from from the members of Orangutan right now. And even when they're going to rounds at disadvantage, this play from Enigma here, to be able to hunt and Suri, zone out two players, get both kills, put it down to the three on one, that should have been the round decided. But you see how Enigma, they get a bit cocky. They start peeking one at a time and they end up getting white. Yeah, Ghost really managing to isolate those duels, right? Enigma didn't have themselves trading each other. And Ghost got one, he got one duel, won it. Got another, won it. Then his ultimate was online. Then he resurrected his IGL. Friend, I need you by my side. We've clutched a lot in the past, and this time I need your help. Vibo was there, reliable as always on the server. Ghost did end up dying, despite trying to stick the defuse, but what matters is your friend, your body traded you. It's not about the journey, it's not about the outcome, it's about the company you keep on the server, and Vibo is the kind of friend you need. Someone said uh, that sign we were looking at earlier that translates to can't wait for the finals. I'm um, saying they certainly can't if they're going to be performing like this. That's for sure. Oh. I can't wait for the finals. Trips made away both prediction on the panel that Orangutan are moving on to the finals. But for now, we need to see who moves closer to that penultimate round. Because that is going to be a crucial important drop fuel with raw firepower finds an entry but shooter says hello myself jet am i a joke to you and igma fighting back though excalibur getting a kill here and red tesseract doing a little bit of damage with that shooter still pays he's been suppressed but look at this this is huge rvk has opened up the a side for enigma and everybody is starting to panic enigma has gotten control of the a side rvk has kept tesseract at bay tesseract dead is just shooter and just shooter is just not enough nine nine tremor we've got a whole other series after this <laughs> we've got a whole other series I don't know how we're going to last it with some of the best Valorant we have seen all tournaments. What a game we have in our hands. And it's level pegging. We still don't know who's going to win. And it's map one. I don't understand how both these are playing so well. And when you do have teams that are playing so well, this is where economic standing is, is paramount to your success. And it's the well, luckily for them, Orangutan have to drop down to an eco, which means that Anigma are going to be able to get a lead more importantly. They're going to be able to add their economy even more so. Yeah, and this is where you really miss the chamber, right? Because he's caught the headhunter, and it does allow him a kill at the very least. They haven't got a chamber on the side of Orangutan. They've got sheriffs, though. Not quite the same, but maybe it can do the trick. 5v5, Ghost has lot, uh, lost a lot of HP, but what I want to point out about the strong tremor is the amount of respect coming out from both teams. There is aggression, mm. there is individual brilliance, and speaking of individual brilliance and respect, all of that be damned, Tesseract is just going to push forward. I don't care if you don't have money, I will take you, I will kill you. And now, Orangutan have a numbers advantage in an anti-eco, but Antidote will equalize that. Excali, so will live again and now in a 5v5 they're starting to commit for the side the killjoy lockdown committed this is what orangutan have to work with is it enough i'm not quite sure left. excali works the ropes persia works the enemies with the classic he gets the kill but tesseract the danger man has been taken care of he did find that initial opening but rvk says enough is enough sir this time 
I'm going to bet you. Killer 4v4, 15 seconds on the clock. Can they beat the clock? It's time on their side. Is Borussia going to stop them? Borussia, he's the master of time itself. He's going to win that duel. The Spike Rings, however, just get planted. A 3v1. Ripple with the classic. This shouldn't be happening if he gets another kill. And dropping off from the cast. And dropping off. Bye bye, Clemmer. That shouldn't be happening. Whoa. I. My heart, every time anyone's in a clutch, it just starts pounding. It just starts pounding. These guys are so, so bloody good. And for Enigma, yes, they are inching their way into the lead, but that was off the back of a round that, let's be honest, was a little bit closer for comfort. We saw a, a just a couple of pistols from Orangutan wreak havoc onto Enigma there. Yeah, I'm still considering whether this is healthy for me to cast because a lot of this is changing my concepts and notions of reality. So, uh, Krema, I, I don't know. If he clutched that with the classic, I would have booked my first flight home and gotten the heck out of the venue because all of that shouldn't be happening. He had no business even jo getting two Joke's kids. on you. Joke's on you. I'm visa be damned i'm booking the first flight to india and i'm shaking his hand to say i i touched the man who clutched with a uh, <laughs> with a classic 1v3 on stage Crema, <laughs> uh, i mean you can still come to india and support these guys during their apac walls uh, i mean whichever team moves on to apac you can come and support that team or That's maybe we'll, maybe we'll you're see. casting we'll apac and you can't I, I would hope to, but well, that, that's a story for another time. Ten to nine, orangutan operator in hand. Enigma haven't been able to match this. They have had to reinvest very significantly, but it's nowhere near the damage which has been done to orangutan's economy. So it's all brought down to unfortunately just three digits here. Jack, no charge. Yeah, the, the, the economy is a little shaky, but what's really crucial is this round. If Jetrack manages to go down, they've still got a great fighting chance in the game. Even if they don't win this round. Oh, one second. Have to get back to that later. Anti, he found Tesseract. What a plot streak on coming out from Lexi. They set up for each other. The Sage and the Sova, friends of old, will help each other. And Antidote is getting the plant out. But there's another Sage on the server. It's Ghost. He's taking care of Rexy. Rexy dead. It's now a 4v4. The spike is planted. OG. They're really, really good on these retakes. They need to pull that together. They haven't got the lockdown. I'm not quite sure if they have too much to work with. Shooter. He's got the operator though. This man, an absolute beast for this weapon. Will anyone dare walk into his crosshairs? Well, but now his friends are dying. Ghost and Ribbo dead. Shooter isolated towards the heavens. He's been brought down. Enigma will clutch it out. They can smell it. Victory is in the air. The fans are jumping on their seats, Kremer. And Enigma are very, very close to causing an upset on Orangutan's map pick. This is now where we start seeing Orangutan bring out some cool strats. It's when their backs against the wall they're most dangerous. And sure, the, the, the dawn may be breaking on the horizon, the dawn of a second map, but we don't know if that's a fiery blaze or a sun yet. In fact, there's not much to distinguish the two of them. So Enigma, while they are two rounds ahead, two rounds away from taking this first map, they cannot Shut get down. complacent. Because the second they do, Orangutan's going to punish it. Yeah, I, I really don't know if Orangutan is going to be able to punish anything this round. Because it is a very close buy. I mean, they have no option looking at the scoreboard. They need to buy whatever they can. So they've invested in their abilities. And uh, if they do not, I mean, they've still got one more round to play if they end up losing this. But they're pretty much hoping that they win this one. It's very obvious that both teams know what the other is doing. Raw fuel clearly knows what he's doing. He's going to find an opening out of Persia. Persia dead. The Sentinel taken out of the server. Orangutan. Their strongest line of defense is missing. It's now up to Ribor on the Viper to offer some control. The Sage will commit it. Can Enigma get the plant? Can they get past Ribor? Ribor doesn't need the snake bite. Doesn't need the Viper spit. He's got a Spectre to work with, and that's enough for now. 4v4. Enigma reconsidering their options as they start to move across the map. They're moving towards the A. Drop fuel in the past has found a lot of success and has found a lot of information on the side. This time it's the Owl Drone. We'll not send a person, we'll send a bot. The bot. Well, 30 seconds. That's that. The site is clear. 
Tesseract, considering sign, cost, and tan, and all the geometry he knows to find some sort of an opening with that shot card, but nothing will be found. The recon though will reveal shooter gets a kill, but RBK will pull a back shooter again. 3v2. Oh, the sheriff! Tesseract finds an ever crucial kill on Excali. Excali the danger man dead. We were sticking the defuse. What finds another? RBK to fall. Raphael to follow. Tesseract and OG have done it. He had no business winning the turn. And somehow they pulled together a thrifty. This is madness, Grandma. The more likely a team is to win a round, it's actually the more likely they are to lose it, apparently. <laughs> As we've seen both teams eco one another, both teams clutch on one another, both teams absolutely decimate one another. And it's only fair that when Enigma punch, a round tank slap back. And they do so with ruthless prejudice. We're now going to be seeing the next investment from both teams, but it's the investment of Enigma that's really going to worry me here. They are able to buy, sure. The Operator comes out surprisingly on Antidote instead of Raw Fuel here, but it's the credit stance I really want to keep an eye on. There is only a handful of rounds left in this game, and even then, your economy is going to matter. Yeah, I mean, Antidote was an opera back in the day, but Shooter, okay. very much an opera himself, a pixel is enough for this man. Healing. Give him half a pixel and he'll still find the kill. Orangutan are going to be way pleased with the first couple of seconds on this round, but it remains to be seen if Enigma can find an opening. The op still there. Nobody's blocking his line of sight. It's a little concerning though. And Tesseract is just pushing in. Rexy threw a recon. He thought he was gathering information, but he, I mean, he just gave away his life. He's been dropped down. However, the rest Ooh. of Enigma, there was the B side. The wipe is big committed. Are we okay? Absolute nothingness. He's got in the side for his team. Excalibur's getting the blood, but Tesseract! Oh, that was on here. It wasn't caught on camera because it shouldn't have been. This is illegal, period. I have no idea how Orangutan are winning those rounds. And at this stage, no one, no pundit, no expert, no analyst panel can tell us how this map is going to end. I don't think anyone knows. Even an oracle would be confused at this point. You want a prophecy? Well, I'll give you a prophecy. This is going to end in bloodshed. Right now, we've got an incredible, I mean, an incredible game ahead of us. And we're only in part one. This is the appetizer. And we've already got an 11-11. Look at the alt placement on both teams as well. Tesseract currently on 31 kills. He is having a career-defining game right now in the jubilee land of orangutan and you look at the old investments the tour de force comes out over the orangutan this life has been used this life has been used comes out instantly as well and sure that sort of force is great if you can't see anyone what good will it do the outro i'm going to try and remedy that at least momentarily but unfortunately for enigma they're firing fruitlessly into the gas oh this gas is not something you want to walk into does Antidote have a cure for the Viper's Poison? Is there one that even exists for the toxicity that Rebor is spreading all over the day side? That Traxxas will not find too much. They will try and nullify. Flash? They've got to be careful. That Traxxas over the Hunter's Fury. If not a weapon, it's a Hunter's Fury. Rexy will respond with the save. Both the Sovas pulling out their best, finding crucial kills for their teams. But Enigma have the numbers. The Spike? Where is the Spike? It's been dropped. So they need to retrieve the spike. Very, very doable. And they need to plant. And they need to be very... Shooter! Shooter with the operator! Spike will cut our weak mid rotation. The spike dropped yet again. What? Tesseract shows up. He'll show up always. Rawfield oh, wasn't no. ready. He thought he had the advantage in that peak, but he clearly didn't. Tesseract will look for more. This man's on fire. You can't stop him. Oh, jeez. It's the Tesseract show, isn't it, Prema? It's the apes gathered together. Chennai is literally being run amok by the planet of the apes, Orangutan Esports. Back to back 4Ks from Tesseract there. And for the first time, the first time all map, we see Enigma fumble a little bit. Not realizing that Shooter has the option to aggress there. Raw fuel not reacting in time. And now on the precipice of Orangutan recovering their magic. Recovering it. They were on the they were close to losing. They were two rounds about away from a loss.
But now, mm -hmm. as they start crafting this comeback, they're one away from a victory. A redemption arc is about to be completed. And for a Jets ready with a blade still, an anime battle is an apt way to close a legendary duel. Okay, this is kind of significant. Orangutan, uh, they were kind of blocked off by the Viper Wall, but Sowers managed to push through Tesseract. In case you don't know who the is, he gets a little bit of information with the Owl Drone, spots no one, and he knows. He knows that Orangutan are mid-rotation. So, it, he knows, excuse me, that Enigma are mid-rotation, and Orangutan, they're going to match that Standing rotation. Ahead. Look at Shooter, in tube, pushing for information. Four no one at mid, though, but he can gather some useful information. A recon dot was thrown out to help out Shooter in his pursuit of kills, and a lot more. Nobody will peek him. Antidote senses, he knows these tendencies, he knows the aggression that Orangutan like to run. Orangutan split across the map, the spike towards 30 A, seconds some left. players towards B. Okay, Brianna's bound to smoke. Like a friend opening. Quite able to do so yet. Spot cell is spotted out as well. Unfortunately for Enigma, this is all skirmishes. This is all kind of probing for info here. The lockdown is timed to perfection. 12 seconds left. Ghost caught out left. of the rotation. Shooter instantly there to trade. Sure, the lockdown's destroyed, but we are still going to be seeing that plant. Rexy now in rotation. He's going to have to try and catch Shooter, who's already on the flank here. Antidote for the first, Excali for the second, but Shooter's still alive. Shooter is still thriving. Will this be overtime? We'll have to see. Shooter there for the first. Goes Amazing. to the high ground. Torn out by Rockyo. It's all lost to Tesserae. The hero of Orangutan cannot convert it. And off the absolute monumental plays of Excali. Enigma. They go 12 to 12. They force us to overtime. Now, all of a sudden, we have a Herculean battle for the ages. It is truly been one of the most exciting games we've seen so far on land. And mind you, Orangutan are just moving through map one. There's at least one more map to come. Who knows how many? Enigma and Orangutan, Trips was telling me earlier, he, his guess, his prediction was both these teams would be in the final. I mean, I, I agree with him to an extent. It doesn't matter who goes to the final, but both these teams are playing out of their minds. This is when the coaches need to come in, Crema. This is when they need to take a break, yep. decompose. Yep. The coach has been watching. Their boots here for the coaches. They're watching the games. They need to help their teams understand what they can improve upon and how they can prepare because it's the minute adjustments that make the biggest differences. I really like that we're seeing tactical timeouts that you saw as we as we hit overtime as well. For Enigma, now this is where you calculate. This is where you figure out, okay, what needs to change. Same for Orangutan here. You need to remember that Orangutan, they've got Tesseract, it's currently going 36 and 18. 36 and 18 in regulation! That's SK Rossi's standard, and he's on a bloody sofa! No, it's the Tesseract standard. Mind you, Tesseract has had a lot of impact frags. Th those are clutches. I mean, if yeah. Global Esports back are watching... Back-to-back 4Ks as well. Yeah, back-to-back 4Ks and impact 4Ks, not anti-eco 4Ks, not easy frag. None of that nonsense. This man has shown up time after time and he's... Well, his duty is not yet done. It is overtime. He's got to show up again. Raw fuel. He's been quiet. He's been effective. And he's going to be just that as he brings down Persia. Killjoy taken out of the equation. One man less for the side of Orangutan. Shooter needs to really do a lot of heavy lifting. The dash enabled, but he doesn't see anyone. He knows that there's one player on site. He's going to take advantage of that. Antidote dead. Now a 4v4. The first important thing for Orangutan now is to get the spike down. Will they be allowed to, though? Enigma a bit by bit rotating over to the B side. The spike is still making its way. It's on the Sage. Ghost will eventually drop the wall, drop the spike, get it planted. Can planted. Enigma pull off a retake? Can they come? Okay. 
in a such a pivotal position here. He needs to be able to get a kill and fast. Realizing that controller kitchen isn't a guarantee. Vivor is doing such a good job of being passive here. RVK helps clear it, but that's going to cost crucial, crucial time here. Through the smoke shooter, there's the opening. Rex C, he'll give back onto Desiree. What's going to do that to his teammate? Last the shooter there, already after three. Comes out with a blade stop. On for the ace now, but it's Vivor to deliver as a Ragatan go 13 12 into the lead. Shooter, what a round! Ghost was as awestruck as I was with that one tremor. That didn't make sense. He was so fast that Bruce Lee would have to watch that in slow motion. And he made it look so easy. Great stuff coming out from Shooter. He's been quiet, Tremor. He's, he's a really explosive player. But when his team really needed him, when they were playing offense, when they had a numbers disadvantage, he puts the round together for Orangutan. They have a lead in Orangutan. They can smell victory. And they need that victory. And Tito is going to push under Cube. Oh, this oh mindless aggression God. will be punished. You oh, can't just oh, press man. W. You cannot just press W versus Orangutan. I respect remaining. what Enigma were trying to do. They were trying to change up the base, but there's not much that they can do now. It's just Raw Fuel all by himself in a 1v5. He needs an ace clutch. Can it even happen, Kremer? I don't think so. I was just waiting on the low ground here. Trying to catch him out. He'll do just that. Orangutan after an absolute bloodbath of a first map are able to emerge victorious, toppling Enigma in overtime and going on to ascent with a hell of a lot of confidence. that the first map can be immediately won by none other than Team OG. So Crip, what further more do you want to talk about? So first of all, I mean, Vibor's uh, flank, I mean, there's so many things that happened in this entire game. We got to take it step by step and we got to break it down one by one. So first of all, the last round, four kill, by shooter yes. while all of those are stylish stylish frags there's one crucial little detail that worked for them Vibor was still hanging out towards mid mm -hmm. after the plant happened Vibor went up to tube got detected by a, a trademark and that distracted some of the uh, enigma members to stop looking towards yellow stop looking towards the actual planted side and forced them to look towards kitchen instead for a brief moment and in that one moment shooter activates himself goes way ahead gets that quad kill so it's that flank by vibor that sheds, uh, that sets up shooter for that impressive 4k in the last round of overtime that got orangutan the first map and this was such a closely contested game right at one point enigma were in the lead orangutan they just make a massive comeback and they prove enigma wrong they tell them you're gonna have to work much harder than that buddy well, it was pretty hard. You, we usually say when it rains, it pours, but I would say this oh. was an entire cloud burst. Yeah. It was all flood and it was flooding blood. Oh, it was flooding blood, just like The Shining, <laughs> yeah. straight out of The Shining, like a horror movie. That's exactly what it was like. And my goodness, there were so many clutches, so many of them. Like, let's, let's say, first half, Excali starts off with a 1v3 clutch. Impressive stuff, but... I kind of have to point out that the post plant positions for Orangutan in the first half were kind of weak. That's exactly why Excali was able to clutch. That's also was Rofu That's also why Rofuel also was able to win out a couple of rounds, yeah. a triple of his own. And all of that stuff kept on happening, which kept OG back. It would have been OG in the lead right in the first half itself if it wasn't for the weak post plant positions. But they recovered towards the end. Mm -hmm. And... While I say that OG in their post plant positions were somewhat weak, I can't, you, you know, you have to take that with a pinch of salt. It wasn't because they were 
just it, it wasn't because it was just their fault. It was also because Enigma were playing really well. Like for example, consider round number nine. Persia has invested a lockdown on the A site, and he wants to take the site. Any person with a rational mind would fall back, let them take the site, and then play retake. But that's not what Antidote and RVK do. RVK jumps into the site, peeks ahead of all that green vipers goo, kills two people before he gets detained and killed. And it's those kind of ballsy plays that also kept Orangutan from getting into the positions they desired. So I can't fully blame Orangutan for playing the first half badly in post months. It was also because Enigma were making their lives a little difficult. That's why the first half was 6 6. If those ballsy plays by Enigma did not work out, then I think this game wouldn't have been this close. We're talking about Enigma today. They proved that they have no because they think that uh, ultimate and realizing that you might lose yourself. And it was not a big play. It was entirely a win-win situation. We are going to be learn about how Enigma played the entire. Oh, let's take a look at some of these highlights. And my goodness, there's a lot of them, aren't there? This 1v3 by Rexy, amazing stuff pulled off by all the members of Enigma Gaming. It was just bloodbath all over the place. And I have to admit that if it wasn't for their individual brilliances, tactically Enigma were the better team. But Tesseract, my man, this guy stepped up so well in the second half. He was having a pretty bad game in the first half. But then after all that was said and done, he walks into the defender's side with a fresh mindset and then triple kill, quadra kill, triple kill again. Back to back to back to back. This guy was on fire. And, and yeah, there's, the there's a reason he's continue. the MVP. The flames continue. You talk about fire. The flames are right in front of stream in terms of MVP. Tesseract will be the MVP on the side of Orangutan. 37 kills, bro. Bro, <laughs> that is ridiculous. People struggle to drop 20 bombs in games like these. This guy didn't just drop a 30, he was just three away from a 40 bomb. So that tells you how big his muscles were in this game. The cold doesn't seem to affect him. He can bring the heat, he can bring the pain. A good start for Team Rangtan. Well, new teams that we always mention, now new no more, I would say. They have... Uh, gained their position in such a pattern and yeah this was this was very head to head few mistakes that were corrected on the defender side and enigma was doing nothing wrong enigma hmm. were aptly abruptly correct in every aspect but they were being outplayed hmm. by the firepower sometimes the utilities and talking about firepower enigma made sure of those triples those quadras so the gun power was equalized. It was about the switch of sides and the utilities being used and done. Exactly. And the utility. It's so beautiful. I kind of want to touch upon Tesseract's contribution once again. Because this man, in the last four rounds of regulation, his utility provided all the valuable information in the world. Round number 21. Enigma tried to fake B and plant towards the A site. And Orangutan don't have weapons. But what does Tesseract do? He throws one recon dart that reveals three people. Imagine a recon dart not getting broken, revealing three people, and all those three people were shot down okay. by sheriffs. Orangutan win the thrifty. Yeah. And that's when the comeback began. This was the round that broke Enigma's back. And this is round 21. Round 22, again, Enigma were like, sure, let's make sure that this time through the Viper Toxin screen, no recon dart reveals us. Tesseract tries the same thing again, tries to go for recon. It breaks, but he doesn't need anything. He's able to shoot down three people in one spray down through the toxic screen all at once. And that was what destroyed them. Like, he doesn't even have a line of sight. Just on his sound sense, he kills those three people. Round 23, once again, he gets a 4K. One of them with the Hunter's Fury. And then that Hunter's Fury kill made EG drop the spike. So they had to throw a spanner in the plants, go back to collect the spike, and by that time it's too late. Tesseract and his buddies have repositioned and they're ready to kill Enigma Gaming. If it wasn't for that Hunter's Fury kill under the spike carrier, this round also would have been lost. And then the last round, it was just chaos. Tesseract didn't do much in this one, but he did so much in the three rounds before that. That is what forced us into overtime. 
and he's closing to the KD ratio of two. That in turn explains us about how exclusively important he was towards his team's play, about how exclusively he decided to get those uh, initial bloods as well as continuation of the play somehow. Team Enigma, well, if we, if we just break each and every player away and see those, definitely we did see those heels coming in, we did see those resurrections coming in, but we did not see the frags coming in. We have seen Antidote playing Sage before. It was, it was not the very first time he has picked this agent. And hmm. he has stuck to some angles, I believe, in the map of Icebox. It was very unclear about how to hold an angle, get those much required frags. We are going to discuss that. But before that, let's discuss the match stats of Team Orangutan versus Team Enigma. Oh, so close. Every single one of these stats is just incredibly close. I mean, that goes to show, right? It was a close match, which makes sense that the stats are going to be more or less similar. 19,000 something hundred damage for both the teams. More than 25% headshot ratio on every single player. Eight frag wins. And the only difference is the last two objective wins, which I believe were the two yeah. overtime rounds, which Orangutan was able to win. Other than that, these teams were going neck and neck, toe to toe. And no tippy toes. They were creating the sounds, they were moving in, uh, and they were taking the frags, getting taken down. And this is what Team Orangutan is all about. And I like the way how Vivek broke it down. They are the homo hmm. sapiens, and they hmm. are evolving themselves. Let's see how strong they are they going to evolve to reach to the point where they are going to get a control, where they are going to get a control over the very first slot of the Grand Finals. Or will the already evolved version of Team Enigma block them away by not getting the immediate success of 2-0 and also try to regain their control on the map of Ascent? Yeah, Ascent is going to be an incredibly difficult game to predict. This map itself was so close and this was OG's pick. Do you think Enigma can actually pull off the win in Ascent? Well, I did believe that uh, overtime was supposed to happen on the map of Icebox. Definitely, Team Orangutan did it wonderfully well. Uh, maybe we have seen Orangutan do better on the attacker side, but today they proved me wrong. They did it wonderful on the defender side as well. But now it is going to be Team Orangutan initiating on the defender side. They have created a momentum and that does matter. If you have a positive ending, you tend to start with that plus already. You are two steps uh, ahead of the opponent team which just faced the loss. But it is Team Enigma. Do you think that is going to affect Team Enigma in any way? I think the positivity and everything is not going to... I mean, the mental fortitude of Enigma is still pretty strong. So the positive, negative vibe and everything, it's not going to matter all that much. They knew for a fact that this is not their map. Even if they lose it, it doesn't really matter to them. So I think it's still going to be fine for Enigma. But while I am talking about Enigma, I have to point out that the way Enigma dealt with some of these innovative rounds from OG was super impressive. And I usually call OG to be the team that relies on individual prowess. This time even Enigma were doing the same thing. Even the ballsy plays from Excali, him getting into these deep uh, pincer positions where he was able to dismantle uh, the players of OG, that was incredible. Like that one clutch he was able to pull off through 410, that was super cool as well. And uh, while I'm talking about Enigma, there's this one really cool round, a risky round which Orangutan was able to win. That's the last round of the first half. You know how people normally plant the spike on B, right? They go in from B greens, try to just kill anyone who's holding to it. Snowman, build a sage orb and then plant. Hmm. Well, Orangutan were like, screw that. We're not going to do it. We go from mid to B instead and we plant away from the default positions. We plant so that we can defend it while holding, while holding kitchen or while holding tube. And those are risky strats, you know. In the previous version of uh, the VCC, uh, that is the last time when Global Esports and Velocity were playing, uh, you know, to go international. All the teams tried this same strat. They tried going mid to B and uh, mid to B and plant towards uh, the other side of tube. Every team tried it. Every team failed. And it's not just in India. Almost everywhere in the world, internationally too. Whenever teams try something like this, it generally doesn't end well for them. But Orangutan made it work. Yeah. They did it only in the last round. So even if they lose, it's not that big of a risk. But 
my God, they tried one of the most riskiest strats in the book and it ended up paying off dividends. Yeah, it did. And the dividend is the victory. And also, this was the very first match between these two teams. That That is what they said in the start, that hmm. this is going to be the very first match. This is going to be the very first fight. And now, Orangutan has moved a step ahead. So this is going to impact Team Enigma's performance about them, them having better experiences of land, of being in the circuit of way too long and now getting defeated by fairly new team. So I believe this is the exact time where we can expect Team Enigma also move out of the textbook mode and go into something inappropriate which Team Orangutan might not be able to outplay. Yeah, I think, they, I think those inappropriate strats might be relying on just individual power, you know. Mm. Like like RVK said, you need an ape to beat another ape. So maybe these guys <laughs> will need to pull off those individual prowesses. Sure, Excali was the one stepping up for the team very often and he's pulling off uh, clutches upon clutches. But the other players, I kind of felt like they were being held back by structure. And there's this famous dialogue in The Dark Knight that uh, Inspector Gordon uses. He said, there's a point out there where structures become shackles. So that kind of holds true for Enigma today. Let's see if they can break free from those shackles and rise up. Well, they need to, br they need to break through. At least we don't want to see 2-0 taken down by Orangutan. We want to see that third map. I believe viewers would also want to see more of the hashtags of fear the enigma or more of the ape army spamming happening it must be happening in the cha chat so yeah we are going to chat about it but before that we want to see the head-to-head -head discussions happening about these two players enigma rvk and og vibhor well it is average com combat score of 219 happening for rvk and on the other hand for vibhor it is 203 agents played is exactly same it's Viper and Breach, except for RVK has been able to procure the MVP card twice. And look at the first blood draw. Now that is massive. Yeah, the amount of impact RVK has on some of these rounds is impressive. While both of them play supportive roles, they both actually acts as support, whereas RVK let's say on defender rounds where he's playing Viper, where you don't need the Viper all that much, He's more than willing to go ahead and throw his life away if it means getting his team the advantage. Even in this example, right, I spoke about how he jumped into a lockdown with like 2-3 seconds left, got 2 kills and he knows he's going to die, but at least he's going to take down some people before he does that. So, that kind of mentality that RVK holds is what makes him a great player. Both the teams with two strong players going head to head and if you look at the damage stats though, Vibor has got more damage on his pocket. Well, now we are going to head for the player stats. We want to know about Rexy as well, falling to the team of Enigma, playing in as Soa, Initiator and Brimstone as a controller. And he has also got the KD of 1 and above. That is fairly good if you are able to get the very first track for yourself. If not first, one man down is equal to almost a step closer towards the battle, towards the victory. Oh, yeah. And I remember that 1v3 that Rexy also yeah. pulled off. My God, he had no business winning that, you know. I mean, first of all, they offered him 1v1s. The first two people died, but the third guy, he basically forced him to never peek because of the recon that he had placed. And that's the kind of brain games that Rexy uses to isolate these kills and get those clutches. I mean, if it wasn't for Excali and Rexy stepping up above and beyond, this game would have been over much sooner. And that's what kept Enigma Gaming alive. But I have to admit that towards the tail end of that game, they really exploited Rexy and his positioning. And that's how Orangutan were able to get that uh, overtime started. If they weren't able to pin Rexy down, Rexy could have added more value, could have added much more information to his team, and he could have kept his team safe. But they basically targeted this guy, almost bullying him towards the later stages of the game. And that's what forced the overtime. That's what Orangutan used. They targeted it like, uh, ex, uh, they targeted Rexy and uh, that's, that's kind of why they were able to get this win. Uh, well, and also they made sure of before getting the site entry, they were outnumbering them. Hmm. Uh, and that is how the retake was not very probable. 
and uh, if they are able to do that yet again because now i believe rexy is not going to stick to the same role that he was playing the previous match he might switch into the kj role on the mm. back of a set if he does he's again going to get a good control on the entire site and he might be also able to block the enemies mm. and he was the victim once but nobody wants to be the victim twice yeah exactly you don't want to fall prey to the same tactics over and over again but then again orangutan are the kind of team that will try to isolate and exterminate you same with enigma gaming and these teams they started off as such vastly different entities but now their playstyle seems so similar that's probably the result of amalgamation of the best of indian teams and that's how the meta is shaping up to be right now i mean at the best of the best it's really hard to differentiate between one team's playstyle and another they have to do every single team all of them have to put in all the strats do you believe no duelists also led somewhere the disturbance of what exactly enigma faced no i i don't think it was about the duelist being present um they were getting more than enough control with the ko and that was to some extent disrupting the setups that orangutan had for themselves and i think that's also one of the reasons why on the attacking side enigma giving was so proficient with faking orangutan fell for those fakes hook line and sinker in several locations but then that's a different story that orangutan are good at retakes but they did fall for the fakes them getting the retakes is a different story but hey at least you got one part of the round right so that's good thing by excali for sure and uh, they are going to learn it the pattern has been read and if the pattern is repeated they might be able to counter it and to the counter of rex c we do have a player tesseract who was just spotted on the mvp cards average combat score well almost 100 more than what rex c has in his name and well certainly more. they are head to head but uh, Tesseract in this is in this particular match of Icebox was also a key factor on the defender side about how everything started to function profoundly well. Oh, Tesseract, you disgusting little guy. I mean, Rexy has 28,000 damage which isn't bad, but then Tesseract with just this game alone went from somewhere around 40, 45,000 to 50,000. And I believe this is the first guy to cross the fifty thousand damage mark, isn't he? Yep. I have. I don't think I've seen anyone else have fifty thousand damage. At least not until I remember. Sure, this is going to be a mark in history, and we were saying this. These matches are history in the making for Sky Sports Champion Series, and Tesseract made it well. A good head-to-head -head comparison, and we want to see more of battles happening between these two teams. We talked about Rexy. We talked about Tesseract. Now the man for Russia comes on the screen with again an above KDR of one. And I always appreciate when at least the player is get is able to procure one KDR because even if he's getting traded, he has done dealt the damage equally. I cannot feel bad for Persia today. Mm -hmm. He did play well. He did everything correctly, but. Enigma Gaming just disrespect this guy so much that they almost never let his lockdowns have any effect. His lockdowns were getting disrespected by AVK by pushing into them. Sometimes Rexy would break them with the shock dart, sometimes with the Hunter's Fury. And you got to feel bad for him, right? I mean, he specifically avoids placing the lockdowns so that the Hunter's Fury doesn't destroy it. But Rexy is like, "Nah, I've got shock darts." He just throws it at them. Sometimes even Excali is able to throw fragments at it and destroy it. And this guy is like, "Bro, do you not care about me of course enigma don't care about persia but they definitely take extra steps to shut this guy down regardless of the pressure that was put on him persia thrived and he was doing really well for his team well uh, this is exactly what makes team orangutan and this exactly what makes ape army happy i believe they are very happy with the very first match against team enigma the team who has never lost a single match map lost match yet to be decided two more maps to follow and on the map of ascent it was one ot spotted on the map of ice box how many do you expect on the map of ascent 3 4 oh my god 10 i don't know i want as many as can i mean i know that me asking for extra overtime will probably invite the stink guy from vivek and crema because they'll be like bro do you not care about us and i just at this point care about some good old valorant action 
this is what we are here for we want to see that action we want to see that exact battle happening and uh, why we will be having some new tricks under his sleeves up his sleeves where he's going to pull one by one in the map of a friend because losing icebox is already at least it it might have hurt the ego the, the you are a big name you are a renowned team you have played on the international okay not yet international but yeah sure you, you have been played uh, another tournaments another lan experiences and they couldn't and now we are here with the agent selection we have kj omen ko soa and jet on the side of orangutan they are very typical of the agent selection on the other end which is team enigma let's see if they are also sticking to the same pattern of the agent selection or are they having any different of aspect once again we oh. do see a jet entry happening now this is the change that was required otherwise oh, it interesting. is so kj omen and ko i really thought that enigma will pull out the chamber at the very least but no they also go for the kill joy rofuel's back to the good old jet he's not going to be playing the chamber anymore and it's been a while since i've seen rofuel on the jet so it's going to be some og shooting action today we want to we want to see that og shooting action happening and i also want to see that uh, kj diff happening persia has also struggled enough and uh, we also saw rexy struggling enough in the previous map and they have been choked not only once not only twice but several multiple times and now this is the exact time where they might be able to retaliate where they might be able to go for the revenge where they might be able to create a lead against another if at all orangutan makes it a clean sweep it is going to be the in the name of history for the shortest created team shortest time span created team winning away the first slot if not that let's see how everything pans out and uh, talking about the team enigma well now i do would want to say i have vivek alongside me vivek how do you feel about the agent selection on the side of enigma uh i think it's quite interesting actually i'm i'm quite pleased to see them go with the kill joint worked really well uh, rexy is very comfortable playing uh the killjoy against a ko if he needs to fun fact uh those of you tuning in if you're playing ko and you're playing versus a killjoy the knife needs to hit the killjoy and not the abilities you nullify the killjoy and therefore her abilities will be nullified uh let's see how that back and forth takes place uh but for now crema it's been a crazy series already just one game just one small sample just one little bit of sample size to work with and we are already unsure about all our predictions i saw you in chat crema you were like ah oh, this is still going to be 2-1 enigma are going to take it but if you ask me i think orangutan are going to run away with the series on a set itself okay kamal will be joining us in a bit but for now we can still ponder over the various possibilities of a scent a scent so far is really really a 50 50 map there's not much uh, that one can say in terms of predictions it really boils down to grit and patience edigma outside uh, could clearly be overheard saying that guys we want the comms to be clear we need calm comms because that is crucial for us and and ladies and gentlemen in just a couple of seconds we'll be jumping into the game the game that decides whether orangutan will move forward to apac or will enigma halt them in their tracks take them to a map 3 and make them reconsider life itself it's a scent it's enigma it's orangutan and with me is crema and i couldn't have asked for anyone else honestly i've just had to be here like even if this game is 2-0 even if it's three map even if it has quadruple overtimes i'm just happy to be here map 1 has filled my valorant cup for like the next 6 months that was some of the best valorant we have seen in a very long time i'm really really looking forward to seeing how enigma reacts uh, as you mentioned my prediction i'm sticking i'm sticking with enigma 
purely okay. because, as we've seen before, area. Icebox is one of the round the best maps, head and shoulders. We're now in the home ground of Enigma. You know, we've seen the player sent time and time again. We've seen them play well. And so for Orangutan, now they're the ones who can start with the inherent mode. But not that it matters for Shooter, though. He's able to extend, get a kill, and get out of there. And four on three now. Five on three, sorry. As Orangutan just look to a stage of defense and allow Enigma to play into them. Yeah, let's see where this round goes. I mean, Enigma, they've got only three members alive. They haven't got clear control of any side. Early on in that round, Tesseract once again with the recon I'll bolt. Excali said, I can't shoot down the recon bolt. Let me take the duel. He still ended up losing the duel. Tesseract left. still alive. Has another recon bolt to work with, which I'm sure he's going to put to good use for the retake. Enigma, I've got to be careful because Orangutan has got to group up a drop fuel towards Market gets one. Unfortunately though, Ghost will take care of him. Just two members alive from the side of Enigma. It's the Killjoy, it's the Omen. The spike is being planted towards a way back of sight. A corner, a pocket for the Killjoy to work with and that pocket is enough for her to escape. Antidote has managed to pull back something in terms of numbers. But Vibor is taking care of Rexy. The spike is being diffused. Anti wants to push, but Vibor will not allow it. Vibor takes care of antidote and enigma lose the pistol and kremer is not yet reconsidering his prediction because it is still early um, days here's the thing as a premise i don't change my predictions i i don't change them regardless of what happens i'm still inclined to think enigma win this and that isn't out of uh out, out of uh, ego it's mainly out of the fact that um we, we said it just earlier Enigma's map is a sense. Orangutan, sure, they did a pistol round, but what can we expect from a follow-up? Orangutan are on the back foot. I'm really... Oh, sorry, they're on the front foot here, but they are walking into uncharted waters. They are. This is one more thing I want to point out about Orangutan, is that on this map, they actually switch things up. So, on map one, uh, which was Icebox, we saw Ghost, playing the sage this time around he's playing the omen even with the sage the map one both the sages were extremely impactful in my opinion and in map two rexy is finding impact on the killjoy with a sheriff he is working with bare minimum and Ribo doesn't have too much in terms of health. And he goes, I said they're really good at them, Orangutan, but they're missing members. RVK is the Sheriff King. He's found a kill, but Ghost will pull it back. Enigma starting to rotate across the map. Look at the crunch onto the beast side. They've got a member market. One defender spawned. Tesseract has so much to do in this round. His position revealed. A nano swarm at his feet. He brings down raw fuel. He looked for another, but RVK will shut him down. 2v3. Enigma are actually winning the Santi eco Kramer. This is absolutely bonkers. This could be perfect for Rangatang as well. I love the fact that they were able to get into that flank so quickly. This Rang did such a good job at just buying time. That was all that was needed now. Three on two, and Enigma, they're trapped back sight. Sure, they sure they have a numbers advantage. But it's the positioning which is really worrying me right now. On top of the fact that by a great Persia able to avoid the utility just down the Turrets, but Last player standing. First Persia, one versus three. Switch for the first, here's the second, Super. through the smoke, good for the second out. Switch is able to reload as well now. Worrisome moment, it turns 180. Excali falls, Persia, what a clutch. And just like that, OG, they go 2-0 up, completely wiping the force by of Enigma there. What a round, and the, the, the OG fans, they're already up on their feet. They know that the momentum's with them. They know that OG are here to take some names. Oh my God, did they take that to heart. That was a very important round for OG, uh, Kramer. They won the pistol, they wanted to win that round. They did end up winning it on the back of some individual heroics, but look at the economic uh, cost that it had upon them. They're working with Spectres. Well, if you look over at Enigma, they've all got Vandals. So, if you are an Enigma supporter, you're going to be really, really okay with the outcome of that round. They got the spike down. They got the ultimate orb for that. They got kills. And they took away weapons. Now they're taking away lives. Omen versus Omen. Anti is going to best Ghost for now. But how much progress can he make towards the side? Not much. As there is a fragment at his feet, he's going to be pushed back to wind. Vibor, 
doesn't know this. But Persia sees his shoulder. Rafuel elsewhere gets the kill. And he still manages to find one. How the hell did Anti do that? Persia, he's clutched in the past. He needs to come clutch once again. It's him and Tesseract. Tesseract did so much on Icebox. But for now, they know. All they know is that Enigma is swinging to a B. And there's one man from Enigma just sitting like a mouse at the stairs, patiently, and patience is rewarded. Patience is all Enigma needed as Excali gets the two kills that seals the round for Enigma. I'm really, really impressed from, uh, from mainly from OG, the fact that they were able to, even in rounds where they lose the man advantage, they're able to keep it close until the final moments. But this is the complete uh, polarization of how Icebox started, where Enigma were winning rounds, but they they were one-off clutches. OG doing the same thing. And the issue with winning clutches is, yes, they're amazing, but you're fundamentally still losing. You're losing in strategy. While your aim is definitely there, the strategy you need to focus on. And that's the same circumstance we're seeing here, where Enigma, they're getting to science, they're getting the spike down, they're doing so with a man advantage. And while the are yes, they clutch it, they can't Raw clutch fuel. it every single time. Raw fuel, he had the dash enabled, but Tesseract was there with the Sheriff, and Tesseract's always there when you need him. They have to clear backside. Excali will do that before dead. And he will manage to find Shooter. Shooter, the danger man taken out of the equation. Antidote once again with impact frags for Enigma. His Enigma has three members alive. The defense is committed the lockdown. But what will it yield? It won't yield much. It'll yield nothing at all. As Bershia finds himself a kill. But Enigma, they're going to close out the round. And that is what matters. There was no clutching, none of that nonsense. Enigma with a plant and a way decent after plant. Really, really strong stuff. And now as you look over to as you look over to the Enigma fans, they're really starting to wake up. They realize this is still a very oh, yeah. winnable situation. The flags are coming back out. The chance has started. Question now is, whose fan base is louder? Is it Enigma or Orangutan? We're going to find out very shortly as we enter this first full buy round shooter. The first operator of the map comes out. It's Cali ready with a null command as well. Into primed and ready on this angle. An opening looks very likely for Orangutan here. Will they find that opening? The shooter once again wants to peek, but he didn't expect oh. Andy. Andy with the shrouded step. This man moves through darkness like no one else on the server. He's the one finding the entries. He's the IGL. And if it's not him, he's got Excali by his side. Vivo dead. The orangutan defense in shambles, Kremer, as he have no answer. And shooter got completely blindsided in that round. Hunt as well. They want to make sure that Orangutan doesn't say anything in this round. I really like it. It's a scorched earth policy, but it's one that was one that's proven to work before and it'll work again now. The operator snatched from Orangutan's grasps here. I'm interested to see if that gets passed along and kept in the hands of Enigma. But for now, Persia may focus on survival. Something Excali is going to look to uh, beat him off. Finishes the job. Clean, precise, surgical almost. There's Tesseract also attempting to run caught out in mid. Trapped, pinged, revealed, and put down. 3k from Antidotes. And the momentum now really starting to build for Enigma. You see the team getting hyped of the good reason. We are seeing some very clean Valorant from them. Oh, yeah. If I were Orangutan, I would call the timeout now. I mean, this round, I believe Orangutan yep. do not have the best of eyes. But take your time. Reassess. Ensure that Kremer's prediction doesn't come true and move forward. Your prediction was a rare attack, wasn't it? I actually didn't make a prediction. I'm just against yours. Would you like to make a prediction now? <laughs> you want to make a prediction now? Uh, you're, you're obliged to predict a rare attack now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am. I am. I, I think Orangutan will take this map. I think this map will go into overtime as well. That's interesting. Okay. I think all these maps could go to overtime, to be honest. There is not much separating the two of these teams. And yeah. having seen um, ha having seen these uh, kind of opening games and having seen how Enigma, uh, sorry, and uh, Global and Velocity played yesterday, um, I would be very surprised if Orangutan go out in the lower brackets. I, I expect this team to get to the finals. We'll have to see. But for now, as Orangutan do call this early attack, it's, Let's see if there's going to be a um, let's see if there's going to be a uh, fun, fun thing to watch out for. Out. 
Happy Pride indeed, the colors of the rainbow, a very key part of India's fabric in society. Always good to uh, uh, see a variety of supporters in the crowd. But look at this, Enigma, this is bomb rushing the beach Ooh. side. And Tesseract says, ha, 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 ha. You will not get past my fury, sirs, as that timeout paid dividends. The Hunter's Fury getting two kills, not something you see too often. Really not something you see too often at this level, especially with players who are so mechanically gifted in terms of movement. Enigma are a little dumbstruck. They're not quite sure what went wrong. They have enough time, though, Kremer, to reassess the situation and look for options. Truly is here yeah. now. Even though Enigma yeah. are two players down, they do still outgun Orangutan here. Antidote, just hoping for a bit of timing. And I think once the smoke fades, we're going to see Enigma just collapse onto this beef site. That's where spot out. There's the opening. Question is, will the second player be spotted? Will they be able to catch out the lurking alone member? Yes, they do. There goes Vibble. And now down to the three on three. It's tempted to be traded by Shooter, but Shooter. What? The kill counts as his. Rexy's been team killed. And then from the flank, Tesseract reveals himself a Nigma. Oh, this is turning into a collapse. There's already a player backside. No spotted out. Caught out. Down to the 2 on 2. Aggression comes in. RBK on the wide angle. Tesseract comes in the first. RBK for a 1v2. Tesseract finishes the job. A 4k from him. The read is that he hasn't got that ace. It's because Enigma put down one of their own. I am speechless. I remember earlier on in the beta and even the very early patches of uh, Valorant, you could do a lot of team damage. Uh, and uh, raises and so was would cause a lot of problems. Then eventually they nerfed that. Despite all of that, RVK shoots down a teammate with the Hunter's Fury. And Rexy's like, bro, bro, what, what did I do? Remind me again, because we were winning that round. And Enigma are definitely going to be having a strong word about that round if they do lose. Yeah. But Kremer has made a prediction Michael. that they won't. Yeah. John Michael Tesseract. Yeah. He isn't just a sober main. He's an inspiration. A reason to breathe. An escape from this evil world filled with thieves. He is an art. The first gift you open at Christmas. A hug from a, hug from a loved one. Everything you've ever wanted. And everything you ever need. And for Orangutan... They definitely need him. 3-3 three three now. Deseract's heroics are giving them that equalizer, but the economy still hasn't leveled. Yeah, I'd love to look at the scoreboard because I didn't get to look at the economy and what it's looking like. But one can look at Rexy and safely say that the lockdown will be committed. And with that lockdown, they will try and move on to the side. Unfortunately for them, that knife gave the side of Orangutan a lot of information. Antidote, he wants to move across the map. Where is he going? Back to side, the kill jar on his feet. Persia takes care of Antidote. That was the most crucial kill of this round. If Orangutan win it, it's because Persia shut down the omen. Now, he's got one wall to work with. Two people looking at him. Persia will just hold his ground, but not for long. Rexy will push. Persia taken out of the server. Three you on three. Run. Excuse me, a three on four. Does Enigma have the numbers with one dish? And they'll keep it. Shooter and Tesseract, though, will try their hardest. They'll try their downest. But it's just not enough. Enigma puts another on the scoreboard. The fact it's even coming this close. It comes to these trades. Raw fuel. What a team player there. To be able to alternate from teammate to teammate to enemy to enemy. Keeping them all alive. An absolute magnanimous performance from him. And for Enigma. Keeps him in the lead. Keeps him alive. But as we mentioned earlier. Orangutan. Their economy hadn't leveled. I was starting to see the repercussions of that. Deserac tables were best. I were doing what's like the SK Rossi, uh, the SK Rossi play, where it's he's good enough to just give him a gun on an ego. And then the sort of communication here from Orangutan is Deserac go kill. Deserac sort of goes, all right. And then that's that. Yeah, it's something that really got popularized 
uh, in another game altogether by Navi and Simple. But it's not just one Vandal they have. They have two, if I'm not mistaken. I think Tesseract and Shooter both have Vandals. Let's see what they can do with it. It's a 5v5 retake. Rexy gets a little bit of information. Three members just looking in one direction. One direction is an awful ban, but Enigma, they're not awful. They're going to find the kills they need, but there's one man that they have to be concerned about. It's Tesseract. Tesseract is fighting, but it's not enough. Push here with just the Sheriff. Nobody gave him a Vandal. Nobody gave him a chance. He's going to find a kill. He's going to resurrect a friend. 2v2. Persia and Vibor versus the Jet and Antidote. Enigma. They've got to be really, really wary because they can't stick the defuse. It's been half defused. That's huge, but it doesn't matter. Raw fuel and anti peak at the same time. They'll shut them down. Great stuff coming out from Enigma. Smiles all around as anti is going to fist bump his teammates. They know that that was a crucial round for them. Now, two members of Orangutan purchased Vandals in the previous round. What is their economy going to look like? That was a big gamble on defense, wasn't it, Tremor? It was a huge gamble, and with three players able to invest, their money's not going to be too bad, thankfully. But with kind of everyone almost 500 and below on credits, they can't, can't buy loot where they buy, lose eco, buy, lose eco. And it means that uh, I think we're able to grab rounds at a very, very <laughs> scary pace here. The Operator may be able to assist them here. Enigma, they've only got a Blade Storm against Tesseract Sunset's Fury. And if Tesseract Sunset's Fury is anything to go by, it's something to fear. It is. And if you are RBK's ally, his Hunter's Fury is also something to fear. So both servers can cause problems. Oh, look at Anti Look, I love this. This is our moment should be played. Look at the advantage he's got in his team. But Shooter's having none of it. They saw a pixel. They saw another. Anti and RBK dead. It was a nice try coming out from Enigma. But now it's the three of them. And one of them is Raw Fuel. Raw Fuel has done a lot. This time. Oh, Tesseract Trigger discipline. He'll stab him in the back. Oh, that was brutal by Brutus. Even Caesar would have not approved of that. Excali finds one though. Excali trying his best. But Tesseract with the shock dart. Sign Cosentan like the back of his hand. He knows his geometry. He's going to get the kill and the round. What a round, Tesseract. He's so good. He is so good. And here's the thing. Here is the thing, Vivek. He's doing it consistently. This is Lee. <laughs> the destroyer. Oh, I love that. And I like that. One. Enigma. They're straight to the timeout. They're straight to the timeout. They've realized, oh, Tesseract's waking up. They need someone to stop him. Antidote's doing a very good job at matching him. They need to stop him, not match him. Oh, yeah. And he, in a sense, in this team competition, is more enabled to uh, pick up tracks, right? Because he's playing the Omen. And if you look over at Excali, one of the key duelists, he's playing the. KO on this map. So Excali is setting up for anti. Other than that, it's raw fuel that needs to bring the firepower. Uh, yeah. Raw fuel with the blade storm has got to find kills. But for now, Tesseract with a very simple kitchen knife is finding kills. A kitchen knife and an arrow is enough for Tesseract. So he's doing a phenomenal job. Orangutan are starting to feel themselves. And uh, yeah, they're clawing their way back. The economy is looking sharp. Shooter's got himself the operator. And the most important thing about that round is that, okay, there were two rounds where Anti lurked past them. A very early round towards A main where Anti caught Shooter off guard while Shooter was aggressively peeking with the operator. Now they know. Now they know what this omen is going to play like. They can prepare for this. This is very standard. So Rangutan are starting to feel comfortable. And I think we might even see Rangutan close this half with a 7-5 lead. At best, we're looking at 6-6 in my opinion. However, what's important is for Enigma and what they can do in this round. Raw Fuel has the Blade Storm. They haven't committed to a side just yet, Tremor. They're Shadow slow things Ghost on the shoulder peak is trying to catch out. Potentially one of these players on the one way, but it's Enigma. They are really passive to start this round. They know Orangutan are going to push something. They're now just trying to find where. And Orangutan 
the timeouts definitely help them as well because you see complete stagnation completely static they know that shooter with this operator is just going to keep a on lock there's also a very high chance that enigma only 30 seconds left now gonna try and isolate him rexy making a bit of noise outside of the main just trying to distract the main body of the force now <laughs> the Ningba get ready to go through the smoke. Vibor, the one man to stop. Fragments could be time to perfection. It's all on to whether or not this flash from Excali is going to hit him. There's the flash. There's the fragment. Spotted out. Vibor, good for the first session. Goes to get that first player. Raw can able to train. Here comes that Hunter's Fury. But it's only good for one. However, one is enough. There one goes Anakin. Oh. Actually, the, the fadeaway shots. Tesseract is so good. I have the spike. No time. They waited too long. They, they wanted to slow it down. On paper, it looked like a really good idea, Krema. They tried to slow down the round, see what it is that Orangutan likes to do around the map. Orangutan like to play like a team with class. They do not push. At market, there's an alarm bot. RWK flew an owl through market towards the door. Didn't gather any information. One player peaked B main. They saw Tesseract and they're like, eh, we're not challenging, challenging this server today. No, thank you. Yeah. So, they were playing for information on the side of Enigma, but Orangutan are giving them none. And it's not way. as if Orangutan aren't gathering information. Eventually, they knew the A hit was coming, and Omen smoked up A main. Great stuff coming out from them. Now Enigma seem to be forcing the issue. A jet dash on the side. The blade storm committed. What can Rockfield do? No, there's a fragment. You don't want to push that. He's going to fall back. It looks as if OG will give them a little bit of space, but they'll take a little bit of flesh as well. Rockfield will fall. Ghost gets the kill. 5e4. Enigma still have to plant. This time they have plenty of time. Excali has a gun, but Excali has no friends. We shoot up Vibor and push her. Light up the kill feed and shoot her once again. Takes care of Antidote. 6 5. Like I said, at Kremer, we're looking at a 7 5 half here. I'll tell you what, while it may not matter when it comes to momentum, well, it may not matter when it comes to the time if you don't have players to help you, there's nothing that can assist. And for Orangutan, they are continuing to look just so strong over on enigma there's i want to highlight actually not enigma i want to highlight uh, around saying a little bit more ghost yeah. has been able ghost has been able to get the opening two kills twice in a row he's only got four kills but the but i think three of them have been entries the impact of ghost kills and being able to stagnate pushes has been instrumental to orangutan success and it shows that even though tesseract is at the top with all the big numbers ghost's impact cannot be understated oh yeah Go th those are impact kills right not dying yeah. uh pretending as if hey the side's yours getting that kill onto raw fuel not anyone raw fuel i think it was raw fuel pretty sure it was raw fuel getting that kill and then really setting up for Orangutan to press Enigma at the right time. Enigma will mid-plant. It's like midstream while you're in a urinal and somebody yanks you out of there. That's what happened to Enigma. They've got one more round to work with in this half. 5v5, they've got the spike. Where can they go? Can they see anyone? Can they find the kill? No opening to be found. Rockfield takes a little bit of damage. There's Tesseract. This man is just a bit too oh much. Oh, oh, jeez, Krema. How does he do it? If it's not him, it's Persia. Persia has stepped up this game. Korea, Philippines, and Pakistan coming together to silence Enigma and their supporters in Chennai. This is an affair in which many countries have a stake, and a lot of fans are really, really concerned. Are Enigma going to be pushed to the lower bracket? It's a very real possibility. If Tesseract keeps this up, then that is absolutely happening. Tesseract and Persia. Is giving us. Uh, and Persia both are giving mind-blowing performances right now. Tesseract, uh, for me as well, you notice how he played that initial point of contact on B. He, he shoots that first player, then hides. He allows Persia to peek out and then fight without being aimed at. And then they both alternate off their angles. And bear in mind, this is over the course of like a three-second period. It is split-second reactions from Orangutan. And it's working beautifully. As we now see a full push through the main, getting ready to get to this site. Kill is going to delay them, but it won't stop them. I don't think it will. Shooters is going to move on, but there's raw fuel stopping them with a ghost in a bucket tucked away. Enigma will shut them down, and he's had enough. He's shown up as well. He was instrumental in the first couple of rounds for Enigma. Then they slowed down, but now, once again, in the second round, when in the second half, excuse me, when it matters the most, Antidote has shown up. Really, really 
strong stuff from Enigma now. And that pistol round, that's their journey to recovery right there. That is their journey is. to recovery. I'm really interested to see if Orangutan now have a have anything up their sleeve for the attack of defense, uh, of the attack of incentive. Spectre's yeah. on every single member of Enigma. They want the close access. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a force buy. Like you said, a Spectre, a Frenzy, and a Sheriff. And they have Spectre's speed dividends. But Enigma don't care. They've got Spectres of their one own. Yes, back to the fence. He can find one. Spike he finds down, yet another in you know, a 1v2. He's still making this work. He's got the oh, spike no. and he's got plenty of time. He's got plenty of time. Now, what you want to do with Enigma is not give him a 1v1. Don't give him a 1v1. Well, they won't give him a chance. And breathe. And breathe. It's, it's like every time, every time Tesseract said a clutch, my heart skips a beat. I, I'm. I don't, is this a health and safety risk to put Tesseract it in a clutch? Or it is. It's certainly is for Enigma because they all end up dying. But <laughs> for I, I'm, Enigma. I'm telling you, Kramer, oh. I've been looking at production. They're running around trying to get insurance for everybody in the arena. You don't want 50 people to have a stroke yeah. at once. This is how it is That's in right. Chennai. The, pardon? Yeah, yeah it truly, truly is. It truly is. Yeah, it ahead. is nuts. Now we have a proper buy coming out from Orangutan. They did invest a little bit in the previous round, but they did get kills. They did do a little bit of economic damage. So both teams pretty close in terms of what they're working with in terms of weaponry, but a lot more surplus money in Enigma. Antidote has a Spectre and 3,000 credits. RVK has got 600 and a Bulldog. And Tesseract has got a Phantom and a lot of potential to once again propel Orangutan to victory. Shooter has also been crucial. And this time it's OG that slowed down the momentum. They want Enigma to overaggress. And Rexy's trigger finger is itching. But he's gonna fall back with great discipline. Where do Orangutan wanna go in this round? It seems as if they'll start moving towards B. Three members from the team's Enigma towards the B side. The dash has been enabled, the door will be shut. The opportunity is still open for Orangutan. Shooter, oh, that was your touch and go, but he's made up for it. The spray was a bit shaky, but him and Vivo will take control of the site, take control of the round. And Enigma, they've got two members alive and they want to save Krema. Really, really strong openings there. I like how we see Orangutan, they sort of just funnel their way onto that site. And all of them just take the duel at once. They punish the fact that we see whiffs from Enigma there. And it, even though there were some whiffs of their own, they just had yep. quantity. They had numbers. And that's what went in their favor. Keeping the lead at 8 to 7, Enigma now need to stare down their buy and figure out what needs to change with this B defense. Because Orangutan, they've hit it two or three times now. And every time, they've been able to get out of main and almost get to that site. Yeah, the first time they hit it was in the pistol round. So raw fuel has a cheeky angle. But you can't keep repeating that angle. It's way unlikely that you get away with playing that pocket uh, towards market. Uh, so that's not going to work. This time around, what I do want to point out is in that small exchange between Shooter and Rexy. Rexy on the Killjoy, if I'm not mistaken, had a Marshall. Just not the best kind of weapon at that range. It it, mm. it does reload rather quickly. But you, you pretty much just got to go bam, bam. And he, this white shooter whiffing and nearly giving enough time for Rexy, Rexy couldn't recompose himself to do any significant damage to shooter. More importantly, what happened off camera was Weibo getting all those kills. Another issue with the setup that Enigma are running is they have two members on B side. They have Antidote playing mid. I understand why he's mid, but these guys are just going to keep closing the door. So maybe they want to switch up their positions. If the market door is going to get closed, sure, you can shoot it down, but it's just not working for Antidote. You're giving away your position. There's already another member marking your angle, waiting for you. So if the B side is what we're concerned about, this is what Enigma could look to rework. However, Krema, it's Orangutan that take a tech. Oh, uh, I thought it was tactical. It's technical. Hopefully we'll be able to remedy it quickly. I imagine it's problems with Shooter, who um, is playing from Pakistan. Is having a, we've had a few technical issues. That's why the game started late today, uh, purely because we were just trying to uh, fix all of that. And we've, we've we've done a pretty good job. It's sort of, it's, it, it, Shooter's internet has behaved for an entire map. And, and well, a map and a half, actually. So I'm very happy with that. Something that, for me now, is going to really be there to watch out for is going to be whether or not this breaks the momentum of a Rangatang. Because losing a 
lo losing that sort of momentum due to something out of your hands, like a technical pause, is really it, it really weighs on your psyche. It does, it does, especially on offense, right? Because uh, on defense, you can to a certain degree be reactive, but on offense, you've always got to be together, uh, finding opportunities, finding avenues, and now uh, the goddamn internet gods, uh, who don't exist actually in India and Pakistan, they pretty much have left this part of the subcontinent, need to show up, and they have. Okay, they have. Shooters back on the server. Antidote, he's taking Can't a deep position towards Wine. I don't know if he's given away his position. The Owl Drone is spotting him. And he doesn't feel comfortable sitting in that corner. He's going to move back towards main. Enigma, aggressing for information towards A. Get a little bit off it, but nothing too significant. However, at B, RVK is starting to push up B main. He tossed out a recon. He's speaking B main. Persia knows he's there. And Persia will look at the drone, the drone will look at Persia, and they'll bid adieu to each other as orangutan start to crunch the A site. Slow aggression for Tree here. I like how quiet they're being about this as well. They realize that this is going to be a real difficult position to make your way out of here. Shooter oh. goes to the high ground. Rexy doesn't even see him coming. Eventually able to flick back down to assist him. The paranoid doesn't need antidote. It doesn't matter though. Tesseract removes him from the round. Only 30 HP left on him though. But as long as he has one, he is still scary. Now, back to side Rexy. Left. Under heaven. Ready for this attack. Season coming. Persia finishes the job. Raw feels able to trade. A bang attack. Two on three. Both players trapped under heaven. Is this anticipated from Enigma? They still need RPK to get in the position before they really try and launch this retake. Out comes the null command, RPK being pressured here by Vibor. Hold on. Desperately hopes for an angle. That null command is so huge. He was going to recon Kremer, he can't recon. And now he's going to have to walk his way to side. It's not good enough. Vibor takes care of RPK. Excali is there. Just one man for Enigma. Can he cut it? He's done it in the past. Persia doesn't have too much health. He's been an absolute beast on defense. This time around, he has no business speaking. Excali. Excali will do it. I thought for a brief second that the Null Command and those kills had sealed the deal for Orangutan. But somehow, Enigma went around on the back of on the back of the most crucial kill in this round, which was Rexy winning the duel versus Shooter. Shooter with a bulldog. And Rexy with the Vandal, first bullet to the head, Vandal will always do more damage. The guns made the difference, and that's why the economy plays such a huge role. It really does. And if you look over to how if you look over to how Orangutan have been sort of structuring their attack, I love how they they're sort of utilizing uh, they're utilizing Tesseract as if he were a it's almost as if you were a lurker on the sober, and they sort of give him a lot of freedom. And it means that, and this, we've seen them do this with Ghost as well, and Vibor, which means that when Orangutan are playing well, they're very good at making players who are playing well play even better, and then boosting up players who aren't. And being able to do that within a team, within a map, within the space of rounds, is just phenomenal. Shooter now hunting for the opening onto Antidote here. He's ready to swing out a little bit, spots the head, reveals the intention, but intention doesn't necessarily mean that it can be stopped. Instead, the situation of the battle for mid raw fuel, so damn low on HP here. But Orangutan, this is all a big fight. It's all a elaborate ruse, not this time. Uh oh, we made it up. As Tesseract is going to drone out Enemy three, mod. as the rest of Orangutan set their game. The background to be made. Great stuff coming up from Orangutan. B to mid to A, back to B where they find the entry. But Antidote is there. Antidote finds Persia. He's looking to get out of dodge, but Shooter will not allow it. It's now a 4v2. Orangutan, that round was tactical genius. I I mean, I cannot wait. Can RVK really pull this back? He's trying. RBK and Rexy are still fighting. I thought the round was secured for Orangutan, but RBK finds another crucial kill. Rexy is the comrade you need. Rexy will shut them down. Shooter and goes dead. Orangutan mind game. The heck out of Enigma, but Enigma on sheer brute will. And perseverance will win that round. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Kramer. 
as well. It was just the smallest of gaps, the absolute smallest of gaps in the defense there from um, from Orangutan. And it allows the Enigma players to just sort of get around them, to outmaneuver them. And then once the attack actually comes, once the initial fight actually comes, they're able to dance around them, cover the openings that Orangutan had already made for them there. This is a bloody close map. And bear in mind, of course, our third and final decider, I believe it's Haven. That's going to yep. be even closer. It is. If we get there. But that round, Kremai, there are just some very subtle nuances coming out from Orangutan in how they moved across the map. They moved through mid. They got a lot of information. First off, there was a nutty recon board. <coughs> Oh, that recon board from RVK, I haven't seen uh, that lineup ever. It ends up landing at the B hut outside B main. Then they move through mid. After moving through mid, they move towards defender spawn. They spot anti, trying to hold on to B and watch B main. They smoke him off. They say, okay, we're not contesting you now. Then at the same time, Tesseract has moved up a shot. He sent the drone. He sees the Killjoy's alarm bot. Simultaneously, the entirety of Orangutan has started to make progress towards V-Main. They're already in V-Main. They catch Indigma losing with their pants down. They take advantage, to get run. to the side and plant. And then the rest is top of legend. How are we, K and Rexy pull that round together and won it for Enigma is something that uh, pundits will be talking about for days to come. Enigma still fighting for a shot at APAC. Tremor. Eight line? This is truly anybody's game. This is now for Enigma. This is now where they can really start to do some damage. Orangutan don't have much money. They don't have much of a buy either. This should be a clean round. Now, this could backfire. If it isn't a clean round, even if Orangutan lose, if they kill four of the Oh, you want to look at Elong? You want to look at Elong? RVK finds that crucial kill, both towers touching each other, blocked by a wall, Anti finds an opening, he found those, Excali finds another, Enigma is starting to feel themselves, the timeout, not paying dividends for Orangutan, Shooter gets one with the blade stop, but that one is just a consolation kill, and RVK, he clots the previous round, I was looking at the minimap and I'm really sorry to cut you off like that Tremor, but RVK had pushed out A-Long, Tesseract, was marking that push and RVK bested him off screen. Crazy stuff coming out from Enigma. The fact that the player they catch out as well is Tesseract, like the heavy hitter for OG, yep. that's got to be felt for them, right? That's got to be felt. And as we see now, Orangutan with a with, with a lockdown available, that's not much for an old arsenal. There's a counter to lockdown available on Enigma. They still have a From the Shadows, which could be used for some fairly swift rotations. And look at how Enigma placed themselves. Huge bid for mid control here, while Orangutan have got most of their forces just stacked up outside of B main, ready to go hit this B site. Unfortunately, the rotation from mid to B is pretty damn quick. Orangutan can be moving into the stack if they're not careful there. Oh. Oh, this was beautiful stuff coming up from Orangutan. They don't care. Stack or no stack. River has stepped up. He found two crucial kills. Antidote will punch back. With the Phantom, gets a kill. It's now a 3v3. The Paranoia affecting players at the back of side. RVK, he stepped up. He's best at Tesseract once again. What is the answer to Tesseract? It is the enemy, so what? It is RVK, but we're born in a 1v2. If Orangutan need a clutch, if Orangutan need individual heroics, it's Bibor that has to step up. First, he needs to get the spike. He's got 43 seconds on the clock and going to the other side. Will he want he? Yes, he will. Now, Enigma, in a wide goose chase, has got to run after Vibor. There's no other chance, but they don't know. They don't know if Vibor is waiting. Oh, they're not falling for this. Vibor left. might have heard Antidote, but he swung back to his market. The spike hasn't been planted. Vibor gets a kill. Raw fuel dead. And he knows where he is, and Vibor once again mind gaming them. Oh, this is madness, Trevor. Yeah, so He's. Smart. He is. The, the, that is more than the collective or IQ of the entire audience right here. Ten He's gone over to the A side and it's a 1v1. <laughs> After this round, if he clutches it, Tema, it's going to be sure genius. Vivo, <laughs> stack the heaven. As <laughs> Enigma attempt this, uh, sorry, I caught me off guard there. <laughs> they attempt this retake. As you know, going for the rotation through mid, through tree. 
And now, bear in mind that Vibble hasn't left this side. So it's going to make taking an engagement, particularly a point blank, quite difficult for the Phantom here. Cover going up. Desperately needing this round. It was a rather immense win. It was meant to be clean. D4, he's outmaneuvered them. This would be another 1v3 to the myriad of attempted clutches from Orangutan here. Oh my god, D4 pushes in, spots him out. 66 8 No! No! No, it doesn't. Is there enough time though? Does he have enough time? It comes out the final. There's breath for Enigma. They survive. They keep the dreams alive. They keep the hope of Haven still ablaze. And as they slowly inch their way to the end of the map here, Orangutan, even though they lost that round, you need to remember, that was nothing but an eco. Hi. I mean, Rivo played it so well. He played the map so well. But in the end, he sensed that he might be sticking the defuse. He walked into the smoke. And grenade. once you walk into the smoke, spot him, and then you fade away, it's way hard to come back into the smoke and take a fight. I feel that he should have held his ground in the smoke and taken the fight. Excali surely feels that he should be taking the fight towards B main as he spot down Persia. Oh, 4v5 for Orangutan, the rounds are starting to slip away. Kema's prediction is coming to bit by bit. Shooter, Kenny Blue was wrong. Ribo will get a kill. Antidote will down Ribo, but Shooter is still there on the server. He's taking care of Anti. It's a 3v3 with one man down. Raw Fuel, though, will pull him back. Test back to the Ancient Man dead. Ribo has a second, but Excali and Raw Fuel, they taking care of the two most dangerous players on OG as Ribo and Shooter fall, but there still goes. Ghost with the Spectre. Good old Ghost, reliable as always. The Sage on Icebox, the Omen on a send, but it's just not enough as Enigma wins. We'll clutch it out. They're sitting at map point. We're ready to go to Haven. I'm ready for Haven here. Orion saying they don't have much. They have much left in their arsenal, do they? It feels like they're running out of a little bit of gas. And as Enigma start getting ready to craft their way to a victory, I'm really curious to see how, how this final map pans out for Enigma. Uh they're not out of the woods yet, though. They are not out of the woods. And I don't know if Orangutan is going to win this map. But if they are truly a team made out of different metal, of a different metal, they need to win at least one round and put up a fight. We saw Remnant do that yesterday. We want to see more of a fight from Orangutan on that it may, what could possibly be the last remaining moments on us. Then, area. RBK has been pushed there back. It's been are. phenomenal in shutting down Tesseract. Shooter peaks, dash to the way, gets a little bit of information. A lockdown committed, and this lockdown causing a little bit of an issue as the defense has eventually taken back control of mid. Orangutan have to reapproach the round all over again. I love this ult management as well. Vipo is able to survive just tucked into a corner here. There's still a From the Shadows, there's still a counter lockdown. This is accompanied by a Null Command and a Blade Storm on Enigma here. Vipo, this opening is going to be so important here. RBK at the close angle, caught out, there's the opening. Here comes the attack, kickstart, not just this attack, the kickstart, the heart of as Juicer is able to trade. It falls to X Cali, one versus however many dare fight him. But he's instantly nullified, it's down to two players. Two seconds versus left. four for the site winning this would send us to a third match. Hope is what they need. Hope is what they're working off. They need to get the spike planted, though. And I mean, excuse me, they need to commit the lockdown, is what I meant to say. The lockdown's still available. The paranoia has thrown out. Four members alive. Orangutan, there's no way they lose this. Or am I wrong? Is Rexy going to shut us all up entirely? 2v3. Rexy still giving Enigma a chance to take this to map 3 right here, right now. He's brought down Shooter, 2v2. Killjoy and Omen alive. What is Persia's play? He's still not committing the lockdown. He's going to swing on confidence. That confidence is enough to take down Rexy. Time was also not on their side. Antidote will find Ghost. And Enigma still have to play one more round at the very least. I really like how Enigma, particularly, make that costly for Orangutan. 
They are really, really good. They decide to call for a hunt. Instead, they back off, go for a few exits where they can. We do have a brief technical pause from the members of Orangutan once again. Hopefully, we'll be able to remedy that as quick as humanly possible. But now we see Enigma on the precipice of closing out the map. I'm going to throw at you a bit here, Vivek. Do you see Orangutan closing out the series? Or do you think that on Haven, if it goes to Haven, Enigma are going to take it? I don't see anything right now, Camera, because my vision is blurred. I am mid-stroke. Both these teams are really causing a lot of health and safety problems. The clutches have been insane. But in all seriousness, I think we're going to a map three. But I also think we're going to overtime here. You think overtime? Yup. That's, that's, that's interesting. That's very interesting. I... I don't think we're going to see the lights of Oversight, not on Ascent. Maybe on Haven, but not on Ascent. I think Enigma, all they need now is just one decent buy, which they have. And unless we see Tesseract sort of give us one of his god plays, or Vibor giving us one of his god plays, Enigma should be able to take us to Haven here. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been making fun of your prediction, Kremer, and I mean, I, I, th I think 2-1, uh, like you said, is a very big possibility. But on Haven... I'm calling a 2-1 as well. The difference is you're saying 2-1 Enigma, I'm saying 2-1 Orangutan. So if we do go to Haven, I think Orangutan is going to win. That's brave of you, considering I've not, I've not had an incorrect prediction in series. You like, did have an incorrect stuff. prediction. No, yet. no, I, I, have, I have on maps and I have on like series score, but I've not got overall winner wrong. Yet. Okay. Light. Okay. Do you know what the odds are for this game? This. Uh, I imagine pretty, pretty significantly against Orangutan. Yes, yeah. I mean, I was doing research and I was doing statistical research and I looked at the odds. I'm not a betting man. I don't understand those numbers, but it's something about 2.30 in favor of Enigma to 1.69 in favor of Orangutan. Oh, that, so Orangutan. That's rel uh, relatively even, actually. It is? Yeah, it's relatively even. You should so, run. I'll, I'll explain it all straight. For now, we've got a right attack. We're going to be having to go for the slow count. It's instantly destroyed by the fragment. Really nice reaction from Excali here. Remember, it's only three rounds that separate these teams. There's no ults available for Ryan saying The Blaze Storm's already out for Enigma, so it's all down to both gun and even sword play come to it. So Ryan saying Rotate back through mid. We've seen a rare They're not very big on coming to win executions. They really like going for map control. They like marauding around the map, showing a bit of swagger and showing an enigma that they can't push without the risk 30 of pushing seconds the left. Four players here. But it's all a ruse. It's a double thing. They've doubled back on themselves. It comes to me. There's already a three man set up though. What is that enough? Shooter able to avoid the initial start, able to avoid the initial no three shots. Shot. But there's still no kill for either team. Shooter down Enemy from the flank. Scott's out and Cali. There's the opening. Antido unable to trade. Shooter on for the Third now, sees the... Oh, oh look at Persia. Persia has looped around them. Unfortunately, his position has been given away. He he was holding market and then he went through defender's spawn and he's causing problems of plenty. Rafiul dead. They might just secure a 10. It's again the two that have clutched one too many rounds for Enigma. Can they do it again? It's RVK and Rexy. They're on match point. They want to equalize, but Tesseract has say in this matter. He'll shut down RVK. Rexy gets one. He's taking care of the enemy KJ, but can he find another? And another. No, he can't. Rexy dead. Tesseract. And the side of Orangutan very much in this. The crowd is shunting. And I can't make this noise, Kremer, but I know exactly who they're talking about. It's Tesseract. Absolutely. Another really strong round from Orangutan. This is off the back of the momentum from Shooter. And remember on Icebox when Enigma were, I believe, like 11 8 in the lead? And Arangatan made a uh, I think five or six round comeback to win the map. Is this what we see here? A tactical timeout's called. And I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Enigma actually have any cash here either. Hmm. They look a bit deflated. The fans are also a little quiet. The phone held up, but it's not convincing. EG, EG wins. There you go. It's confirmed. DD is thick mark. EG wins. Didi, Didi, uh, Didi means uh, sister in Hindi. I, I still I don't, don't know. know who that is. 
I, I, oh, on the, on the topic of sister uh, and the kind of sister team, <laughs> um, OG success in two different, either two different uh, tournaments at the moment. Oh, yeah? Both winning the opening map in this and their uh, Game Changers team winning the opening map in their uh, APAC run. Oh, they're forcing on this round. I'm not a fan. I mean, they can do a degree, but the they don't have to. But, you know, if, if they post an event, all's well that ends well. But Shakespeare was dumb. Rexy was much better. He found an opening and Shooters Bell pulled it back. He knows it's a shabby bar. He's going to start feeling himself as he dashes onto the side. He's taking control of Generator. Two members towards the heavens. It's Rexy with that Marshall. It's backfired in a round. Maybe this time around he can put it to better use. But Tesseract is taking care of RBK. It's Sova v Sova. It's an anime battle between the two of them. 4v3 though. The spike hasn't been planted. Orangutan are starting to feel themselves. I know. I can sense it. I mean, they know as well that, hey, this is a simple round. We don't throw these rounds. The worst that can happen to us is some nut job from Enigma Club, which is a 1v4. But none of that business today. A shooter takes care of raw fuel. It's now a 2v4. Maybe, maybe in some universe, Enigma can still pull this round. But I highly doubt it, Kremlin. There's no time. I think exits are all they really need on Enigma here. And they are going for a few. Rexy trying to just tickle the tag players where he can on the swing. Unfortunately, though, Ghost is toying with him at the moment. He's even able to shut down Excali as well. Ghost is on a bit of a what? warning run here. But Rexy wakes up. Off they go. But where's the final player from the flank? People. Does he shut down Rexy? Trying to catch him out from behind. But Rexy survives. And as we enter the final round of regulation. You are very much right, Vivek. We could very well see overtime here. Yeah. I See, for Orangutan, losing those guns doesn't really matter. For the side of Enigma, what really, really matters is how much utility they're able to afford in this round. Rexy's got the lockdown, but on the other side, Tesseract has got the Hunter's Fury. So that lockdown will be countered very easily. It really boils down to timing. And when Rexy decides to come in that lockdown, this peak has got to pay dividends for Enigma. They want the shed to pop off. If they get a first pick and Rob Tool can disengage, it's a big win for Enigma. But right now, there's no one. There's literally no one from Orangutan towards the B side. They have one player mid. Shooter is playing mid. And look at the setup coming up from Enigma. Four players split between mid and B. The lockdown committed. But Orangutan will still not commit the Hunter's Fury. Tigger discipline. Ability discipline. As Orangutan know that they have enough time on the clock. Uh oh. Enigma are mind gaming themselves. Look at the rotation. It's a bit disastrous. They've all moved back to A. But now Orangutan shoot themselves in the foot as they start moving back to A. The three members from the side of Enigma on the A side. How do Orangutan find an opening? A smoke towards heaven. RVK caught out in the open. Persia will bring him down. There's the Hunter Suri causing problems. A couple of tanks. But Antidote Rexy with the guns gets the kills. Enigma can taste victory. TV. There's not much HP on Shooter. Shooter will take care of Rexy, but he's all by himself as Tesseract dies to the fragment. It's just Shooter, and just Shooter is not enough. 11 13, we are going to a map 3 camera. We said it would happen. We said Enigma would find their flair, their figure, and by God, it's safe. Now it's on to a man thing. The ball is in their claw. Enigma, they've struck back. They've shown they taste blood and they cannot, under any circumstance, be underestimated. Now for a Rangazang, you next. The match will go towards a 2-1 pointer. Now, who is going to get the two? That is still to be a history. There's still going to be a mystery. And mystery yet to be resolved. Much to be resolved. And let's see who is going to make one and who is going to take one. Well, Crips, how did you like the ending? Raw Fuel, as soon as I spotted, had an operator. I believe that was the game changer. And that indeed was. 
Oh man, I was so nervous all this time. And all the rounds were very similar towards the tail end of the game. They either fake towards B, go A, or A or fake A, go B. And in the last round, when both the teams started to like mind game themselves, I was like, no, 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 no. You were doing it right. You were going the right way. Please, please go back. But then they were like, ah, shit, it's going to be a face off, isn't it? It's a full stacked A side. All five members of uh, OG need to rush in. And I was like, yeah, this is going to be a war. It has to be a brawl, and if it's going to end this way, then that's going to be the most exciting thing to happen. But Enigma, they just found themselves in the nick of time. Otherwise, this would have been yet another overtime. And there's already been an overtime before in Icebox. I don't know how many more overtimes can these players handle, because my heart would have exploded if I was on the stage right there playing this game. Well, they would want to play as long as they can to win the round, and Enigma wanted to make it a little easier, rather go on... Uh, the overtime, I believe it was an easier way to finish, except for OG trying to play the mind trick and getting played by themselves. That is what did not work because Site B was totally uh, objective to control and they couldn't control it. Instead, they again went in for the flank and that rotation that they made again towards the A, but all 10 players waiting for the blood, waiting for the murders. Nobody went alive except for Raw Fuel getting the final finish of kill and they sustain, they still sustain in this battle. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's a miracle that Enigma Gaming found the footing in this game because the way they were leading an icebox, I thought, yeah, sure, they can win. And then Orangutan surprised us. And that exact same thing happened here. <laughs> Enigma were about to win. Orangutan started making a comeback. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, not again. This is deja vu all over again. But they stabilized themselves in the nick of time. But I have to credit this victory of Enigma to some of the really aggressive plays they made towards the start of second half. Mm -hmm. Remember in the pistol round and the next three, four rounds after it, every time Orangutan tried to execute B, they dump in the utility, right? And the two standard smokes are one towards market, one towards CT. Yeah. And the smoke's objective is to just lock the defenders out of the action. But what do Enigma do? No. They just throw one underhand flash and they all swing out of the smokes at the same time. And Orangutan are like, bro, what is this? What is this disrespect? you got to stay back in there so that we can move into sight. And Enigma are like, no, nope, you shall not pass. Let's take a look at the highlights and see some of the ridiculous rounds that these guys were able to pull off. My goodness. My heart was all over the place. What about you, Tanya? Well, this map in particular has been literally tickling my bones we, you always say your muscles your skin but it was tickling my bones about where is it going to end and if it is happening to me imagine what the players are feeling what the fans of either of the teams are feeling but now feelings are going to move on towards next if we talk about this particular round here in this round well the start was fairly good but i mean won that to excalis finishers and Excali had to do something above and beyond to get the victory because they were facing two zero score line and you don't want to go third on all MP with no victory. But that momentarily victory was put to shut down as well by again Orangutan getting the first strike not being able to continue. Yeah, and Excali, I'm I'm glad that you pointed that out because Excali made some really killer moves uh, in this half. I mean, sure, in this clip you can see Tesseract just owning him with the Hunter's Fury, but there's gonna be one round, I'll point out when it comes. It was in round 7, when Excali's pushes made all the difference. Normally, after you plant on the A side, you would just hold back on A long and try to just defend it, right? But not Excali. Sure, I mean, this was another impressive round from Tesseract, but in round 7, what Excali did, he went above and beyond. He went to a risky position on top of Heaven. I guess you're, you'll see it in just a little bit. And he went towards the fight and he tried to destroy that lockdown. And it was just game-changing. If it wasn't for his play, then his team would have never found the space to work with. And then this round, what is this? Bonkers, ridiculous stuff. You get a knife kill, turns around and gets just one more, and then he's going to be killing Excali through the shock touch as well. Tesseract was just popping off. He got a kill from the knife, the gun, and the bow. All three weapons in the same round. Tesseract was very insane here in this particular round with a 4K finisher, but their momentum did not break either. They still continued. They went for a beam, but then it was for yeah, coming into the action, trying to stop. But the angles that Rocky was holding was pretty, uh, pretty predictable. That is how the immediate phase was. But 
somehow he and Igma were able to make the most out of uh, the battle for the start. They were able to create the strong momentum as well. But as soon as the side switch, also the play of a uh, team to run the time 30 seconds left. In the last, in the next few rounds, you'll see, you'll see several instances where Enigma Gaming literally disrespects OG's utility and they just pick up fights. And that's exactly what was getting them the advantage, but they try doing it one too often and Enig uh, Orangutan will eventually hit back. And so they realize that, sure, if these guys want to swing out of smokes, let them do so, we'll be more than ready for it. And these are the same positions that Rexy and RVK kept on holding all throughout and the same position from which Enigma was succeeding. So Orangutan needed a way to deal with not the players, but that particularly that particular position, which was just being so painful to them. And this person is who was painting a very good picture for the team and beautiful stuff though, also from the side of Orangutan. But Rockfield made a huge impact in this particular uh, way of progressing into the side, getting the strikes and also winning the round. And uh, this is all you want to do, to win it. And we both surviving the lockdown, getting the side empty, but little did they know Rockfield was still waiting. Was able to get one, but immediately got traded out. Impressive stuff, and this is when your heart really starts to pound again and again, right? It starts getting nervous. This is when the comeback begins, and after this round, Enigma was just flat out broke. Antidote, only gun carrier, everyone else left pretty defenseless. You can see that shooter just easily dismantles the crossfire because they weren't covering lane two, and those are the tiny mistakes which were basically miscommunications in the Enigma camp, getting Orangutan the advantage that they needed. They were able to get the advantage, but somehow they were getting outnumbered every single time. Shooter though going off angle and he had to do that to increase the momentum, to increase the players and to decrease the opponents. But Rexy could not survive much more getting by and also he was he was then later on put to shut down. But this a round of all chaos, immediate tracks and exchanges and Rockfield with the operator had to make a more use of it and he ultimately did it. And not only that, they still survived the map map point? What else do we call it? Slot point, round point, a lot more, but we are going to discuss this antidote being the MVP from the side of Enigma. This is the exact uh, discussion I had. If at all antidote had worked wonders in the map of Icebox, the scenario would have been different. I believe antidote heard me very nicely. He made sure of he had to be on the MVP card. Tesseract won't, won't even budge a little. He wants to he wants to stay there no matter if they win the map or they don't. Yeah, Deserac is just consistent as ever. He was the MVP for the previous game as well. He's the MVP here as well. And man, this guy just doesn't miss the Hunter's Fury, yeah. does he? I mean, you compare that with RVK. RVK was having a terrible game and he's barely got any frags. In fact, he's got double the amount of deads than his frags. And then there's Deserac. That's a Soa diff right there in a sense. But... I kind of feel like RVK was never ever in a position to win simply because he was trying so much to play for his team that he just failed to, you know, just contribute himself, contribute to the number of frags. And at the end of the day, Ascent is one of those games where no matter how much utility you have, it will boil down to those wild fighting and those trades. Mm -hmm. So if Tesseract, Shooter, Persia, all of them keep on just hitting their shots, there's going to be absolutely nothing that can go wrong for them. Ghost didn't have a great game as well. Only had six frags in the entire game. And I don't even blame him because every time Ghost put down those smokes, Enigma Gaming disrespected them. You will have someone like Excali either throwing an underhand flash from outside of uh, Ghost smokes or you will have Antidote using the paranoia to push through. And that's why basically Ghost was just never relevant in this game, at least in the second half, because Enigma Gaming didn't give a damn if there was dark cover in the way or not. Now, let's also talk about the the entire match stats where uh, Team Enigma definitely won it. On the objective point, it is Team Orangutan who made the most use out of it, but uh, on the frag victories, Enigma, well, certainly did a commendable work there. If you talk about the damage stats, they are speaking for itself. 
but the rest is quite matchable. The map was quite close. I believe that it could have been an overtime once again if the players of Team Orangutan wouldn't have continued playing towards side A, made a switch towards B because there was nobody there except one player waiting for them. But it was their decision that made Team Enigma survive into this game and in the best of three as well. And I'm happy for not having a 2-0 scoreline, at least not when we have we are going to find the very first finalist for this tournament. Exactly, and this is the finalist that's going to be guaranteed flying out of the country to represent it. I mean, these teams came into the avenue wearing the flags of their team logos on their back. Mm -hmm. You had the black and orange of Orangutan and you had the purple black of Enigma. All of them were wearing their colors. But when they walk out of this arena, they will have the Indian tricolor on their back. Saffron, white and green. Those are the colors that people want to see on your back, want to see flying high on the APAC stage. Well, the way you are explaining that does take me to a state about who is ultimately going to get that global, though that Indian colors. Well, definitely this team colors are already worth all the pride that they are possessing. But Indian pride is going to take them to another level, not only internally, but also externally. Because yes, sure, you do feel strong, but externally as well, you feel a little extra uh, dedicated and are into a renowned circuit, renowned name and undefeated champions still fighting for their slot. And let's also talk about the player stats of Antidote, who just was spotted on the MVP card. Oh, Antidote. I love the way he exploited the Omen movement system in this game to just get so much value for his team. It's a pity that he's not able to win because on the back of his plays, he was able to rescue some of his teammates from certain death, get into positions where he can trade them out. I mean... Uh, especially on the beast side, right? Especially when Orangutan are trying to enter and Enigma have no way in. Antirod will use those shrouded steps to get into positions to fight. And that made all the difference in some of these rounds. Even his ultimate from the shadows, he wasn't able to get too many flanks with it. But very often he was just using it as a super expensive recon dot to get the information and just spot out whoever is there, cancel it and then get back to safety. Uh, well, talking about the recon dart, I also have something to talk about the Hunter's Fury, which was uh, round number six. And the OG were, were under the economic crush and uh, they, they were carrying only pistols. And on the contrary, on the other side, they had big guns to work with. Where Hunter's Fury coming in took down uh, Rexy. It was a team kill happening and Tesseract could, was denied with an ace because the fifth kill that he was supposed to take was taken Just down team by kill. team. Uh. So somehow, it was not funny for the team for sure, but uh, we do tend to see such moments where, you don't, uh, where you're not very sure of about how to throw the Hunter's Fury or maybe he was very sure. And the movement picked by Rexy caught him strongly and dedicatedly where he was taken down and winning that thrifty also got the leading points during the first half of the map where uh, they did end up with a 7-5 score line. Now 7-5 during the half time was pretty good and then that is exactly where Team Enigma realized that pistol is going to be one of the most crucial points to gain and they successfully made it through. Oh, pistol rounds. So crucial. I think it all started over there, right? When Orangutan were denied the pistol, that's when they started to feel the yes. pressure on themselves. And they tried to gain that economic momentum back so many times. But it wasn't until that end thrifty, until they were able to finally come that uh, make that score line come closer. And it happened in the previous game as well. They were trailing, Enigma was in the lead. They pull off one thrifty, mm -hmm. and that's when Orangutan start to come back. And Orangutan could not make a comeback here, though we will say it was a 9-12 from, uh, it was 11-12. They did not get the opportunity there, but we will also talk about the player, Rofuel and Shooter, head-to-head. -head, uh, damage stats speaks for themselves, and it is, well, 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 I believe, Crip, 50,000 is now something common for Team Orangutan. They are, uh, sometimes it is Tesseract crossing the 50,000 damage marker. This time, it, this time it is Shooter crossing the 50,000 damage marker. And uh, each and every player is playing awesome. But this head-to-head -head is pretty, pretty close. Oh, yeah. I mean, the overall stats for them are indeed pretty close. But 
sure Shooter has like 10 more first bloods than his counterpart. Mm -hmm. The damage on the other hand is just insane. I kind of want to see this damage getting converted into kills as well because just four kills ahead of raw fuel, while he has so much more damage, it kind of, the numbers yeah. kind of lie over here. So it basically indicates that Shooter, every time he's on the assault rifles, he does all the damage that he can, but he doesn't get the kill. But whenever he picks up that op, oh my god, oh then my. you better pray to god. Oh, shooter with the operator, he was the solo man several times spotted in the taking care of mid and mid is very crucial to control in the map of ascent and shooter was able to do it very nicely and uh, team enigma the experience spoke very good for themselves which with which they are retaining for the which with rather retaining I would say with 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 which they are moving into the next map which is Haven. What are your predictions here Crips? Whew. Now, Haven should be slightly easier for Enigma as compared to Orangutan for two reasons. Orangutan have some major chinks in their armor oh when God. it comes to defense. Uh, when, sorry, when it comes to attacking on Haven. Now, you know for a fact that Orangutan, their previous playstyle was that they like to split and hmm. pick off people. While they were facing against global esports, they did one really good thing. They were able to sometimes get picks from the middle region while global esports were traveling from A to C. Hmm. So in the middle of transition, Orangutan were able to pick them off. It didn't happen all that often, but the few times it did, it created massive impact. Now, against a team like Enigma, that's going to be nearly impossible because Enigma never rotate via the B side. They take the long way around using the defender's spawn to be completely safe. And they often just leave the B side on the back of utility and even garage for that matter. So. Unlike other teams who can be punished while they are scrambling and while they are rotating, Enigma Gaming cannot be punished while rotating. They, most, they are more than willing to give up certain map controls of certain regions if that means that they can keep their numbers up, if that means that they can keep their members alive. And that key win condition for Orangutan, which existed in all their previous Haven matches, is not going to be satisfied over here. And I would also want to say that uh, they are ready to lose a player if, they, if at all they can convert, in, convert it into a frag. They have got a martyrdom uh, segment also working. I'm talking about Team Enigma right now. Sending a player as a bait, not bait, but indeed it can also go... Yeah, ahead as a distraction. Yeah. As a distraction or maybe a double frag opportunity. They have done it on the map of Icebox. Unfortunately, they could not win it. That is entirely a different story. But Crips, I believe on the map of Heaven, if they are able to go for this sort of split, uh, Orangutan will fall split apart. But... Uh, Talking about Haven and 63% uh, or, or above, it is the win ratio for Team Enigma on the attacker side. Now, this is going to be one of the key factors where we can expect a strong play coming in from the side of Enigma. On the contrary, if we look, uh, team, uh, team Rangutan is strong to start on the defender's side. So, this fight, well... I'm not expecting much of overtime happening. I did mention it, that I'm expecting it on the map of Ascent. Heaven has to be a little cleaner compared to what Icebox was, what, As what Ascent was. Yeah, I mean, you're right about that. Enigma are indeed much, much yeah. stronger on their attacking side. And while that stat holds true, their defense is variable. It keeps changing. In certain rounds when Enigma Gaming feel like the odds are even when they think that the firepower is evenly matched, Enigma Gaming will bravely push out. Sometimes they will push out of B and just position one of their players under the mid window. Or sometimes they will make one of their players push C long. Especially when they're on their defense, they like going aggressive to gather more information. Or if not information, just wrap around quickly. Get the backstabs to be much quicker. But when they realize that Orangutan are, let's say, on an eco round, or in a round where they know for a fact that Orangutan are going for a fast push. Enigma Gaming just pump the brakes. They are slow it down mm -hmm. and then they hold it back. So this variation that they do between an aggressive and a passive playstyle, it's really difficult to read. Because Enigma don't really decide it when the round starts. If they want to push, they're going to find information in the first 10 seconds and then they decide whether they want to go ahead or not. So at the start of the round, it's almost always impossible to predict whether Enigma will be playing passively or aggressively. They, if Enigma don't know what they're doing, then yeah. how do Orangutan know? Enigma make that decision like 10-20 seconds into the round based on the reactions. 
Yeah, the Enigma is going to make the decisions on point about how and what is required, mm -hmm. and now that is that needs to be studied by Team Orangutan because in the map of uh, Ascent as well, we did see where they took momentarily pauses, where they wasted out an entire minute to study mm -hmm. uh, on the attacker side. I'm talking. Mm -hmm. They did lose the round. That's fine. The solo survivor went away with the spike. Did not get the opportunity to plant, but they go for those changes to break the momentum, and that one round does cost them a lot. But still, that that led them towards the victory of the map of Ascent. So I believe the switch of the pace, sometimes if they are running too quick to control, getting con regaining control uh, from a uh, team like Enigma for Orangutan might be difficult, or maybe they're walking for the pace of Turtle. Now imagine a, a round full of... Uh, full speed attack mode and switching it to the slowest vehicle that you'd want to use and how are you going to match up to that so team enigma might get into that surprise element where orangutan might not be able to beat them down orangutan gaming they have some flaws on their attacking side as well while the stats say that they are decent enough and they are strong enough when it comes down to executions not all their utility lands on time hmm. Tesseract's utility almost never misses. That's one good thing. But what about everything else? In their matches uh, in the past, there were several times when the smokes didn't land on time yeah. and there were clear lines of sight that the defenders could use to shoot them down. If the smokes also land on time, if Tesseract's utility lands on time, there isn't enough explosive stuff like, let's say, maybe the, the Killjoy Nano Swarm, which is sometimes used to clear out positions aggressively. It isn't the best utility to use. Unlike a Razor's Nade, which can easily clear out an area, the Nano Swarm can't be thrown that far away. And it can be broken as well the moment it lands. So it's going to be difficult for Orangutan to break open the crossfires of Enigma Gaming on their attacking side. Now, that is a red flag, and I would like to see if Orangutan have made changes which helps them get rid of this problem, or will they still succumb to the same old ailments? They are not going to stick to the same old, old ailments because uh, as the day is progressing, they are trying to go for the different area of... Uh, I wouldn't ever say trial and error. It is totally prepared, but it errored. Uh, because you really don't know about how the opponents are going to work your way. And it did not work, sure, but they did give some trials. Some worked the dash entry, getting an entry frag, getting the site control. But then how do you control the firepower? That is where exactly when Xcali sometimes, sometimes Antidote through the mid-market rushing in. And it was all about the firepower uh, that was that was functioning pretty well. So that is also a thing that you can't, that the, none of the team, neither of the sites can put a control over. Yeah, let's just hope that Orangutan are ready for this battle. They have worked way too hard to stumble right now. A team that was barely made a couple of months ago, consisting of some international players, players from four different nations, coming in very, very quickly and rising up rapidly in the Indian scene as compared to Enigma, a team that stuck together for far longer, who have the... YB as coach, one of the most experienced coaches that not just India, that the entire world has ever seen. Let's see if these two people, if these two teams are able to battle it out and take the win for themselves, or will they be going down to the lower bracket? Very soon, the agent selections will be up on your screen, and we'll find out exactly what's going to happen. Well, lower bracket is going to be very tough to make a way towards the second slot. Team Enigma will try to play as best as they can. And may they get the soft toy power that you just talked about, Crypt, because I'm able to see multiple near to the desk and whatever power they possess, let's hope they are able to make the most use out of it. And the champs have begun from the side of Orangutan as well as Fear the Enigma. We are hearing this chance, we are hearing that support, but now all relies upon what the agent selection will be, will be for the side of Enigma. Enigma has been pretty clean, pretty repetitive, nothing, nothing of uniqueness, and that is favoring them very nicely. So I believe uh, it is going to be a lineup of KJ, KO, Jet, and I would want to see RVK as a fade because he has done a good job there. So that could be an element of surprise and Rexy as the omen once again. On the contrary, for the side of Orangutan, I would want to see Sky or Roman for the side of Ghost. 
Vibor is usually playing Breach and Omen. Now that is a lot of permutations and combinations. Persia sometimes going in as a cipher. I believe Vivek is going to be very happy if he, if at all cipher is spotted because since the day one of the tournament, he is literally waiting for those interactive uh, cipher plays because that is all with the brain that you need to win the game and then comes KJ maybe for, for the side of Persia because he's doing the KJ play pretty damn good. Talking about Tesseract, he's not going to nudge from the play of Soa and Shooter as a Jet. Now what would you want? What anything else would you want but a Jet from Shooter? He's doing commendable work. And now we do have Vivek joining alongside me. Vivek, how do you feel about this match which is going to end up towards 2-1? And I did hear you making some predictions with Kramer, Kramer going, that might be Enigma is going to make sure of they win it. And how about you say it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take your leave, but we do have Kramer and Vivek to carry furthermore. Thank you so much, Tanya. It is getting intense here in Chennai as we dive into the final map between Orangutan and Enigma. And an interesting pick on my screen. It's an REK fade. There's an Omen. There's a Killjoy. And there's a Sky, an agent you don't see too often. Excali playing the Sky. I'm a bit concerned if he can find the frags that he usually does. Because Sky is primarily very, very good at setting up others. But we'll have to wait and watch. On the other side of the arena, we've got Orangutan. Pretty standard composition coming out from them. This is what they run. Tesseract is going to be playing the Sova. Vibor switches over to the Breach, naturally. Ghost on the Omen. Uh, we've got Shooter playing the Jet. And last but not the least, we've got Persia on the Killjoy. I feel that his Killjoy is a very, very crucial part of Orangutan's defense on Haven. And they are starting out on defense. Looking at agent selections, I actually prefer Orangutan here. I really like it. I really like Breach as a as an agent. Um, on Haven as well, Breach has so much impact, and I do rate the Rolling Thunder considerably more than the Nightfall. So I'm really gonna put a lot of pressure on RVK here to make that fade work to the extent of which a um, Breach can do. And the other thing that I think is perfect with Breach is the fact that some of his random basic utility destroys Killjoy Elves. And it sort of renders Killjoy useless until the Breach is dead. Um, the fact that Orangutan have been able to add that extra layer of difficulty to their um, uh, to, to their agent selection uh, is going to put a lot of pressure on Enigma. The flip side is Enigma have a lot, and I mean a lot, of disabling utility. They do. I mean, they've got Sky and Fade, two initiators to work with. They've got the Omen as well, so a lot of flashes. Uh, technically, they could flash someone for 10 seconds if they wanted to. 10 seconds is a lot of time, uh, at least for an Indian man. And uh, they, they can do a lot of work with that. Uh, so they've got they've got that disabled and on the other side Orangutan are a lot more composed ladies and gentlemen You're watching the deciding map the deciding map that will eventually let us know which team moves on to the APAC challengers It is Orangutan versus Enigma With me is Kremer. I'm Vivek. If you've been enjoying the broadcast find us at the rate Vivek and at the rate Kremer 3 and 3 2 and drop us your feedback if you have any for now it's the ever important pistol tremor and uh, if you are an orangutan supporter the good news is you're starting out on defense and just starting out with a lot of aggression as well shooter making some deep inroads past c here as we mentioned about static utility enigma do have it there they know the flank is coming this is just bolder them to commit to this b hit and maybe not even a b hit maybe you just see a complete rotation maybe you see them isolate the player in defenders spawn people he's able to get the opening through the sword frame he's just trying to fight oh gee they just collapsed onto enigma there who were a little bit too smart for their own good rvk left in a one versus four the low hp on the jet the the sort of wounded breach makes this a possibility but there needs to be a lot that goes into rvk's favor here and with a with the nth degree of luck maybe he could do it versus four 
as the yep. fault line is going to hit him and look around and now all of them stack up on the sea side after the aftershocks there's nothing else rdk can do three players swing at once and just like that around town they take the first round yeah great stuff coming up from orangutan there they, there was a small error in their play and there was a way tactical back and forth in between those trades i want to break that down for you so the beginning of the round shooter pushed out c long with a friend now, pushing out C-Long is genius on this map because mostly teams push out A-Shot. But when you push out C-Long, you get a lot of information. There was, however, an alarm bot. And that alarm bot informed Enigma that there's a push coming from C-Long. So raw fuel goes to B-Link and eventually Enemy just swings kill. over to C. And then uh, uh, he swung oh, over to C swam. and there was a Nano Swarm drop. Vibo pushes the Nano Swarm. So a lot of interesting movement in that first round itself. This round, there's not much to say. One team has a buy, the other team doesn't. One team has a chance, the other doesn't. But sometimes, sometimes, and often, Rexy and Excali have proved us all wrong. Excali with the Sheriff to a day long, 60 points of health is a lot. That's a rack. Oh, you got a little bit of info. Is it going to probe off the back of that? They don't need to, frankly. Enigma going to be caught out by the orbit. The first oh. turns. Ooh, Rexy attempting the knife kill. Rexy, you cheeky bugger. Not allowed. Not allowed one, two rounds into a series. And he is punished for it. However, we'll be able to see in just a moment how Enigma are going to be able to do bring out their full rifles around tank it's a solid opening but how do they respond how do they get into this early game while maintaining their stride yeah this is the ever important buy round for enigma right one thing i'd like to point out about enigma is that this is one of their weaker maps they're not all too aggressive on haven and uh, stats don't lie They've got a buy, but light shields everywhere. They have to take the ability, obviously. But it doesn't matter. Your controller is dead. There are no smokes to work with. How the heck are you going to get onto a side? Blocked off with B, they'll use the Sky Dog. The girl from Tasmania finds no information at all as Enigma have to reassess. They're pretty much hoping that OG will overextend, but Orangutan. I mean, they, they make those monkey noises in the crowd and whatnot, but these guys are very disciplined. They don't see banana and eat banana. They see banana and make you fall for the bait instead. Okay. A bit of the noise in sewers just to try and draw the attention away from Orangutan. But Enigma, their gaze is set to see. It's the breach to try and stop them. The breach stands tall against what is going to be three marauding players. The fault line, I mean, it buys time, but time is something that Enigma have quite a bit of at the moment. Still 40 seconds on the clock, still time to rotate elsewhere. But look at Orangutan's defense. They still haven't left C. They still haven't rotated to C. 30 seconds After that left. fault line, they expected Enigma to leave. And now Enigma, look how significantly fragmented they are, as they have very little time left to stop the safe site. It's already been spotted by the turret now, and as RVK leads this charge, Desperately needs to find an opening, and there isn't much time left at all. Actually, there's some 15 seconds. Can he get the first oh, army game? Ten Go. seconds left. Pushing out Persia, that'll allow a plant, but around Zhang instantly planted. ready to go into the aftermath. It is minimal. It is minimal. If Rexy knows uh, swarm grenade lineup for the aftermath, and heck, he might not even need swarm grenade lineup. Raw fuel gets a kill. Excali finds another. This one man, and this one man has done a lot for Orangutan, but this is too tall of an ask. Enigma win their first round on Haven, and uh, it, it nearly looked as if they didn't have enough time, Kremer. It was so touch and go. I was looking mm. at the fade. There were 14 seconds on the clock, 7 seconds for the horn to cool down. The seas didn't really present any opportunities, and I want to talk about this a little bit more. The teams that have run paid in this tournament usually run her with somebody that complements the seas or the haunt. There's no raise uh, to follow up with the pain shells. There is a killjoy, but I haven't seen the haunt all the seas along with the killjoy really being put to good use. But now the Enigma, they're going to try and flirt with this one way, but uh, Ghost will not peek and Enigma will not take their chances. Be a little bit faster here. 
through the smoke. Wary of the fact that the Vandal will give away tracers, but luckily for him, this isn't going to be the uh, this isn't going to be the main point of attack. Instead, B site and garage are going to be uh, areas of interest for the time being. As you know, the first oh, RBK comes in. There is a trade, but only for one here. Still a man down. Around I need to stop an Ingwer from getting to the site and quickly ghost, revealing his presence over in garage. He's going to be running into an awaiting uh, raw fuel. He finishes the job. And for that, I would love to see a save here from Orangutan. Yeah, the best case scenario is that both these players save. Uh, the dream is that they clutch it out, but I don't think Enigma are really going to peak. And uh, yeah, Enigma are really patient. I'm just looking at the after plant for now. Uh, I mean, they're watching Link. Nobody's only watching Window. Now, Antidote will move over to Window and see if there's anybody pushing out from A. He's thrown a spoke towards A main as well. But uh, if if anybody from Orangutan, especially their coach, managed to see the Enigma after plant, Window and A is something that uh, Enigma are a little bit lackadaisical about when they plant on B. Maybe this is an opportunity for Orangutan to exploit in the future. As an Enigma supporter, though, you've got to be pleased. They won two rounds very convincingly. These have been tactical wins. They're not winning based on tracking or clutching or anything unreliable. Tactically, they're really looking sound on Haven. When you end up losing, uh, when you end up um, losing against strategy, adapting can be really difficult. So Enigma fundamental victories are ones which are very hard to go by, particularly at the very top end of Valorant, which is where we are now. And Orangutan's solution to what has been some fundamental victories is why not fall back on your aim? Shooter, the hero operator here. The rest of the team aggressing in mid. Rocky reveals himself. Caught out by that aforementioned operator. That may be a chance to get away. That hawk is going to allow you to back up, but he goes back fighting. Oh, he gets a kill, the haunt. I thought the haunt could have set up for the kill on the shooter, but RBK without the haunt will open up Raj. We're both dead. He sends further. I mean, he sends a prowler ahead, but RBK doesn't use the prowler. He uses the vandal, and Ghost will end up falling. It's just one man shooter. Shooter wants to save the operator. If he can hold on to this operator, he's going to be very pleased. But will they allow him? Shooter actually pushing the smoke there. Uh huh. Surprising. Uh, I would love to look at the scoreboard because maybe the thought process was the next round I'll still have my blade storm. So maybe I can take a risk this round. Uh, and also, obviously, you're really not expecting any normal human being to push the smoke at that stage of the round when you're in a 1v3 after plus with the operator. But yeah, yeah I wonder if uh, that. That decision is going to further hurt the orangutan economy. They know that something is amiss. They're going to call a timeout. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the previous round that they lost was fundamentally lost because they didn't have sufficient weaponry. But the rounds before that, their approach to be in garage seems a little bit concerning for me, Kremo. Yeah. I Something I want to highlight is that Orangutan, they feel, um, when we see an opening from Enigma, the instant response from Orangutan is to trade. And you end up seeing them actually get out of position just to trade. And I think they put such value in trading that sometimes they end up in a worse position, even if they do end up trading. Uh, for instance, we'll see a 4v4 where they're in a bad position, a 4v4 where they can't get to these sites. And it's where Enigma really started to exploit them a little bit. You look over to the ultimate management. Yes, Shooter does have a Blade Storm, but that's not worth giving away an operator. I'd have much rather seen him save last round, as we are not even going to see him use the, uh, the uh, Blade Storm instead. It's a round for a yeah. Phantom with him. Ult Orb achieved. That is going to allow... Uh, Right, so let's get a little bit closer to some extra abilities, but the Rolling Thunder is the only thing in their arsenal to a company that's already there. Yeah, let's see if they put the Breach Ultimate to use. For now, though, it looks as if Orangutan have a decent enough reach. Shooter aggressing towards a shot. 
just what to do this but enigma will not fall for this nonsense drop is each other best shoot and now with the nightfall or rang it and they have to give up side the rolling thunder committed the lines are there they know exactly where we bore is we bore trying to hold them off a flash here and aftershocks there a little bit of chaos everywhere they still haven't made use of the nightfall and now it's timed out enigma they've got to fall back it looks as if we bore has done his bit 46 seconds on the clock what do enigma want to do where do they want to go there's already a defense to work with on the seaside and vipor vipor's taking a more defensive position towards the a heaven back to enigma oh, though they're starting to work the route and left. they know that these parts of the map are a little bit weak for orangutan they peak rvk still with enough health Unfortunately, he's used both his prowlers and the nightfall. It's antidote and raw fuel that have to come out big. And Anti will do just that. The killjoy with the operator. The killjoy, the executioner. As Anti moves onto the side. Tesseract, he's been robbed twice this map. He'll find a kill on Rexy. Rexy dead. No time on the clock. The Hunter Fury. Has he done it? The oh, clutch have killed. He's done it. Tesseract has clutched. I just said he's been quiet this half on this map. But he stepped up when you need him. What a man. Genuinely, Tesseract, when he is feeling it, he is unstoppable. And me and Legday, we said this months ago. Tesseract is one of the best sobers in APAC. And the only criticism I have of Tesseract, and I know I'm being kind of mean here, it's because he's brilliant, um, is that he can only play sober. But that doesn't matter, because sober is such a universal agent that, it, uh, that he, he, he can play it on every map to a great degree of skill. As we just saw from that round, he only gets one kill. It doesn't matter. That kill won the round. That's the equalizer, three to three. Yes, I think we do save a lot of rifles afterwards, but it halts their economy. It can itself be the best thing you can achieve there. Oh yeah. Uh, one note about your point about right uh, him only playing Sova is that eventually they'll have to play Fracture. Is he going to play Sova and Fracture as well? Uh, if if they do move on to a grand finals. In a best of five, what does this man play on Fracture? I have no data at all, but I'm going to ask some of the orangutan crew and maybe drop an answer in chat later, after the game, that is. And if orangutan gets to the best of five, we know for sure. For now, they're getting on to the two side. For the side of Enigma, Rob Fuel finds a key kill. The killjoy dead. Persia will have to watch from the sidelines. RVK gets another. Coastal ball. Shoot them, not getting too much. The series. The series is perfect. Rob Fuel gets the kill. Antidote still with the operator. And Rob Fuel will shut them down. Two frags or more for Rob Fuel on that round. As Orangutan, they took a timeout. They won a round. But once again, they've been unraveled and broken to bits. I'm really impressed by mainly the fact that around there, they had a plan there. They had an absolute execution ready. You saw when we looked at the breach, he had that rolling thunder queued up, ready to go. It's just Enigma realizing that they're going to be against some ultimates here. Instead, they take the tempo. They push in. They fight each other one at a time. And that way, Avarantag can't really capitalize off the back of a rolling thunder. It takes an option position. There's a wonderful opening. Tesseract, two huge kills to start the round. If you just trapped them in, Rexy trades it three on three. But here's the problem. This is one of Enigma's main failings as a team is they really struggle against these pistols. I don't know if they struggle against these pistols or whether Tesseract is better off with the Sheriff and not a rifle. Time will tell. Three members on the defense stretched across three bomb sides. This could be problematic. A minute on the clock and you have options. First they need to get past Vibo. Vibo barely makes an escape. Still got a sheriff not too much Persia would yeah. love a weapon upgrade he knows that the guns up there towards that window area but they're also respecting the fact that Enigma could still be waiting two members from the defense pushing window Vibor playing to a seven and once again and he shoots him down with the operator the last time he did this there was Tesseract by his side with the hunters who need to pull the round together for the side of Orangutan. This time there's no death strike. There's no Persia. There's no ghost. There's no hope at all. As Orangutan Gaming get a couple of great kills at the beginning of the round courtesy Tesseract. But they couldn't do much more. Once again, it is, is, is Sheriffs, isn't it? So you don't actually need to win the round. 
social doing damage, social making it expensive for Enigma, then you've done enough. And for Enigma, that is going to become a very harsh reality very, very soon. Particularly if they fail here against the full investment of Orangutan. Enigma, two rounds in the lead. Five to three, the score line. The Operator duel between Antidote, surprisingly taking the Operator instead of Shooter. Um, instead of Shooter, I do apologize. Instead of um, Raw Fuel is surprising. But I want to yeah. see if this Killjoy has something in store for us. Yeah, so Andy used the operate, uh, used the operator earlier on. He's fundamentally, as a player, more comfortable with the operator in his past and other games as well. And he's pulling back some of that uh, on Haven uh, in uh, this uh, upper bracket game. Unfortunately, this time Persia is going to bet it. Persia gets a very crucial kill. The after shot committed Tesseract at the back of sight, the paranoia causing all sorts of problems. Vibo will just throw a flash. Through the boxes in Enigma, a player down and only a minute, less than a minute, to work with. Ha, huh. look look at Garage though. Look at this big gaping hole in Garage, which RBK is mm. totally abusing. The timing. This is perfect for RBK. Tesseract's gonna get caught out. Tesseract. Oh, it's so fast! Uh, okay, he does get caught out. Seconds left. Oh. Oh, we can breathe. But can he be traded? No, he can't. Persia falls. That's it. That's the side for Enigma. More importantly, that's a bad advantage. RVK. Oh, my God. This is a... I, I tell you what. This is yeah, better username. Sounds for relentless violent killings. Because there is not a single member of Orangutan who right now isn't scared of their flank and scared of RVK coming for him. Oh, yeah. Drop you. Uh, I mean, cosplaying as a Tapiz artist over there, just having some fun with his links, but it's actually really going on. They want to take away their weaponry. You were talking about the economy earlier, that this round could be costly if Enigma end up losing it, but I think about three of their players are up to 9,000 credits. They've got money for days. They've got 9,000 credits, if I'm not mistaken. The scoreboard soon enough will tell us. But it, it's not about the economy. It's not about them finding the skills what really really concerns me is garage and there's a big big gap in the defense they've leaked garage multiple times and not been able to hold garage multiple times let's take a look at orangutan on this round Here. in their defense and see how they remedy the problems at garage your field nice acing through here Trying to get a bit of early suicide control as quietly as possible. Unfortunately, it's late control from Rantan here. Is Raw Fuel going to be caught out? This is all out of timing. The breach is ready with potentially a flash to get this control. Tesseract. Brace your fear! Cali, or oh, the nightmare. It's timed very well. Here's the yeah. attack. Tesseract unfortunately revealed and then finished off. <laughs> On the high grounds. Vibor can't trade it at all. And while it is an eco around and they're really coming into some problems at the moment. They're being shut down. Raw fuel's being merciless. Oh, yeah. And look at uh, both teams uh, being forced out of uh, both the lockdowns. No one gets detained. Uh, this is uh, good for uh, Enigma because it could have gotten a little sticky there. Raw fuel gets picked off, so first year will put the chef to good use deadly at that range with those kind of angles can you find more i'm i really don't think so i don't i don't know if they can get past the abilities and the utility that enigma is spreading all across the floor Persia has to push and smoke and anti finds an easy kill with the operator Persia dead is just goes and uh well, this is uh, not Casper, the friendly ghost that we all know. It is uh, one that knows how to wield the sheriff, but he gets only one kill and he backs off. Really, really strong stuff now. And if I'm on Enigma, I'm really starting to feel the confidence. Right now, Aranzai haven't had a solution. They haven't been able to stop Enigma yet. And because of that, it means that they have really, really been allowed to run rampant. You look at the economy of Enigma particularly, it's at the stage now where it's healthy for pretty much the rest of the half. 
Um, it is only two rounds, they are going to have that reinvestment. And as we enter that penultimate round of the first half, the ult management comes into play as well. Rexy one away from, from the shadows. This is accompanied by Seekers and a Blade Storm. On Orangutan, you have the Rolling Thunder, which is probably the highest impact ult of the lot of them. But it's... That's it. There's a follow-up to it. There is it. But this goes for the Vandal. And this storm is do a die for Orangutan. If they don't win this, they're not going to have any money moving on to the next. And goes to be rather quiet. Uh, heck, the entirety of Orangutan hasn't found much success in this half, uh, except the, uh, the, the early pistol rounds and whatnot. But now they made an important adjustment Shadow which I want to point out. Lane. They put the killjoy towards C, a turret looking towards garage, and an alarm bot at B. Their sentinel is now locking down the sites that were leaking. And these are the sites that Enigma are looking to exploit. Raw fuel ready to explode. They're going to push through the smoke. Anti beat to the operator. And he there, Raw fuel will mine the trade though. The paranoid toss out Ribo. He's got that rolling thunder. When does he commit it? The haunt gives away ghost position. The rolling thunder committed. Enigma pushed back. Raw fuel shot down. Ribo is showing up. The nightfall. Excuse me, RBK with the haunt causing a couple of issues. He finds shooter with the vandal tesseract is still alive and orangutan's chances in this half still healthy as rexy is on the run surfing through sea long hopping away he'll hold on to the spike but 16 seconds can he get anywhere a bit of a whiff from vibor over there but yeah rexy's going to capitalize unfortunately he just doesn't have the time he's pretty much hoping that orangutan walk into his crosses in a line and don't fire a single bullet but that's not going to happen. Orangutan run the clock down and they win a very crucial round for themselves. They absolutely do, but they've lost this half. The, the only question here is to what extent. And when it comes to the extent, Enigma are continuing to look pretty damn scary. Remember, though, they are on the attack of Haven, what is the favored side of Haven. And Enigma, as we saw from Open Playstyle, they are definitely susceptible to it very overconfident yeah, rotations and they definitely rotate very quickly which means that come the actual fakes that will come out from OG Enigma really are in danger of sort of outsmarting themselves yeah I've noticed that even VLT uh, and even global esports to a certain degree they do rotate really really quickly sometimes especially VLT uh, but there is a meta to the madness one that uh it takes a lot to decipher uh, for uh, the layman or anyone for that matter. For now though, Anti, this man, he's finding openings with the operator. He's taken down Shooter, the danger man, dead for the side of Orangutan. It's now a 5v4. This could still be an 8 4 half. Drop right you. He's moved onto the side. I'm not quite sure if the fault line affected him. It doesn't matter. Rexy stops the blast. Stop. Because elsewhere, Ghost is taking down RBK. The lurking garage taken care of. Now a 4v4. The Hunter's Fury causing problems. Rexy needs to plant. He's going to use the shrouded step. He'll eventually get the plant down. They're marking a link. Who's going to come through? No one just yet. The paranoid toss out. Persia, Deppin, can't do anything. Nearsighted, he's going to end up falling. Ghost gets the kill though. He got on Rexy. This after plan looking a little scary for Enigma. But Excali and Raw Fuel will pull it back. Excali, his arms in the air as he was right there when his team needed him. And he makes sure that Enigma closed the first half with more than a sizable lead. For a very long time, I was terrified for Enigma in that afterplant because no one was able to get off of that site. They were all trapped under heaven. The fact yep. that, despite being trapped under heaven, they were able to just crossfire each other. They were able to play off each other. They were able to support one another, even when shoulder to shoulder in the trenches. They were able to do it. They were able to get through. And we found our song right now. This is Matt Free. This is Haven. This is the War of Attrition. And we ain't going home before Christmas, that's for sure. We're going to be here until the bitter, bitter end. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be bitter for one of these teams, right? After having two maps that are so close, so many clutches, so many memorable moments from Tesseract, from Rexy, from RVK, not moving on to APAC is going to be frustrating. 
It's gonna be sweet mana for whoever does manage to move ahead. The paranoia, brilliant. Is it gonna slow down OD though? No, it won't. Ghost will just start forward. A classic is all he's working with. A classic is enough. But so it is for Anti, as he gets two crucial kills. Not just kills, sweet kills, just headshots. How much more can he do? Tessanak is in the server. He's working up. The Sova there, but the Sova. Well, it's not him that clutches the round, it's Porsche with the ghost, and he will ensure that Orangutan will win the ever crucial pistol. I cannot stress the importance of this pistol enough. If they don't win this, they're not finding any momentum back on this map, back in this half, and now, just like that, the Orangutan fans in the crowd are going apeshit crazy, Kramer. Not because they've realized, they, they've realized, Vivek, that actually there's a chance here for Orangutan. That pistol round is their ticket straight back into this game. And for Enigma, as they go down to their eco, we see Sean go out and the Sheriff come out. The reality is, if I'm Enigma, I want this round over and done with. Get me on those rounds as quick as possible. And then that way, you're not, you're not pissing away the momentum that you've established the entirety of your first half. Yeah. I mean, if they do find uh, a couple of kills with the Sheriffs, they're going to be very, very pleased. Now, Antidote, back when he used to run the Operator, was great on offense, but he was even better on defense. A fun bit of trivia for all of you new to Antidote's journey in Valorant, he actually used to play on the team with Hellranger. And Hellranger was notorious for running Spice two Operators at the same time. I thought I could fit in a story here because this round was done in dust of time out. But Enigma picked up the pace, the spot of Shorty, the Sheriff, it's done a lot of work. And once again, Kramer, why are OG being forced to clutch out what should be simple, straightforward rounds? I've learned it's no longer an Enigma problem. It's both of these teams, they they are really strong. The worse the buyers of their opponents, for some reason, the harder they find the round. Left. And you look at Enigma, they are really separated right now. If Excalibur's caught out, this could that that this could just be round over for the fade here. Shooter makes yep. a noise. 20 seconds left. Goes for the high ground. It's heard, but Cali isn't he isn't spotted. He isn't peaked. He won't be able to stop remaining. the plants. Oh, he does! Spike There's down. only 13 Easy. seconds left. Last All of them able to get that kill. But is he able to stop the plants? He's tapped at once. He says he gets him six to plants. Does he risk swinging out? No, he Back doesn't. Planted. Nerves of steel on this man. Recon darts out. RVK able to avoid it. But for how long? On the corner. Gets the kill. Tesseract falls. Enigma. They win the eco. And Orangutan sent us straight back to ground zero. There's only one emoticon. Exclusive to Twitch. That can describe this moment. Face palm. Uh, well, I said face palm, face palm if you're an orangutan supporter, pog if you're an enigma it, supporter. It's pog if you're an enigma, that's for sure. <laughs> oh man, and now, now for OG, this is where the alarm bells start ringing. Suddenly, this isn't as easier as a uh, as easier of a recovery as we thought it would be. Luckily for for enigma, they they do have one they do have one fatal flaw, which is the second they hit twelve rounds. They sort of stop playing for like three or four rounds, <laughs> and oh, yeah. then they win the map. So, so sort of rounds they can get relatively close. Maybe giving Enigma that and serious point is a strategy here. They got down to an eco of their own. Rifles out on every member of Enigma. If you're on Enigma, if this round isn't clean, then I you're cursed apparently. Yeah. I mean, both these teams are cursed, right? Because the Rangitan lose the round. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, then if Enigma no end up losing this game, then both of them are cursed, in my opinion. The Skydar gets a little bit of visual information from the ones in cursed. Can Enigma hold on to his side? Yeah, easy. It's not cursed. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. What have we done? Is is it our scarf is cursing them? Is it the gods with their knife cursing them? I'm not quite sure. But now, with the nightfall, with the prowler, they should be able to push them. The spike has been planted. Push is done his bit. But can he clutch? He's got a vandal. He's brought down RWK. It's the same bomb side tremor. A clutch in the previous anti eco. Can they be a clutch this time? Push has snuck into garage. He doesn't know. Rafuel doesn't know. Persia has just got to be patient. I mean, Drawfu is hopping about. He's going to drop a cloud burst. He'll tap the spike. Persia, playing time like a wizard. 
will move into the side. A smoke there and a smoke there and a small barrier between them, but raw fuel will clutch it. Oh, please don't smile. My heart was out of my mouth and on the microphone. Yeah, they clutch it, but let's be honest, Vivek, it should never be that close, particularly against sheriffs. For some, it appears that for some reason, if you're on an Enigma or a Rangatang, the worse the buyers you're against, and the more adv advantages you have on paper, the worse you're going to play the round. However, a Rangatang, they are five rounds away. Enigma, three rounds away from closing out the series and going. Remember, Vivek, this is going to VCT APAC. The winner, Absolutely. there is a lot to play for here. And yeah. Raw Fuel, he wants to get just that. Sees the first player able to avoid the bait and switches there. Antido is ready to come up as that second oh, member to try to trade run. with this build on. Sees the jet. There's the opening. Killjoy ult is deployed. However, will it be destroyed here? I doubt it will be. Raw Fuel able to trade in as well. <laughs> the, the dog really going steep into enemy lines there. Unfortunately, with that lockdown going on, no one. Two oh. players actually hit by it. And what? Antido, not one of them, but dying regardless. Can they capitalize on this lockdown? Can it lead to anything? But now it's a plant. Raw Fuel still has the operator. He's towards a link. What can Enigma manage to pull off? 3v4 for the side of Orangutan. Vibor and Tesseract alive on the server. That is what is important. Ghost just throwing a couple of bullets in the direction of a link Raw Fuel is going to push first with the operator. He's got a prowler ahead of him. He's speaking one angle. He's isolating these fights. He's watched out. That's right. Ghost and Vibor are still alive. Vibor gets two. Lexi and Raw Fuel dead. It's a 1v1. It's Excali versus Vibor. It's India versus India. It's Orangutan versus Enigma. It's a box. It's a merry-go-round. Ringo, Ringo, Rosie. It's oh, Vibor who cuts it for us as Excali falls. And again, this time, neither team was at a serious disadvantage, but it is so close. Oh my god. This is turning into a hell of a game. And the second it looks like Enigma have got their teeth into that retake, the second it looks like they're about to pull ahead and just shut them down, doesn't happen doesn't happen Vibor he comes out of nowhere he trades to the absolute perfection the absolute nth degree and forces Enigma down to an eco Orangutan they are not done with this series yet they are not done with dreams of APAC and while it may be dreams of grandeur for Enigma to try and stop it Raw Fuel there with the opening RBK the close angle Persia unable to trade and RBK hesitates a moment punished for it Mercy is not an option in this series and for Enigma they now find themselves in a 3 or 4 retake Raw Fuel the only player right now close enough to try and Give save Enigma good for the first sees the second knows they're coming knows he's close to being surrounded trying to find an angle to work with trying to find timing to work with here but time is a cruel mistress Vivek and the Raw Fuel as it fades he shot from behind it's revealed He's able to get away, but only momentarily. This is all while the flank is coming in. There's that flank. Oh. It's Gally good for another. Hawk goes out. Flies the first player. Suddenly, this is winnable. Do we see a 50 from a Nigma at remaining. the best possible time? Rex, you're the shooter. It's down to the 1v2. Raw Fuel makes it three. Ghost falls. And with that, that'll be 11 for Enigma. Getting inches by inches closer to VCT APAC. Kremo, they didn't have a buyer. They had the blade stomp. The blade stomp netted them three kills, but even then they didn't have a buy. Vibor died to a classic. And again, you give these teams a disadvantage situation and they're going to step up. Indians know how to live with difficulty. Every day in Chennai in this heat is difficulty indeed. And a handicap is just an advantage for us. It is opposite day every day for us as Velocity, excuse me, Excali and Enigma win a round. They had no business winning at all, Kremer. Yeah, absolutely. And around I instantly called a tactical timeout. I like the timing with this timeout, but I'm really, really interested to see if there's going to be any solution, if there's going to be any follow-up from the members now of from the members now of Enigma. Yeah, I, Krema, I'm concerned about my cardiovascular health. This series has been a close one. <laughs> I've but got another series after this one. You have got another series. I'm going to be on a panel sitting on the sofa, but while I'm casting this series with you, the BTS guy, the guy who's clicking photos, is a bit perplexed. I'm jumping, I'm dancing, I'm stretching, and by God, I nearly fainted once as well. So 
I don't know what's going on on your end. I heard the neighbors were a little bit concerned that there's a white man making so much noise in the apartment complex. I hope everything's okay in your end, Tremor. I actually got a text from my housemates to ask if I was okay because of how much I was shouting. That was, uh, we, are, we are genuinely worrying people with how close this game is. It's not healthy! It needs way. to end! We need a victor! And for a Rangatang, as they move into this, they do have an ability advantage. Not quite able to destroy the alarm, but it's they have to spend a few shots in. Raw Kill 51 instantly traded by Shooter. All of a sudden, Shooter has a rampage to go on now. However, Excalibur is not hide enemy lives. Good for one, two, three! Shuts them all down! Match and series! Right for Nicola from the absolute depths of nowhere from the void grabbed grass for out of the ether we find enigma with a 12 just when orangutan look like they're ready to collapse on them it's too little too late they can smell apex the road to singapore has been paved wide open for them 6 12 og they're at the biggest disadvantage the ever. Can they really, really fight back? Uh, are we K? Poised and ready to work the along. He's sending the Prowler a shot. What did they find? Rexy blinded, will throw the paranoia. He's gonna fall back, Tremor. The spike is planted. trade it but so what's a mail now persia trying to follow it up tesseract chimes in rexy falls four on three orangutan this is very winnable particularly with shooter on this flank and i don't think it's going to be expected by anyone here cali being really really uh, vigorous with this flank even going through spawn here as shooter kears sees the ping from rbk rbk wary of a flank but he doesn't know where from Orang saying they're quiet, they're too quiet. Someone is flanking from somewhere, but he can't be found. It looks like Enigma yeah, may just allow this spike to go off. There's no uh. opening, there's no entry. There's that entry, but it's for Orangutan. Yeah, Orangutan, they're not out just yet. They've got the numbers advantage. I mean, Excali will get a kill, but the spike has been detonated. Orangutan still in the tournament. Still very much in the tournament. But what the most pertinent piece of information is right now, Tremor, is how much money does Enigma have? Enough for one buy and one operator. They've got Excali with the Seekers. That's pretty much it in terms of ultimate. On the other side, Tesseract, all oh, with the Hunter's Fury. And I saw two more ultimates ready. Uh, I don't read quick enough. I'm, I'm learning disabled as a kid, so I have no idea what the other two are going to uh, Anywho, Excali is going to find an opening. Persia dead. This is exactly what Enigma and their fans want. The dog doesn't find much. Dropfuel just peeking. No respect at all. He's going to up drop over the Hunter Fury and get away. Excali finds another. Impact in the air. Sound and noise everywhere in the auditorium as Orangutan are facing defeat in the upper bracket and Enigma are stepping closer and closer to the APAC challengers. Tremor, this round though, Orangutan can still win. 55 seconds and the spike oh, safely with them. This could be perfect for Excali. He realizes he knows exactly what an, exactly what Orangutan are going to imply. They're going to attempt it. They've got vision everywhere right now around saying they can't even breathe without enigma knowing exactly what they're doing a three versus five for around saying this would be a round for the ages if they can convert this left. raw field on the shoulder peak sees the first player swings out good for one there's the trade one's enough one's a four v two now Smoke is going to buy a bit of time. Ghost, does he risk going through this? He'll be running through to his death. No! Smoke, there's that swing. Antigo shuts him down. It's all on the shooter. For a 1v4 to keep Orangutan alive. He desperately tries to splash off the angle. RBK delivers the killing blow. And the Enigma, they go to the CT back. What a round coming up from Enigma. They left me open, but they had a plan. All along, they overwhelmed OG Esports and Excali mocking the primitive ape as they have 
secured themselves a slot in APAC. Enigma has done it and a big, big role here being played by their coach, Lucas, aka YB. His importance cannot be stressed enough. Antidote's calm shot calling as they gather to, uh, together and huddle for now. Over to you, Mamba. Crazy matchup, absolutely crazy. Both the teams fighting it out. Rio, I'm gonna have you come here as well. Rio, Rio, Rio. I'm gonna need you, but I'm gonna need you. Yeah, we'll, we'll call the team as well. But Yeliji, you have mic. Pehli match, when we OG were looking very strong. Consistently khele. The three matches, as a matter of fact, consistently khele. Play se baat karenge. Lekin wahan pe baat kaisa lag raha tha when you're watching the match? It was feeling amazing. The energy was tremendous. Uh, they were also cheering for the team. It, it. So it's amazing to have such fans and players playing so, uh, such an awesome game. So it was uh, amazing to watch this match. Well, that's wonderful. Also, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time when the Parsec Hill Derby happened. And this is going to keep happening, by the way. We still have a chance for it to happen again if all the factors pan out. But we'll wait it out on that one. I'll, I'll have Rexy come up. Rex, Rex, if you could have you come up, please. Okay. Thank you so much, Rio. Congratulations, Congratulations once again. A lot of love for you, Rex. A lot of love for you. Yep. Got, got knife, that's why. Huh? Got knife, nah. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time you got backstabbed, though. <laughs> True. <laughs> Regardless, pehla match up khatum hua. Vibor, by the way, was looking ice cold. Especially ice work with just the case. Unhone clutches ke. It's not easy to bounce back. Raw fuel was also visibly frustrated. Mentally, how did you come back game the game? Second map, press start bus. Or kuch nahi hai. Ham log aale, uh, YB ne to ham log ko bahar hoi bola ki. अभी it doesn't matter we are in the lower bracket समझ की खेलो जीते तो जीते हारे तो हारे yeah but Press because start. it can be very comforting also when you have that comfort कि आप lower bracket में जाएंगे you can you you are more prone to making mistakes नहीं like not like uh, think as if you are in the lower bracket and if you lose this you are going out exactly right yeah. because when you have the comfort you are more prone to making mistakes and I think that's a wonderful mindset to have yep. but the entire team right पहले मैं आपने लगा था कि things might be looking shaky especially in the camp but after after the second map, you had a wonderful comeback. So congratulations to that. Thank you, thank but before you. I let you go, do you have any, anything to say to the fans? Mm, yeah. Who? 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 <laughs> I love the band. I love the band. It's very healthy. But once again, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a huge round of applause for Enigma Gaming? That's wonderful. But we still have to break the match down. We have a panel ready. So let's go back to the panel. You can start. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, we have the very first finalist for SCS, which is none other than Enigma Gaming. This is where I started my day saying the undefeated champions for the series for since the phase two until now. But now the stakes will be even higher for them. They are moving on to Apex. Even if they don't win the next one, they are still into the flames. So, Crips, what are your words here? I would really, really like to congratulate Enigma, first of all. I mean, at this point, they can stop worrying about SCS, start thinking about the dreams ahead. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that YB already has, like, a bunch of notes made, ready for APAC. He just hasn't distributed them out to his players yet because he was waiting for the right opportunity. Well, the opportunity is here. It is here right now. Enigma Gaming are your first finalists of SCS and also the first team from India to move ahead into VCT APAC. Congratulations to them. 
my god, after two incredibly close series on Icebox and Descent, I really thought Haven would be something once, uh, I, I think Haven would be something incredibly close as well, but Enigma Gaming had them under control, they pressured Orangutan, and they pressured them so much, they edged them out of the game so beautifully, so gracefully. Never lost the grip would be exactly what Enigma did, no matter which side they were playing, especially Antidote sometimes with the operator getting an entire site control with those early frags until the finish of frags. Sometimes it was raw fuel with that thrifty and a blade storm. I, I really cannot appreciate about how these boys are bringing every single round with new tactics to work on to and Rexy was pretty cool. He said we make it or we don't. It is just a game. But these games are what they, what they are made up of and Team Enigma really are men of steel. I don't know if they are Superman or no, but they hmm. definitely are. Yeah, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, all the superheroes in the world, these guys are hero material. And you know what else is hero material? That, a, that, that, that amazing push from Rothfield and the way he broke OG economy. I gotta feel so bad for OG, right? I mean, you take a look at the last half. OG win the pistol round. Cool. cool. Come back on the way, on the cards. And then Enigma win the one after that. Instantly destroying whatever momentum they had built up. Instantly destroying the economy. And then after a series of failed executes on the sites, OG finally pull off an A execute. They win. And that was like, cool, another breath of fresh air. Maybe they should be able to start continuing after that. And immediately after that, Rockfield goes berserk, pulls off a thrifty, and Orangutan are back in the economic dumpster. They're looking for scraps of metal, but it, it's only dirt. They don't find any gold in there. And that dirt definitely did not get them that round. Not only that round, they also weren't able to make the most into the next round as well. So somehow, uh, Orangutan starting pretty good, gaining the momentum good, but in the map of heaven as we discussed i'm not expecting any overtimes happening we did mention it it is going to be a dominant game but on which side that we are to witness and enigma was pretty prepared for this map and either on the defenders or attackers they never left a gap open to be outplayed they did make, make some mistakes on the map of ascent but heaven was clean cut whatsoever what you call a gem with the precision cut this is what team enigma made sure of they shine the brightest <clears throat> yeah and enigma gaming left nothing to chance they read og like a book at least in the first half after that tactical timeout when these guys were starting to focus on mid a lot more enigma recognized that so they avoid the entire mid region like the plague whether it's b whether it's garage they did exploit Garage also quite a few times, but in most occasions, they just focused towards the extremities of the map on A-Long and C-Long. And then OG had no choice but to leave the site open, almost defenseless. Enigma were getting the plant down so many times without losing any members. And in the post-plant positions, they stuck on the site instead of playing from the regular post-plants like near A-Long or C-Long or any of those extremities, right? They just stayed on the site, built the crossfires, and they never let OG inside. They never allowed, even if when they were allowed, they were already outnumbered and planting the spikes. So yeah. getting an entire control, though I wouldn't deny, Portia literally made the most use out of his uh, uh, dual 1v2, 1v3 with the sheriffs as well. But talking about the MVP right now, Tesseract, all three matches will still remain the MVP for the team. And he has done a commendable job. But I would want to mention here, this is the only place where we don't see any of the members of Team Orangutan crossing the KD ratio of one. And that is something of a miss from the side. And thus, you don't see them on the page of victors. But if we have a look on the side of the victors, Enigma, Raw Fuel, with a 2 KD ratio, which is massive. Sometimes we did see a starting a, a first blood. It is in total of six first blood. Some in the attacker, some in the defenders. It is all mixed ultimately. But the KD ratio of two coming in from raw fuel, almost two coming in from the side of Xcali. RBK crossing the marker of closing the market of two as well look at the team support coming in how adamant they were they didn't they wanted to win it and they did it or oh, usually whenever we see these type of stats they're always close 
But this time they're just so different, man. Yeah. Raw fuel on fire with two KD. Everyone else on Orangutan having absolutely no positive KD at all. So to some extent, you can say that Enigma were able to win this game because of several frag wins. But objectively, Orangutan, they made a little bit of difference, especially Tesseract. He tried his level best, man. <clears throat> I still remember that one round from Tesseract where he activated the Hunter's Fury at yeah. the last moment and denied the plant, getting his team an important win. So moments like those, objective wins like those, are what gave Orangutan the few rounds that they were able to muster. But other than that, even though Orangutan played tactically in a sound fashion, Enigma not only outbrained them, outmaneuvered them in terms of tactics, but in terms of aim, I think out aim is the wrong word over here. It's an underwhelming word. They absolutely destroyed them when it came to aim duels. And I believe destroy would be an underword as well. Because yeah, I mean, there's no here, there's no disruptive enough no objective. Exact yeah. Word to say that what were Team Enigma up to, but whatever they were up to, they made sure of clips that never did they allow the economy to build up for Team hmm. OG. Every single time around one, the economy started to build up, build up a little by little, but then comes a round, immediate round, where they were thrashed to ground zero. And that is what exactly made Enigma what they are right now, where they are right now, and Orangutan falling into prey at certain times, losing players, and how much could have Shooter and Persia alone have done. No doubt we both did commendably well on the map of Icebox, as well as the next map of Ascent. Here, uh, Shooter and Persia did need an extra hand, and that was a little bit of a miss. 30 seconds left. Oh, they do not miss. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Enigma Gaming, your first finalist of SCS, the first team from India to go to VCT APAC. They have done a tremendous job, but our day isn't over yet. After this one, we have the Val Classical. It's Global Esports, it's Velocity Gaming, two of India's favorite teams, and they are fighting to the death in the lower bracket. We're going to be jumping into that game soon enough, but first, we're going on a short break. See you on the other side.
Player standing. One enemy remaining.
mid. Okay, Rossi, man, we, can't, we as much as we love talking about this guy, can't deny the bad performances, man. He has got four kills right now. Oh, it's, it's heartbreaking to see for G. They need SK Rossi to deliver. They're all turtled up at the side. They can easily get swarmed by the pistols. Not afraid at all. Why? I'm to Ross and Deathmaker. We've gotten two. Still a lot of work to be done for Deathmaker. Let's bring it to a 2v1, but still a little bit too much to ask this time for Deathmaker. It's a great attempt, though, but open from heaven. This is just a game that just keeps on giving. Someone's got headshots. That's Deathmaker, though, juggling the guns. Oh. But eventually, the weight of the Vandal will weigh heavy on Jermaine.
time to fight back. It is time for payback. It is time for glory. Arise, Salvage. It is time for Sky East Post Champion Series. We are ready. We are coming. Sky Sport Champion Series is the uh, road to VCT event and it's a dream project for us. So Riot Game was super happy and they are also uh, super interested to make a first ever film for uh, Indian Esports. When the planning stage happened, we, we didn't want to do just another tournament. We wanted to make it like a huge esports experience. The idea came together and everybody liked it and uh, we grabbed this opportunity. This film was a very important film for us. I think this project for the gaming industry ke liye, it was a new step in the right direction. For Valorant, ke liye, we had not seen someone take this big initiative. I'm very lucky that people have taken me to shoot. Pe liya hai. I am excited as well that when this video is launched, it will actually be hype wale hai video for sure. This film, from an execution point of view, required a specific location because that location kind of gives you the texture, the tonality and brings about that entire dark atmosphere that was needed. The location is very spooky actually. After coming, I realized that this is a cell. I thought it was a haunted place. I mean, speechless. First of all, the costume and then the set. It's like a professional vibe. It's like, you know, you're working in a Bollywood movie. मोहित भाई है और क्या बोल सकते हैं? शूट करने में ही मतलब यू नो लाइक गुस्सों में सारे तो वीडियो देखने के बाद तो क्या ही होगा लोगों का? I'm in a jail, you know, trying to get out of this hell. वो शॉट कंप्लीट हुआ है पूरा मेरे को ही पता नहीं है जस्ट वाइ बी The reason we wanted to treat this film in a black and white perspective is because we wanted to capture the emotions, right? The players are going through a lot of emotions, seeing, uh, you know, the dark side in their personality and how sometimes, you know, it's easy for us to give up hope. We wanted to show that they're all struggling. So we had decided let's go with a black and white look and we are also having an option that we're just gonna keep their clothes and skin color. So the psychology of this entire thing was when you're trapped into your own head, no? You don't know what is happening, whether you're fighting yourself or you're fighting your team. Riot Games was super happy, Mohit and team, uh, given the pitch document and the storyboard. Literally, they were impressed uh, from the day one. No one has touched the 
flip concert that the real uh, emotion concert so we are aligned together to make a emotion out of it because this kind of film has to come out to make the people to understand how we are serious about esports the logistical part to shoot in such a location is always the challenging part because it's an abandoned building or a bungalow right there's nothing here so sorting out the food the transport the equipment carrying all of that on this long staircase it's crazy but we made all of that happen there is always someone who's going to come take you out of whatever cocoon you're living in so that's what anti did here chalo ye kaise dono bhi nahi hai because now media nikal gayi hai you all can match your thing you know in unison and go with that confidence bollywood mein jaise teen hero jaate sath hai aage left right left bye kaun bolega Is the negative emotion yeah. the winner is the sitting shot? The sitting shot, yeah. Right. Yeah. The positive emotion we have the standing shot. We do not want to repeat like visuals that are in the film already. So that made us look also differently. We tried different perspectives, different lightings. When people here, gamers or players, rather than players, they'll be like, okay, they just sit at home and they just play games. Like no, we also get to you know, have a lot of fun. Like you know. come out do shoot produce it all the amazing people here so it's very much fun and exciting kudos to mohit and team because uh, they are making a uh, esports player to act in a real uh, film that is the big hurdles i i personally feel like okay chalo you are ready for the game now you get one it's 2v1 you get one more it's one on one but he gets you you lose the round you're getting this round very close you can win it come on you get the next one and it's a victory वॉकिंग के टाइम पे ना एंटी का एटीट्यूड काफी आ रहा है यू कैन एड लिटिल बिट मोर ऑन द स्टेज वो दिखता एक एक स्लो मो है ना तो एक एक वो एक्सप्रेशन दिख रहा है तो वॉक इन दैट फुल पावर uh one thing i would like to tell is south asia has to rise up so this is the right moment we have to go for the global and we need to win the global trophy and the people who are watching this has to support indian teams and south asian teams and the region from south east asia give the more confidence to the players and teams to go to the global level Those who know performance, no AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. Those who know performance, no AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. Those who know performance, no AMD advisor. Get the latest in laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processor. Thank <laughs> you.
Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD Ryzen. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD Ryzen. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD Ryzen. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those with no performance, no AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors. Those who know performance, know AMD advisor. Get the latest gaming laptops powered by AMD Ryzen processors.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sky Esports Champion Series presented by AMD and powered by Ruta. We had a crazy match between Enigma and Orangutan, but now it's time for the match that we've all been waiting for. We talked about it in the draw show. We've been looking at all the brackets, but now is when it's going to happen. And what a, what a, what a better moment than this. Because, oh, <laughs> thank you so much, guys. But today's match is going to be probably the most important match that both of these teams have played because this rivalry is age-old. It stood the test of time. But today, the team that loses will get knocked out. The team that wins will play Orangutan tomorrow for one more chance to qualify for the APAC Challengers. Are you guys ready for the World Class to go? I love the energy over here. I love the mood. I love the atmosphere. For all of you folks who are watching at home, I hope you can feel this. I know we don't have crowd mics right now, but trust me, if you're here, you would have loved it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready? Let's do this, let's do this once again on my cue. Make some noise, okay? Three, two, one, Chennai, make some noise! You four. I did not plan this, but I need to come up on the stage. I have a couple of questions for you. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for Euphoria. What's up? Can I have you come up as well? I'll start off with you. <laughs> oh, nice shoes, by the way. That's thank what Raka is saying. Thank you, but thank this, you. This rivalry, Val Classico, there's a reason why it's called that. It's in a time to kill the. इतने टाइम से दोनों टीम्स एग्जिस्ट करते खेली एक दूसरे के साथ कई बार जीती है कई बार हारी आपकी टीम बट व्हाट्स द मूड लाइक इन द ऑडियंस सारे कंटेंट क्रिएटर्स भी आए हुए यहाँ पे हाउ यू फीलिंग यार इससे पहले भी काफी वेल क्लासिक हुए हैं कभी भी इतना प्रेशर फील नहीं हुआ है बहुत गलत जगह पे हो रहा है लाइक लोअर ब्रैकेट पे वेल क्लासिक हो रहा है वो भी फॉर लाइक वी स्टेज टू तो मतलब मेरा तो पूरा गट ब्लैंक है फर्स्ट टाइम की कौन जीतेगा क्या होगा कुछ पता नहीं है व्हाई डू आई फीलिंग एट द एंड ऑफ दिस यू यू आर नीड एंजाइटी मेडिकेशन और प्रोबेबली यू विल रन आउट नेल्स ऑलरेडी ऑलरेडी गोइंग थ्रू दैट मेरा मन नहीं था आज यहाँ पे आने का आई वॉज लाइक मैं रहता हूँ रिजॉर्ट पे वहीं से देखता हूँ लेकिन बट आना तो है वॉचिंग एट होम उनको कैसे आप डिस्क्राइब करेंगे एटमोसफियर जो है वो प्रेशर तो है मतलब फैंस हो जो भी हो टीम के सब लोग हैं सबको पता है कि स्टेक्स आर हाई जो टीम ये वाला गेम हारेगी वो दे आर वॉकिंग बैक और दे इज नो कमिंग बैक ऑल्सो उसके बाद टूर्नामेंट में बिकॉज दिस इज द लोअर ब्रैकेट तो ऑल इन है डू और डाई फॉर बोथ द टीम्स ट्रू ट्रू आई कम बैक टू आप इधर इंतजार करें बट वॉट्स यू प्लेड ऑन दीज योर सेल्फ अभी जब हमारी एग्जीबिशन मैच हो रही थी यू नो वो प्रेशर इज लाइक यू नो हाउ मच फन इट इज एज वेल बट वहाँ पे मूड कैसा है I think the mood is good, but there's just one thing for both the teams. I think आज जो भी सबसे ज़्यादा कम mistakes रहेगा वो ही जीतेगा. That's what matters, I think. Uh, nothing else. But I, I heard there's a funny story as well. Bhavan कल ज़्यादा celebrate कर रहा था उसने earphone तोड़ दिया. हो गया ज़्यादा हो गया. We struggled a lot to you know find a new another pair, but ठीक है. देखते. It'll be a good game. It'll be a good game, no doubt about that. But for all the fans who are watching at home, what do you have to say to them? Nothing much. Just you know, keep supporting both the teams. The better team will win. The better team will win. But 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 wait 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 wait. We need to make this happen. I want some banter over here. If you had to tell him one thing, what would you tell him? अभी तो ऐसा कुछ plan नहीं है कि क्या करेंगे. But ये ये कि like to be honest नहीं है किसी के. Both of us have nothing. I, Because it's, it's, you both know, of it's, us it's crazy. Want, both of us wanted each other to be in the finals. To be very honest. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was uh, like उसके भी same feelings है इस चीज को लेके wonderful ये तो काली ने दिया मुझे हाँ काली ने number दिया so he had taken this number वो उसके बाद मैंने ले लिया that's crazy but once again I wish you both all the best I hope you guys have fun but ladies and gentlemen now it's time to call the teams upon let's have a look at the first team in question.
Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for Global Esports! Goal, you're running away from me. <laughs> You guys have played against each other for a very, very long time. Yeah. But today's pressure is today. Because elimination matches usually are in the finals. If you win, you win, you win, you win, you win. But right now, the team that loses gets knocked out. Both the teams are fighting with survival. Now, you feel pressure or not? No. I mean, like, you either win or lose. What can you do now? Like, we both are in the lower brackets, so... Uh, I think we have been there quite a lot. I don't think VLT has been there in the <laughs> lower brackets a lot. So, uh, like, we are used to playing in the lower brackets and we'll try and give our best, yeah. It's a game. Koi jitega, koi harega. We'll do our True, best. It's a competition at the end of the day, yeah. but I wish you all the best. You are, you'll have to wait until VLT, VLT comes, comes up. up. Once, Once again, good luck. luck. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's have a look at VLT. Gentlemen, make some noise for Velocity Gaming! See ya. energy over here is impeccable, there's no doubt about that. You can feel it up on the stage. But you mentioned a curveball while we were talking when you arrived at the arena, but is that the curveball, the t-shirt? I mean, you, you don't go to a movie to see what's going to happen in the movie in the first 10 minutes, right? <laughs> so just tune in and uh, get the popcorn if you want. Oh, absolutely. Grab the popcorn because I know one thing for a fa fact, there's going to be a three-mapper, at least for us viewers. I'm sure both of your teams are feeling very confident that you, you want to end it in a 2 nil. but for us viewers, a three map is very entertaining. But to all the fans watching, I hope you guys have a good matchup. Do you have anything to say to the fans? No, just love. Thank you very much for the support. The team appreciates it, and so do I. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Once, Once again, good luck to you as well. You guys can have the handshakes. Settle in. It's a good rivalry. It's a good rivalry to have because the players know what's at stake, but there's a lot of mutual respect as well. You can see the smiles on all these players. You can feel the energy. I hope all the folks watching at home feel it too. But our lovely panel is ready, so what to you folks. The excitement is palpable. I really wish you were in the arena. You could still be here. It is Global Esports versus Velocity. It is the Val Classico. It is the equivalent of none other in Indian esports. Tanya, both these teams have faced off a lot. Hell Ranger, you win or you lose. Kafi uh, cool, but if you lose, you're not going to be that pleased about it. Especially when you are one series away from being eliminated. Global Esports won in Mumbai. Uh, they thrashed Enigma in the finals. Enigma is now going to APAC. And Global Esports is on the verge of being maybe eliminated, maybe moving forward as well. Who knows? This, this tournament, the Indian Valorant scene, is full of crazy ups and downs. Tanya, you also made a lot of notes about these teams, a lot of notes which you fit on that one small cue card. What 
what from that would you like to share with us? Well, before I share about the cue card, I would want to share to the viewers that we have heard the chance of OG roaring in the stadium, but what more roars am I hearing? It is about the Well Classico. This is the real energy. I, I would say this is the maximum amount of energy I've ever felt entirely in the four days of tournament. But this is for the very first time we are going to witness Team Velocity versus Team Global Esports battling against each other for one slot and elimination. Now the pressure is high. The pressure points are already triggered, not only of the players, but of the coaches as well. Now as the stakes are higher, I believe today it's the do or die and the swords of debacle is on the head. You need to make sure you do it somewhere correctly. Talking about Enigma, a team which never lost, but talking about these two teams, they have faced the loss not only once, but total of twice or thrice for one team. So overall, the day for the, because if we talk about the day entirely, I don't see any 2-0 happening. I'm seeing a lot of OTs and 2-1 score line. Now over to you. Whom would you give to if at all I, I would ask you? A prediction. A random prediction is not the keyword. A proper analytical prediction. I think uh, it will go all the way to map three. Um, and map three is also going to be close, but Global Esports will take it. That's my prediction. Uh, the first map will be won by Global Esports. We, we know the maps. We're not spoiling it for you. We're not like the guys on Twitch chat who come over to the YouTube stream <laughs> just because there's a little bit less of a delay and spoil the results. We will not do that. We are a little bit better than Twitch chat, so we're not going to spoil the veto for you. But I think map one will be won by Global Esports. Map two will be won by VLT. And once again, map three, I feel Global Esports will win. What's your prediction? Well, I will catch up on my prediction uh, in a while. History is in the making and he has written the history in his yeah, own yeah. frame of mind. Let's see if his written words are going to match up to the history in the making. But uh, I would say definitely Global Esports have faced them faced lots lots with lots of teams into the lower bracket several times and they've made it and they play best under pressure so i would second your opinion nonetheless talking about team velocity here they are also matching up the pace they were also almost undefeated until and unless the team who is now eliminated took them down which is full power gaming so uh, out of any predictions random predictions analytically uh, team Velocity has done best of the jobs during phase two by far. Both of them ha have been pushed down towards the lower elimination brackets. But I still feel Global Esports do stand uh, an, an edge of an upper hand, though not too much of a difference. But still, I do believe what you said. Yeah, I mean, Velocity are a really good team. They're bo both teams are really good. Maybe Global Esports has a slight advantage. What I'm looking for if I'm a Velocity supporter, so I MW want to really pop off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that they don't give him Neon. I've really not been convinced by anyone's Neon in this tournament except for Scargard from Devnin. And um, what we want to see from Velocity is they're probably going to go for their comfort picks. They've been picking Reyna quite a bit for MW1. He might just pick it up again in this series. I'm sure Reyna is viable on Bind. So they might go with that for MW1. But the team as a whole needs to step up. It can't just be hell F. And uh, a little bit of participation here and there, but primarily hell F and right to ace uh, doing all the heavy lifting. Everybody's got to come together. This man plays a pivotal role for the side of VLT. When he looks good, the entirety of VLT yeah. looks good on the server. So VLT could give a tough fight. We could all be proven completely wrong. And I, I think they're a very capable team. Now, I'm just going to go back into a little bit of past history between these teams. The history is huge. It, uh, it is a textbook that could be written about these teams and the histories. In the past, VLT's won, G's won as well. But the last time these two teams played, it was in Mumbai for, uh, for the Sky Esports Souvenir Mumbai. And that time, VLT ended up losing. Even then, VLT lost 2-1. The map they won, which was the second map, was Ascent. And they won it 13-11 or some such score line. It was really, really close. It wasn't a simple, straightforward bit. However, on the final map, 
they ended up losing 13-1. Hmm. When Velocity loses, they lose badly. So even even if they struggle in map one, they've got to have enough mental confidence to not take that beating too badly and recover in map two. Because if map one, and I think map one is the most GE favored map out of all the maps, except for map three. So map one, if G is struggling on map one, Tanya, maybe, just maybe Velocity could take the entire series. Well, today it's not about who is going to be who is going to be playing better. Today it is about who is going to make a le an amount of lesser mistakes, because uh, I do agree about the maps you are you are trying to explain. The first match is uh, first map is going to be a, a crucial one to win. And uh, once you are winning the first map, you play a little. You tend to get a little cool down phase. Yeah. You can and you and when you play with the cool down mode on. You play with all your brains activated under pressure. No doubt, you go the same way, same pattern. But uh, today, it's not about who is better one. It is about who makes lesser mis mistakes. That is what I personally feel because these two teams are the best in the nation. They have been the best in the nation in the history. Though now, Enigma is catching up the pace even beyond and better them because they have already got the very first slot of the APAC. Yeah. See. Lesser mistakes, I agree with you to some degree, but VLT has an issue of everyone not firing. That maker has been phenomenal for VLT. He's been consistently getting 20 plus kills on the chamber, but the issue is not everybody's finding that sort of success. And success is what the crowds in Chennai are hoping for for the side of VLT as they've had their huddle and they're going to sit down if MW1 has a good day, VLT have a good day for me. And if VLT can manage to take the first map, which I'm still not going to spoil for you, then they could just take the series in their hands and eliminate Global Esports very early on in this tournament. We already know, for those of you just tuning in, that one team has already made it to APAC. That's going to be the side of Enigma Gaming. For the rest of the Sky Sports Championship, presented by AMD and powered by Ruta, we still have one more team to find that's going to be heading in that direction. APAC is only going to be starting two days after the end, two to three days after the end of this event. So there's a lot of quality Valorant action coming your way. And in the audience, two old friends, Excali and Antidote. Oh, well, there are family, there are friends, there are fans. And there's much more to follow. There is a lot of audience, not only in the stadium, but also in the home. Keep on cheering for your favorite team and player because this motivation is going to matter a lot. If you are a Velocity fan, go ahead. Go for the hashtag VLT. Uh, if you are a GE fan, as we all know how GE likes it, hashtag GE fighting. Go ahead, support your team. And we as a caster definitely want to have the best of the action and may the best team wins. And this is the exact time where I would want to say good luck to both the teams for the matches because this is, this is going to be a great start. I know the day is about to end within three matches, but it is still the start of El Clasico. Yeah, the day is going to end, but it's going to be a long day. And Kramer has had a terribly long day. That man just casted the previous series with me. He's tired. His heart is palpitating, but his day isn't done. He still has one more best of three to cast, and Crips is going to be taking over. Uh, so Crips and him will be casting that series for you, and that series being the Wild Classico. I'm saying the word that because I'm pretty sure you know that what you're about to witness is two of the greatest teams, the biggest titans, the mammoths of Indian Valorant. The old guard being replaced by the new, or have the old guard still got a place in the circuit? We've got the veto, and now you can see, and I hope the guys from Twitch aren't coming over and spoiling this for you. <laughs> it's Bind, Breeze, and Haven. Like I said, first map, it's global spec. But if Velocity cause an upset uh, on that map itself, I'm, I'm very concerned for Global in this series. Breeze, I'm pretty sure Velocity will win Breeze. Even I have a second thought there because uh, I believe Breeze is going to be the strongest map, is already a strongest map for Velocity. 
and if global can challenge that and snatch that away that can can be a table turning moment for global esports but if not global esports are going to end up in a in a spot where we usually say it is now or never phase yeah it is a now or never for both these teams both Tanya. these teams yeah absolutely uh, on bind i'm expecting to see some fade i know hellef's played it in the past uh, and even global esports they don't really prefer the fade because they have kappa playing the sova and uh, he's probably going to be playing the sova that's the initiator that's mm. their a uh, poison of choice on the side of global esports but if you look over at velocity they've been having a lot of interesting picks we're looking at the map veto it's speaking of interesting picks the one map on which global esports have picked three initiators ascent has been banned hmm. now ca the coach of velocity and also caster have had the pleasure of casting with him once uh casting some valorant online ca said get the popcorn i'm not going to spoil it for you sit down and watch the show of your lives so I'm pretty sure velocity has something prepared as well uh i feel that their preparation is going to be for bind so my prediction is we might see fade plus rena or fade plus raise on bind coming out from the side of velocity uh haven uh, breeze is going to be pretty standard right wiper wiper a ko uh, a sova uh, then you pick jet or chamber and a little bit of here and there uh they no, been I, i would like to make you happy and smile here because you definitely love to see cypher plays there uh, and hell range is a player where several times they spotted him playing cypher there on the yeah, map of yeah it didn't work for him though yeah it did uh, not i i don't like cypher but i just feel cypher is more relevant now because of fracture and because of chamber being nerfed and having only one trap so i'm just wondering and uh, honestly i think killjoy is better than cypher <laughs> Yeah so I I think both these agents should see more play we definitely seeing a lot more of Killjoy uh in the earlier series today we saw it on Ascent we saw it on Haven and uh did we see it on Icebox mm, I don't totally recover What did Persia play on Icebox I think he they didn't play Sage yeah they played they played Killjoy They played Kid Yeah they played Killjoy uh anti no i i could be wrong i don't know i i don't think uh that that series has affected not just my heart it's affected my head as well uh <laughs> too much of a good thing can do that global esports versus velocity though on bind global esports are going to be running with uh, pretty much standard picks uh speaking of standard picks on bind At one time Viper was played on Bind very early on when the meta was being figured out. There's one team that picked Viper on Bind versus Global Esports yesterday and that team being Remnant, but I don't think Global Esports are going to run it. However, Global Esports were deeply troubled by that Viper. And I do know that right to ways is the controller. He plays Viper, he plays Omen, he plays Brim. So Velocity can throw a curveball there. Those walls really made global esports rotate a bit too quickly from a to b what i'm also hoping for on bind and this is wild and i i don't think it's going to happen but i'm i'm really really hoping for velocity to pick yoru on bind mm -hmm. so let's see if we get to see any of that we should know soon enough tania the agent selection screen is live brim for skills chamber for rossi breach for hell ranger caps or rather kappa for sova and skills excuse me lightning fast he's going to be playing the rays a little bit yeah that's correct kappa is going to be on the sova and lightning fast on the rays so this is standard this is what they've been running it's worked really well uh, skills also <laughs> make some awkward but not awkward way smart and way effective lurks on the brimstone so i'm expecting to see some of that as well on the other side though what have velocity picked that's what i want to see is there a fade is there a raise for mw1 there there's only one fade probability that comes from helf he has been playing fade once on the map of bind and yeah. let's see if he's going to continue to play and uh, yeah. we are on the move and we are going to get to see about 
Who what? plays what? We have Brim, we have Chamber, and we don't get to see the other three agents. No, no, we don't. So, like I said, Fade and Race, I love this. I called it. I called it. I'm proud of myself. I can go home now. I'm actually going to go back to the hotel. Crips will take over the panel until he makes a right prediction. But what's most interesting is that Amaterasu is playing the sky. Double initiator. One controller, one sentinel, and one duelist. I like this, but I have an issue with Sky. We don't see people find too many frags with Sky. Even Excali was playing Sky on Haven. He found a lot of impact frags, mm -hmm. but not too many frags in terms of numbers. For this team composition to work, it's got to be Hell F and MW1 that do a lot of the heavy lifting. On defense especially, the Seas from Fade, the Pain Shells from Rays could really wreak havoc. So that's what we're expecting from the side of Velocity. CA, uh, salute to you, brother. I'm, I'm really enjoying the agent composition. So a lot of thought coming out from VLT. Is it going to be enough is the question. And my question to you, Tanya, is what is your prediction after seeing the agent compositions? What are you expecting? Well, these are the agents they have been picking from quite a while and uh, they are continuing to do so because that is working. And you don't fix the things which are not broken and I believe they are perfectly fit, they are perfectly in place and they are continuing with whatsoever agents they are functioning in a better perspective and ending up in a better result. And that is going to continue everlasting and uh, it is the time when we usually say good luck to both the teams about how the performances will be. I like what CS said. Don't, do not try to extract anything from me. Just enjoy the show and I really hope this action is going to make you enjoy as much as possible and this action is going to matter more than anything to both of the teams because it is an elimination match. One of the play, one of the teams who are not going to win it are going to walk out of this APAC series and the team to win it is going to move an inch closer towards the second slot. Still, that is not the end. They still do have to battle on other teams before they get the second slot and it's not going to be any easier though. But how can we even imagine anything easy happening while we are on a land for phase three? Because ladies and gentlemen, as you all are aware about it, it is time for the championship series in five, four, three, two, one, zero. I would really want to welcome your favorite caster, Crema, alongside Crema, will be Crips. Good luck to both of you because you're going to need the luck, you're going to need the energy, and I'm going to enjoy the favorite most well classic. Where are you? Welcome to the Val Classico. 28 times these teams have played against one another and right both here. of them have been able to go blow for blow sometimes it's global licking their wounds sometimes it's velocity walking home i can guarantee you one thing it's going to be bruised noses and bloody eyes in just a moment however i can't talk you through this alone i am because i'm joined by the wonderful crips crips what do you make of this one buddy He's changed the back of his mic. Instead, we've got a Deathmaker and opening skills falls early on. And I was going to highlight as well. For me, the biggest duel here is going to be the matchup between Deathmaker and SK Rossi. Deathmaker, while his highs aren't as good as SK Rossi's, he's a little bit more consistent. And for me, that is going to really show in this matchup here. Hell Ranger trying to catch up Deathmaker, trying to isolate him, avoiding the shock darts. He is on HP. He's also baiting. For Hell F here. There's a little bit more damage comes through. There's that kill. Beautiful shot by Kappa. Does he expect the follow up? No, he doesn't. Hell F triggered discipline. Let's take for a moment. Still able to get the kill. Sees it's clear. Global now. They're going to the safe site, but Blossy, they know exactly what's happening. Well timed Molly here. 20 seconds left. SK Rossi peeks out, pops out the player. Can't quite get the kill. Is the information enough? MW1 doubles down from range with the frenzy. Can't quite make it three, but that's not because he isn't able to do so. It's because Hell Ranger's run. Ten he's seconds out, left. out of there. 10 seconds left. And Ooh. all the close angle, but he's got needed. Abaturatsu brings the first round to Velocity over on Global's map pick. Ooh. Got a great start from Velocity Gaming. They were absolutely unfazed by all that Global Esports were throwing at them. A single shock dart is all she wrote for him. And that kill was the only thing the Global Esports could get. Even though they tried this two-pronged approach, 
This shows resilience from Velocity. And I might be speaking a bit too soon, but I think if they can keep this calm and composure, then I think they should be able to win. Let's see if they can convert this round. I mean, Global Esports have been notorious at turning these pistol rounds into victories. out of the early position here as Velocity aware of the attack be careful SK Rossi shows exactly why gets the opening it is traded for a twofer but how long will this last how long will the tights sway on Velocity's favor I tell you what if MW1 has anything to say about it it would be perpetually for Kappa he has another he has another thing on his mind that being MW1 skills able to trade two versus one death maker planted. navigating these smokes trying to pioneer his way through to catch out skills but they pass one another the timing it favors death Maker velocity, they go to zero up. Remember, Grips, so I'm gonna hit you with a really cool statistic. Now, the last time these hmm? two teams played against each other on Vines, Global won 13 1. Oh, well, that was a dominant victory, and I'm sure that won't be repeated again. But I was really scared about velocity this time around. I mean, both Ace and Hellfighter were busy looking towards path. Meanwhile, they thought that the sky smoke that was present on A main should be able to hold the members of Global Esports back, but they all swung out of the A main smoke as well, resulting in the death of them both. If it wasn't for the Deathmaker, then this round, if it wasn't won by Global Esports, they could have at least gotten it closer. But they did get plenty of kills, and as a result, Velocity have three people Lost on down. just a bunch of pistols. Being a little bit ambitious with only a frenzy. He does have to be careful about the incoming utility. Global on a full fight, going for a very fast push here. Yeah, lightning Fast able to disappear deep into enemy lines. Gapper gets the opening regardless, though. Lightning Fast Scape is going through, but it's Rossi to continue the rampage. Just right away, it's Rossi now going into defense. Sword, just have expected. He does, but he can't stop him. Rossi's going for the rampage. The velocity now. Two players left on the flank. By global. Rossi's already visited their spawn. There's only so many players that these players can be. Blood W1 remaining. is hoping for a tiny Hell Ranger. The only thing he'll be able to hand over is the cold, cold, hard bullets, which will embody themselves, find themselves in velocity. What a clean round by Global Leaf. Both textbook execution by them. Put down the smokes inside, take control of U Haul first. Kappa, he was able to deliver the first frag, and everyone else followed. And it was all going very safe. Up until SK Rossi decided to push the envelope beyond the safe region and go all the way to its CT. But he only did that after he was completely sure that his teammates will be able to plant the spike without any repercussions. And that's Global Esports knowing when to and when not to take risks. That push by SK Rossi would have been risky under normal circumstances, but since his teammates were more than safe, he was okay pushing it. And even if he lost his life, it didn't really matter because his teammates had the control of yep. the rest of the site. Figuring out when and when not to push, when it's risky and mitigating those risks, that's the key to success for either of these teams. And because these teams have faced each other so many times in the past, they tend to know each other's uh, behavioral patterns. They know each other's tendencies. So knowing when to push the envelope and go beyond your uh, safe region, go beyond your calling and extend, that's going to be crucial for these teams. That's the only amount. That's the only avenue of brain game that's available for these teams. It truly is. I want to highlight the early operator investment from Deathmaker here. You look at what it's done to the velocity economy. This is a, a must have ground. If it isn't, then Global are going to take the lead for 3 2 because velocity will have to go straight down to a very, very heavy eco. Halef gets a lot of info from this very fast push over for B long. While the land grab does favor Global, they've handed over a lot of information now. You see both players just trying to spam these angles and trying to catch a player lacking, you could down. say. Halef pinked is going to be deploying the odd prowler just to try and get a bit of a counter utility to make Global hesitate, to make him slow, but they show no signs of stopping here. Here's a momentary halt in the momentum of Global Esports. They'll probably continue when they decide to burst out the moment this smoke fades away. They're just waiting, hiding and biding their time, hoping that whatever sound cues they're giving away do not call for Velocity's rotation. They do have more numbers over here, so as soon as the smokes are inserted once again, Global Esports will try to push in, but it's rather slower than they would like it to be. Amatrasu holding Hookah by himself is good for only one, but the rest of the side crumbles. 
Even Hellfighter tried to push out of the smoke, planted. but the haunt didn't really give him an advantage at all. It resulted in his death instead, and Global Esports, just like that, have converted the second buy round in their favor as well. Yep. The silver lining for Velocity is that Deathbreak is going to be able to hold on to this operator. So there is still a semi-decent amount of cash behind this team. I don't think so. Oh yeah, what though? Deathmaker, is position known? Maybe it isn't a guaranteed save here. <laughs> as Velocity, they're two saving members. They're pretty far apart from one another. They're not really going to be able to assist each other. Luckily for Deathmaker, the Global don't really want to hunt. They have a fair bit of money, but when you do have matches that are this close, that money is going to be so important down the line. Oh, exactly. And it's important that you save onto that money for as long as you can. I remember seeing the last game where poor orangutan they had that economic meltdown at the worst time possible <laughs> enigma gaming were able to win that thrifty round and after that orangutan will have completely broke and that happened just an hour ago those players are still here in the stadium their wounds are still fresh of course global and velocity have both learned their lessons by watching that one i like how for velocity here Instead of uh, sort of semi force buying around the safe weapons, everyone has armor, which means you can recycle the guns They're should they not get an opening. Really, really, um, like a great, very green finger of velocity, isn't it? <laughs> As that's making us actually on quite a passive angle. And for me, that's the big difference maker between the velocity duelists and the global duelists. MW1 and Deathmaker are really passive when you look at Lightning Fast SK Rusty. On that note, skills just shifts forward, gets that opening. And unfortunately for velocity, global, they take the one slight where none of the guns are in position. It's a quick cleanup and what should really be a third round tip. I really wouldn't mind seeing velocity save. Find you. I feel so bad for Amato out there. Spike. Just wanted to play a cheeky angle under the hook. Uh, he knows it's a one and done, and since you've got pistols, there's not much that you can do except surprise, surprise your opponents like that once in a while, but he doesn't even get to do that. And because of that, his poor You're teammate who was on B long also was left super vulnerable. Global East, but it's funny how they just want to push out and get the kills, but they don't really need to. I mean, what are they even trying to get out of the hands of Velocity? If they can just make Deathmaker drop this off, that's all they would ever acquire. Hellraiser oh. won't live to see his Vandal in the next round, and even Lightning Fox will meet the same fate. I just hope it doesn't turn into something too oh. expensive. Deathmaker is getting all these kills, and sure, it looks stylish. Sure, it's amazing to look at, but these are nothing but consolation kills. At least he'll be able to keep Global Esports Economy humble for the next round. So, hey, you win yeah. some, you lose some. So long as you're sort of forcing reinvestments, I actually don't mind the fact we're seeing two rounds where we've seen a save from Velocity. It also shows that they really value having that operator on Deathmaker. For me, that's going to be the key thing to watch out for. When you save two rounds, there is enough bank to be able to reinvest one should he... Uh, should he fall in the Tour de Force. But the issue Velocity have had now is because they are really passive on these sites, by the time Global actually attack them, there's no time for rotations. I want to see some more probes for information here. And Deathmaker pushing smoke. up long is going to be exactly that. Oh yeah, maybe he can push up long and gather some early information. He's not going to spot anyone towards that side, but hopefully no presence on B detected by Deathmaker should indicate to Velocity that this push by Global towards Bath and A is indeed a full commitment. Of course, it's too early in the round, so Global Esports might also change their mind. But if they decide to do so, an aggressive position by Deathmaker could deter them from coming closer if they decide to go in for it. Lightning fast, fancy footwork goes all the way inside. Amaterasu gets blown to smithereens, and even though he's blind, he will still be able to bust open the captain's head. Right to Ace, busy defending, good for only one as he's isolated. There's not much that anyone can do. Hellfighter also prevents it from trading out because of the bullet of Hell Ranger, though. As long as he continues to stay in here, Hellfighter will have trouble eight. trying to make things happen from Triple Fox. But MW1 with the bigger That's gun comes down. through and alleviates the pressure. They can't even go for the plant. Kapo all of a sudden finds himself isolated and his teammates, even though they did not overextend, they have been exterminated. Hellfighter puts in the final nail and just like that, Velocity are back. This game is more than competitive, Kramer. It's going toe to toe. It truly is. And Velocity, once again, show themselves as they're adapting on the fly being one of their true one of their biggest strengths we saw just a moment ago they realized okay go for the land grab we have the information it means the rotations have time to come in and the duel between deathmaker and sk ross we've highlighted it already but what we haven't spoke about is lightning fast and mw1 both on the raise 
and for me, Ray's one of the most entertaining agents to watch, purely because of how aggressive and how fast you can play. Oh, when yeah. Playing as uh, Death Maker, going aggressive once again, able to avoid all the utility dropped by the Sober here. Does he get the Sober on the jump spot? The Aldro, unfortunately, is going to reveal Death Maker's position. Gaffer doesn't want anything to do with that, gets out of there. But the rest of Global, they're going up through Hookah. I hope they don't run into Death Maker. I hope they can find a way to deal with him. If not deal, just. Get him out of position, make him uncomfortable. Deathmaker already got a nice triple kill in bomb effective frag, so this could be something even worse if they walk right into him. And they're changing their mind up. Going presence towards the B side. They get that opening pick. Ace going down indicates that the Matarasu is in danger, and he has no option but to stay hidden inside the bot. Just hope that he's able to reunite with his teammates at an opportune moment, but there's trouble heading in from behind him as well. The Trailblazer should keep him safe from the back line, but Global Leans Boots, they're getting pushed by the Nightfall. Luckily, the fault line keeps the members of Velocity at base, so they can't capitalize on the Nightfall all that much. And even though the trails on the ground reveal positions, they don't net them any kills. Hellfighter still acting like the tip of the spear. Won't be able to go ahead as U-Haul is being contested. Deathmaker gets the nice frag from the back lines and FK Rossi returns one in favor, but U-Haul has been taken control of. It's just down to Deathmaker. He doesn't know where Kappa is. Kappa gets the jump on him. FK Rossi tries to go for a peek, but Hellfighter, he's quicker on his feet. And they finally get this one. He misses the first, but the second time is the charm. And Velocity, they intend to do all the harm. You dance like you're panicking and you sting like a Frenchman, apparently, because that was a hell of a round from Rossi. And even though they're not, the, the kills don't have too much impact. It's like the final player, you're in a 2v1 anyway. It's the speed at which he gets them, which builds confidence. And we saw, you know, the headline was Revenant Global. It was Haven, final map, and Rossi just woke up. And once he had two or three convincing rounds, from then on out, it was game over, essentially. No one stood a chance against him. If Rossi's able to get online this early on, then we could really see um, Deathmaker and MW1 have their work seriously cut out for them. Oh, they're already doing all the work. They're already doing all the heavy lifting. But what about the other people? They can't afford to get carried like that. So far, the kill distribution isn't really that even. And I hope it changes by the time the game comes to a standstill. I mean, is it even going to come to a standstill? Is it going to be dynamic from both these teams? So far, the fakes be. from Velocity have been more or less vanilla. I hate to say this, but hey, there are people who like vanilla and there are people who just cannot stand the stench. It seems like SK Rossi is not one of those people because he's got the big deterrent, the op in his hands toward the force in the back pocket. Will he be met with equal resistance from Deathmaker who also has the two of the force available? Ready. Not in Very this well, round, apparently. Be. Oh, yeah. I say that, then he pulled it out. My bad. All the force to wheel here, and I like how Global, sort of realizing this, stack up once again, go to this safe site where once you've swayed off heaven, you're playing at a much closer angle, particularly when you're fighting for U-Haul there. This is combated by MW1, who has very deep showers control, but as we saw from last round, Global don't care about showers control. It's almost like a plot that's set. Oh, and this plot has the death of so many important characters written. Kappa, looking to change the script, looking to flip the book right to A, so he's flipping over dead bodies and Shields is going to be turning in his grave. Avoid the shock start, but can't avoid the hail shot of bullets that Dead Hell Ranger is dumping upon him. And even though Global Esports have taken two casualties, they are yet to plant the spike. Luckily for them, Deathmaker can't do all that much because he's going to run into Rossi. Peek with advantage available onto Rossi, but he looks away at the first time possible. This is the opening that Deathmaker has been looking for, but he's paranoid about someone pushing from CT. SK Rossi did it the last time, and once bitten, twice shy. That's what Velocity are right now. MW1 really garnering this. Amazarasu gets this opening. This could be flawless. There's the perfect opening, followed up by the Seekers. They're going to get a really good gauge with this to how Global have played this. Enemy remaining. Close angle. He's able to get MW1, but delegate you down to just 2 HP here. It's actually almost a 1v1 in how low health is. Oh. But it doesn't matter. So long as he has one, he can still kill. He still has the power to fight. And for Global, that'll be a fifth. Remember, we are on Global's map pick. A 5 to 3 lead is certainly something they're going to be happy with. It's business as usual for GE. 
Oh, but it never should have been this way. This round wasn't supposed to be this close. They got three kills. And what's worse is that they were able to pull off this backstab in a round like this. And I think that's good for Global Esports. Like, imagine if Amaterasu walked into a position like that, caught them by surprise, and he had a much bigger weapon in a much more important round. That would have been disastrous. Really would have been death maker again on the off angle. I mean, it's worked a bit. Personally, now. I can't help but think that potentially it's um, a bit overused at this point. And global, you see for their positioning, like they, they fully oh, can't, it you can't clear it again and again. Early use of the orbital strike, try and get like one max right skills to the real first blood. Like, Amateurazu is able to respond, but only momentarily. That kill feed is one very dark and deep shade of red. And you, for a moment, you'd be right to think it's the blood of velocity running down the side of vines because it's going to be a stick for global oh the sand is now wet with the crimson blood spilt on it the shades of brown and red creating an unholy hue which is unpleasant to look at if you're a velocity fan for global esports this was a pretty simple execute from them wasn't it orbital strike giving them it didn't even stop them did it now they didn't just care about it walked right past it had absolutely no problems Isolated the angles and velocity game in. They make it look like they were a part of a hot knife cutting through a big block of butter. It's just that easy. Speaking of butter, they have been using this. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off there. I mean, speaking of butter, I mean, they've been using this B-Long region like their brother and butter, haven't they? They've been using yeah. it quite often and very often in the similar way as well and velocity also have the same formula for defending right the moment the, sno uh, the smokes drop down from global esports they try to use the haunt and they try to use any of those revealing abilities which can get them a kill or two from the smoke although it does get them a couple of frags every now and then it isn't really game changing so global esports still have what it takes to take over this b-side without any problems whatsoever what do Velocity do in order to change this one? I want to see Velocity focus a little bit more on controlling shorts here. Uh, they, they sort of go for showers, control, and then Global just ignore it. I really want us to see them pivot from a short and then focus a bit more on mid rather than having players, two players dedicated to long. You only need one player there regardless because you're just probing for info. And you look at Velocity's buy here, it's certainly not pretty with no ults either. This is not a position you want to be in, particularly when Global are currently on a uh, collision course with a 9-3 half. Yeah, this collision goes seems like there's absolutely nothing I can stop it. Oh, Deathmaker could have had an opportunity there, but my team part denies him off it, and he denies right to waste any blood as well. Just like that, EA side's under control of Global Eastwood. No Planted. blood shed, not even a drop of sweat dripping down their forehead. And he's just denying everything on the words of an ace. Yes, he gets it. Give it to him. Lightning Foss patting his stats and his teammates patting his shoulders. Understandably so. Bear in mind, this is an ace within the first 10 rounds of a series. So the yes. confidence is still needing to be built. The fact that they're able to do it now makes me think that come two maps down the line, when we're on our third map, which I entirely expect this to go to, Global is still going to be feeling it. We now need to see Velocity come back with something, anything, something though. What is that something going to be? You did point out that Velocity Gaming have been struggling to hold on to the A side, especially when they're doubling down on showers. And for now, they have changed the setup. You look at the position of Deathmaker, he's all the way down to a shot. Meanwhile, M24 is picking the fight to do with Hooker. And he's going to spot multiple members over here. So this could result in a blood bot right here and now. But what I'm more concerned about is the fact that Deathmaker can get into a much deeper position. Get on the flank already if he's a bit curious about pushing. LF on the angle, just shoulder peeking okay. for the time being. Expecting Rossi, but as you know, Rossi has one big scary operator. He's gonna tank the boom bot. The Claymore Rumba not doing too much damage for him. 
and they're hoping that potentially Velocity get a little bit too confident and try to cross here. Luckily, it's with the cover of the paint shells. But MW1 is still hovering about the place. Global, they are really committing to this short push now. While the Orbital Strike is deployed, it won't garner anything just yet. MW1 in the corner, caught out, out, shut down by skills. And now there's no one there to trade. Helif is on an off angle, but he's there alone. Destroyed. Oh, and he won't be there for much longer. Amateras is also good for one, but there's absolutely nothing the Velocity can do. The trade potential for their team has been diminished. The Orbital Strike planted. didn't give them much, but it definitely put them in uncomfortable positions. And even the smokes kind of worked against them, cutting off Hellranger from any... Uh, I'm sorry, not Hellranger, Hellfighter from any kind of backup that he could have received. Oh, and that's the kind of problems that Velocity have been facing time and again, whether it's the A side or B side. They're just simply not able to help each other out. They're getting caught all by themselves. Trading potential is being reduced. And even now, they have their backs oh, against wow, the wall. Really? But Deathmaker spray Death Hero. He sprays all over the wall. And he continues to do so yet again. He's figured out where Hellranger is. But build the timing, get the better of him. Taps the spike. No realizes it's a fake. He's going to call the bluff yet again. And Hellranger is oh. the poker master here. What's interesting is Global are doing so bloody well at the moment, but it's not SK Rossi. We it's everyone. I, I'm guilty of I'm guilty of saying this. I said Global they're at their best when SK Rossi is at its best, but this is a completely different team. This is Global where every single player has this kill factor to them, which we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen before. The longer this tournament has gone up for the longer Global have had a chance to build themselves up and ascend to another level. For Velocity, they're on catch-up. 8-3 down. They do have a nice little system, but it's play. lovely miss. Spectres to take on. The sword, of course, the might right of here. the Kings of SA. Nishka Rossi now looking to claim his crown. Will that make her put a frown on his face? Certainly not. Nishka Rossi faster than this one. The Nightfall does absolutely nothing. Writing fast response to it with violence and sheer aggression. Ace has done... He did manage to find a couple of kills into U-Haul, but now that his position's revealed, he's got lightning fast to deal with on one end and Kappa on the other. Kappa turns around the corner, swinging wide and recovering the spike. Meanwhile, Eskarossi's busy chilling on the B-side. Now, Global Esports have a multitude of options. They can go for the plant anywhere they desire. And Velocity Gaming have absolutely no idea that if they continue staying over here, SK Rossi can come punish them from the back door. I'm... That was about to say, I'm very surprised they haven't got this teleporter. That light oh, oh, oh. to lurk out with Rossi. Both players oh. with their guns out. Hey, Patsy Seeker. No here. way! Fortunately for Abiturazu, it'll be the last place he sees the flash of a very French gun. And with that global, they finish the half, I believe, 9-3 in the lead. You talk about a curse. Is this cursed or is this just reality setting in for Velocity? Oh, man. I'm not sure about reality because sometimes history tends to repeat itself. And I'm seeing the French Revolution all over again. It's like the guillotine slicing through them. Velocity wore Let the crown at cake. one point. <laughs> oh, well, cake and bread and uh, sometimes even misery. But what I'm seeing right yeah. now is the crown under contention. I mean, of course, that's what yeah. the French Revolution caused, right? It caused the crown, not just the crown, the head of the king to fall off his shoulders. And right now, that's what's happening to Velocity yeah. Gaming. Global Esports yeah. want to steal that throne for themselves and put their tushies on it comfortably. We, 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 need, we need a little bit more je ne sais quoi from Velocity <laughs> right now. And they're yet to... Uh, Yet to deliver, but maybe on their attack they'll be able to find a little bit more success. Now, Bind is relatively evenly matched in terms of defenders' attackers' win rate. Ever so slightly favoring defenders, but you're expecting that, particularly at the pro level. And for Global, as they now slowly but surely sort of fake the fact that they've stacked this these sites. They were beautifully here. Yeah, bit of shock start. Oh, the old fault line not quite able to get an opening as of yet. But Deathmaker, talk about opening, he's your man. Rossi pulls and Global have left the site undefended. Unfortunately, Velocity, they're going to find that out very quickly. Yeah, but will they be able to get the plant in time? So far, Velocity Gaming haven't taken control of u hauls just yet. Smoke. This could create an opportunity for Global Esports to start moving inside. The Aftershock throws them away, but it doesn't stop the spike plant. So Velocity Gaming get what they needed, and with the numbers advantage they have, on paper, they should be able to win this round. But Hellfighter peeking alongside that clash, remaining. and they're getting all the kills. This is turning out to be a flawless. Well, almost flawless, but they get the pistol nonetheless, and that's what they needed.
Yep, it's done in a clean fashion as well. A really clean fashion, which I, I love seeing. Frankly, because the way um, Global have really been reacting to a lot of uh, Velocity's plays have consisted of having one of their players just do better. Whereas now that Velocity is starting to clap back a little bit, I want to see some adaptations from Global. I want to see them sweat a little bit because that's when you really see the groovy strategies come out. I mean, sure, the plan of having their players just click mouse one better was working up until now for Global Esports, but they're gonna have to pull off something new. Maybe not in this round because Global Esports don't have the weaponry that they require to continue fighting. But maybe in another one. Velocity Gaming, though, they recognize that Global Esports are dangerous whenever they're on Eco, so they're being extremely careful. But SK Rocket switches all the way inside. Base for it with his life, and oh my god, they're jumping through the teleporters. That's making ceiling with them all! You teleport into this man's crosshair, he's gonna send you to God, he's gonna send you straight to Jesus and fight then down, down to hell. Eight. Global Esports fight back just a little bit, but Velocity Gaming are on the verge of pulling another round off. Setmaker on the verge of an ace of his own. Kappa, will he let him have it? Kappa denies it, and no. We could have had the second ace in the same game, but it seems like we're gonna have to wait a little bit more for it. You know what I love seeing? I love seeing um, the fact that not only is Deathmaker now woken up, it means SK Rossi has to step it up as well. And 9-3 is most definitely a curse. You said history has that nasty knack of repeating itself, and hmm. Velocity are looking to make it come true. I feel like, as you mentioned, you know, Global Esports, they go off to hell. There's going to be a very long queue of everyone who's been killed by Deathmaker. And they're all going to look at each other, sort of nod, and go, you yeah, from Deathmaker? Yeah, me too, man. God, that yeah. guy. And you later, want on play, when play. Nice play. <laughs> later on, when Deathmaker enters that area, uh, Doom music yeah. is going to start playing. Remember, the only thing they fear is you. And, and Deathmaker, who has a tour de force right now, who <laughs> is going to be making a fairly quiet push up through B here, avoiding the fault line, hoping to catch out a player mid rotation. Feels but a half a second quicker. That breach would have been laid and buried before the attack comes however velocity they are being very very fastidious with this ready. clearance of both long and of course up for through mids towards the hooker there is going to be a judge at point blank but frankly is, is that enough it has been enough in the past that weapon is the bane of everyone's existence in that position Maybe the Prowler can help clear it out. And Lightning Spot is going to meet his maker as end up one. Satchel's across at full speed straight, putting a bullet in his head. And they've dealt with the problem, man. Dealing with the other two on the side shouldn't be a problem unless the cavalry arrives. And that maker, he is the cavalry, the infantry, and the army all in left. one. They've taken control of the side. Spike plant should be happening any moment now. But Edgar Rossi needs a little backup. His teammate far away from him. Skilled. He's been sneaking all this time and he's gone undetected so far, but Bill Velocity offered standing. themselves to him. He gets one, but misses the opportunity and even SK Rossi is tied, so he's just better off saving. Oh, Skills. never mind. Okay, is saving really an option? Maybe it's time to take some players with you. Maybe it's time to show you that SK Rossi isn't the only juggernaut in the arsenal of Global. And to tell you what, it's put the fear of God in Velocity. They don't want to hunt him now. But originally, it was a matter of getting this Vandal off of him. Now it's sent to Deathmaker. And if he can't do it, no one can. Deathmaker. He's got the scent of his prey. And now he's in hot pursuit skills. Just trying to run for the hills. Run for his lives. But unfortunately, with MW1 coming from the front and Deathmaker coming from the back. The Duke from the Teleport is perfect and the Vandal stays alive a bit longer. It's going to carry it forward into the next round and it's going to hold on to it for this deal life as well. That's about the only five hour they're going to be having in a bit. Velocity game, they can't afford to sustain these many losses. They started off pretty well, but then what do Global Esports do in this situation as Velocity continue to inch closer? They almost had this in the bag. Skills could have turned this game around. The first two kills that were offered to him could have been avoided as well. And the fact that he got all the way from a site to Hookah via Link, it, it's going to start, uh, you know, ringing bells of danger in the minds of Global Esports because he got bust without being... I'm sorry, it's going to start ringing bells of danger in the minds of Lost City Gaming because he got bust without being detected, and that's something they can't afford to let happen again. 
You're right. And what I think is going to be really interesting is whether or not Global, after the tactical timeout, completely new turn how they've been playing. Because right now they've been going a little bit aggressive. They've been attempting the odd bit of control here or there. I'm really looking forward to seeing if there's going to be a, a complete U-turn where now they just push. They just fight everywhere and anywhere. Because as we saw in their attack, Global are playing well. Not just as uh, individually, but as a team they are playing well. I want to see them start taking control of this map before Velocity are allowed to roam free. We see that mid here. Here's that push. Here's exactly what I wanted to see. And Kappa, while he is spotted out, he's showing Rusty that they don't have space to move. SK Rossi even able to get that opening kill. The paint shells go off. Skills just pushes in front of them. The follow-up Satchel trying to buy space for Skills. He's pursuing MW1. How is the Rays running from a brimstone with no armor? But none Nonetheless, he does so, and that's the confidence, exactly what I wanted to see there. Yeah, but that was a bit too ambitious. I'm actually very happy that he backed off, because he continues to push, and there's going to be yeah. two people waiting for him on the other side, so he gets a pick. That's fine. The numbers are even. Velocity Gaming still have the lead, and now Global Esports must spread their defenses thin if they want to cover every single avenue, which can be difficult to do, considering like Velocity Gaming can always group up and punch inside the full force. Should be enough to rip through the paper thin defenses of uh, Global Esports. And this defense is getting thinner and thinner on the A side. Velocity haven't really made a decision yet, but they must soon. It's only 30 seconds left, and if they just let SK Rossi get a couple of kills while they're moving inside, left. all their plans will be laid to waste. Smokes will be called from the sky, but there is a massive gap, and SK Rossi will exploit it. Hellfighter and MW1 do make better off it, but that is all she wrote for them. Seems like Velocity should be able to get this one on the back and inch closer to Global Esports, but is it going to be possible though? Hell Ranger all by himself blinds end up the one, turns around, avoids dead, but doesn't avoid about the last two. I tell you what, Velocity, they bleed a lot more than they should have there. That did come yeah. down to the final two players, bearing in mind that Global only really went into this with a saved Vandal and uh, the odd utility, the odd weapon they could find sort of here, there, whatever's tucked behind the sofa, whatever they left in the fridge. They brought it out and, my God, it works. But now, let's really see if there's going to be any change in pace now that we see the full bite of Global. And that, for me, is going to be the real sentiment to Global's defense. Yes, they had a great defense, but now that... Oh, they had a great attack, sorry. But now that Velocity have hit their own, suddenly Global haven't won a single round on their defense yet. This is after a good few many. Oh, maybe the nine speakers indeed holds true. Maybe Superstition should be believed in, but Hellranger believes in himself and his big, strong bionic arm. He's gonna force back the members of Velocity far now, but despite that rolling thunder, Amaterasu dispatches him. Kappa gets the trade, but at what cost? Velocity Gaming, these guys have already lost. They have lost the man advantage. Luckily, Ace is still alive, so the smokes can help them out. Maybe Launching capture smoke. a little bit more radio than they Holly. should be getting, but Skills is doing all he can to buy time, and he's hey, not just trying to buy here. time. He's trying to buy their lives of a shooting hill fighter through the nightfall Last and the standing. orbital strike. It seems like he doesn't need any vision. His yeah, sixth sense is enough, and his spidey down. sense is tingling. His right arm is shaking with power. That was clean. Oh, Crips, that was clean. <laughs> Tenth round for Global. It's, uh, I would argue, a little bit overdue, but for Velocity, honestly, the fact they've been able to keep Global back for this long in itself is quite impressive. We were expecting a three-map series. I know I was. Um, and so for Global to look pretty strong on their map pick is understandable for me. Um, I'm now my sole attention is going to be how will how will i believe haven look i think that's our decider so velocity they go for a bit of early control now like a big land trap for long it's over kappa is going to have to back off the time being pursued by the trailblazers and well, velocity it's their turn to turn up the heat he's for a sheer speedy push out comes the seekers kappa he's yeah. still on the back foot he's still backpedaling skills tries to get out of there he runs into the loving awaiting arms of mw1 down to the 4v4 4v4 after plant in just a second as well see a quick dance around the site to make sure it's completely clear but there's still a hunter's fury there's still a showstopper there are ults ready to try and stop this however the hunter's fury is a little bit mistimed will it be able to even tag anyone 
them? Yes, it will. Oh. Will it kill? Yes, it will. Thanks to SK Rossi, though, able to clean up. Hella instantly on the trade. Hell Ranger there to respond, but Amaterasu at range still proves to be ruthlessly efficient. Possibly deadly. 2v2. Right to Ace comes out Here the corner swinging. Hell. It's when he's trapped in the corner. Is he <laughs> at his most deadly? And Amaterasu finishing off Hell Ranger will bring velocity even more momentum. Yes, the 9 3 curse is very real, and all of a sudden, the 9 3 curse looks like it could be a very difficult position for the remaining members of Global. Oh my goodness. I don't know if that's dangerous or just wild because Velocity Gaming, they just let the entire zoo loose. They're sending everything down, they're sending creatures summoned from hell, prowlers, trailblazers, seekers. All sorts of wild animals just raining upon the B-side and Global Esports are forced to relinquish it. They have no way to stop Velocity from entering. They can't even retake this one because of the orbital strike. And that is a massive utility dump that Velocity Gaming just pulled off. Revealing area. Will they be able to there do it again are. though? Global Esports are actively trying this time to take fights on the edge of the long skill. Taking matters into his own hand, taking names and kicking ass. SK Rossi looks to do the same. Right to Ace is flirting with danger over there, but he flirts back. Lightning Fuss, he's got a thing to say of his own. And SK Rossi continues to chime in from above. A flawless round wow. by Global Esports. And Wild Wild West turns into Chennai. I love that from Global. I love it. You've got Velocity, who are currently probing to see where the aggression works. Global, to make sure Velocity don't get comfortable now, are just gunning it. They're fighting when and wherever they can. And it means that Global don't get a chance to adapt. They never get comfortable. They're always guessing. We even saw from Skills there, he's almost a fountain by the time he takes that first duel. At which point, of course, Velocity don't expect him to be there. And once he gets that, gets that first kill, Velocity, they lose all presence on B. They feel themselves forced to attack on A when they're already moving into the awaiting arms of both SK Rossi and Lightning Fast. Two players who, frankly, I would rather play against anyone other than them. <laughs> oh, of course, everyone wants to avoid them like the plague, but SK Rossi, he just cannot avoid the limelight. He's catching them off guard. He's catching all the fame, and unfortunately, Velocity Gaming can't catch a hold of this round as it slips away from them. And Global Esports inch closer and closer to winning map number one. They're not that far away from victory. They can almost taste it. They can feel it within their reach, within their grasp. And the Matarasu, right now, he's losing his touch. He's trying to figure out how can Global Esports counter us. Trying to figure out all the things that can go wrong and account for them. What would you like to see from Velocity here? I think the same utility dump is going to work, but they don't have nearly enough ultimates to invest after this thing. Yeah. Global Esports can't be sent back. I mean, they would much rather give up map control than give away the man advantage, and at least that's going to help Velocity Gaming go for the plant. And I think that's something that they should settle for right now, take things one step at a time. They can't afford to win the round if they can't even afford to take the site, and I think that's what should be their focus right now. Just get to the site somehow, push Global Esports back on the basis of your utility, and hope, pray that their post plan positions are potent enough. Because so far, Global Esports have realized that if they play aggressively, if they take the battle to Velocity Gaming instead of holding back and just waiting, then Velocity Gaming cannot do anything. And this victory that Global Esports just pulled off is just going to fuel the fire. It's going to add more coal into the mm. flames and pour some gasoline. Hell, maybe even jet fuel on it. Have you ever, have you ever actually set fire to jet fuel? How do you think I'm going to get my hands on jet fuel? You can make it. it, it it's perfectly easy to make. Okay. But, um, well, okay. Um, well, uh, well, I have made jet fuel. Fun fact about jet fuel: um, when you set fire to stuff like alcohol, it's sort of like, like you, yeah, you that's can something watch I've the done. Spread. Um, when you when you set fire to stuff like petrol and jet fuel, uh, it, it it all ignites instantly. And so what it does is, from the vast amount of air it sucks in, it makes like a mini explosion. So that's why you never ever light fires with stuff like gasoline, like jet fuel, and stuff like that, because you, you physically can't control it. 
So, uh, but there's can health and safety tips from Creme de la Creme, by the way. Can, can, can it melt steel <laughs> beans? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not the one to ask. <laughs> oh, Kremer. I gotta figure out how uh, you figure so out how to trouble. make shit. I, yeah, we, we indeed are. But hey, it's gonna be worth it. Oh, Excali, look at this guy. He's looking to make some trouble of his own because he's already qualified for the APAC. Uh, Excali's imitating the snake and uh, Antidote is trying to be that uh, flute guy. Oh, by the way, uh, do you know about snake charmers? You might have seen a couple of them uh, on Nat Geo I, 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 I know, I know of them. Like, I know what they do. Hmm. But... Now, I kind of feel like Global Esports are going to be the snake charmers and Velocity are going to be the snakes. Global Esports will give them a false sense of security and then just strip that blanket away, leaving them exposed and vulnerable. That's what happened in the last few rounds, right? That's the only way I can sum it up. Velocity Gaming think that they're all nice and safe and they dump that massive amount of utility, push Global Esports back and prevent the retake. But then when Global Esports decide to push the envelope themselves, Velocity Gaming are left speechless. Now, I think that's something that Global Esports can repeat again. That's a formula that should be written on the walls and copied down by everyone on the side of Global Esports and they should just use it like their mantra. Shine, chant it as much as possible and push it off. They're so close to victory, they know they can sense it and with this renewed confidence, I think they're going to be pushing much, much harder. They absolutely are. Um, I believe this is turning into a brief technical pause. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to remedy it quickly, which is why we're struggling to fill a little bit at the moment. Um, is there a specific player you were expecting to see a little bit more from who've had, who've had quite a quiet game thus far? Um, maybe MW1? He isn't exactly having a quiet same. game. I was going to say the same. I mean, he's not exactly having a quiet game, but then we know he can do better. That's because he's such, yeah. such yeah. he has set such ridiculously high standards for himself. It feels mm -hmm. like he's having an off day when he can't reach them. Yeah, it's what I find uh, quite interesting is the fact that at the moment we have um, sort of lightning fast who's playing out of his mind. And the issue uh, behind that is MW1, he's not playing badly, he's just doing average. But you can't do average when Lightning Fast is playing well. You need to really step up. So there's still time left in this map. You know, the Knight is still very young. We're still on map one. I want to see MW1 step it up. Otherwise, we're going to be seeing Lightning Fast just pull ahead and dominate. Lightning Fast has always been that dominant force, but I kind of feel like he's very momentum dependent. We saw in phase two how if you shut him down in the first few rounds, he's going to have a quiet game throughout the series, not just that map. We've seen him go from having 20 bombs in a series consecutively to just waking up the next day and not getting more than 10 frags in any map. And he's seen bad days like those. He just can't afford to have another bad day like this today, especially when they're in the lower bracket, when elimination is at stake. And keep in mind that none of these teams even expected to find themselves over here. These two teams were the top two last time. They're the favorites in the country. Mm -hmm. to find these two in the lower bracket and have relatively newer teams like Enigma and Orangutan in the top two, that is something that nobody expected over here. Mm, you're right. I, I'm really interested to see if, uh, as uh, when we move on to uh, Breeze, I'm really interested to see if MW1 is able to sort of get the one up on Lightning Fast because for me, Breeze, I've, I've seen Velocity play it kind of two or three times now and every time the player who does well is MW1, he's the one who leads it. And then it's actually Deathmaker who takes a sort of step to the sidelines. Um, now, with Breeze being our second map, I wonder if Lightning Fast can actually match MW1 on Breeze and if so, a GE2 becomes a very real possibility. This is assuming they even win blind. I'm kind of worried about the whole Neon pick over here. The Nightfall hasn't really provided much value to this team. Every time they've used it, sure, they got information and sure, they got a couple of kills. But their opponents can just hit right back. There's no repercussions to getting hit by that Nightfall except for having your it's audio reduced. It's so reduce can't do, right? Yeah. 
the SOA can reveal and whatnot. Sure, you're going to have your audio cut off. You might have your position revealed. But then again, getting a position revealed doesn't mean the end of the world, especially when these guys have their backs against the corner. They're going to fight back regardless of whether you know where they are or not. Well, that's probably why Hellfighter has been having a little bit of trouble. And you can see the kind of plays he was trying to go for in the first half, right? Every time he's caught behind the smoke or he's cut out from the action, he tries to use the haunt vertically so that hopefully someone gets revealed and he can get a freebie through the smoke. And that kind of a play style is preferred by several SOA players, but the haunt is just so much easier to destroy than the recon dot. And he's been trying to implement that yeah. SOA kind of play style into Fate, but it's just not fitting in. Something I want to highlight, actually, I, I realized that um, we, we, it was about two, five minutes ago we spoke about uh, jet fuel. I just threw a mm -hmm. loop back to it. Um, would you like a uh, fun fact uh, about um, sort of fires and stuff like that? Is sure, sure. Hair, hair smells awful. It truly smells terrible. Like, if, if, you, were, if you were planning on uh, ever, ever lighting fires, whether it be like a barbecue or anything, do it with a long stick. Because genuinely, I cannot think of a worse. Not only is it absolutely terrible in smell, it sticks to the smell sticks to stuff. So your clothes, like that, they bin them, bin them. It's I really cannot begin to emphasize how bad hair smells when it's burned. Like I, I really, really don't what recommend can, it. What kind of life have you been leading, Kremer? I I want to know how you have such random tidbits of information. It seems like you've had quite an adventurous life for you to know all this. I mean, I, you kind of seem like an arsonist right now. I honestly, a lot of it consisted of getting really bored with very outdoorsy housemates. <laughs> and um, we <laughs> it's sort of, uh, you can say it either went uphill or downhill from there. I haven't decided yet. But <laughs> we're back in yay. We're back in Crips. As Velocity, just a mere couple of rounds away from Global, Global. Only two away to be able to take the map. Velocity, going very fast. Way. Oh, Frenzy does a lot of damage to Hellfire, uh, and we avoided them. Gap of Hell Ranger, but then Hell left suddenly puts a full stop to the sentence. All of a sudden, Global have to go and get ready. Potentially, the Sheriff. It hits and it hits hard, but as does Rossi, Deathmaker. Player, we said we wanted to see him from in a 1v3. Oh, Velocity Gaming, they got their backs against the wall with almost no weapons to work with. They just threw themselves into the beast side, hoping that enough bodies being thrown at the problem would solve it. But Deathmaker has a massive task ahead of him. He's got Hellranger on one side, he knows where SK Rossi is. Now figured out the position of Lightning Fast too, so he's got all the information in the world. But he spotted SK Rossi quite some time ago, and little does he know that SK Rossi is already behind him. If he was quicker a few seconds ago, he could have escaped from here and probably tried to go to the A side, but he has a little chance left. of making that plant happen. But so far, he's cornered and now he's buried. The global esports are on the verge of taking this map away from Velocity. Really, really strong stuff now. And as you look over to Global, Fans starting to get a little bit excited. They realize, okay, map one is a very real possibility now. They're just a uh, hop and well, skip. That's it. Oh, we could hop and jump, maybe. As <laughs> Global get yeah, dangerously close to closing out their map pick of Bind. For me, considering the last time they played against each other, it was a 13-1 victory to Global. Velocity, they've done enough. <laughs> this is redemption, even if they lose it. <laughs> even if they lose it. Global are just a hop, skip, and a jump away, but for Velocity Gaming, this is a massive leap of faith. And they have placed faith in their spear. That is going to be Deathmaker heading towards Shars, hoping that he can find somebody from Velocity. I'm sorry, hoping that he can find somebody from Global Esports, extending, or if not extending, just probing this region. But so far, Global Esports have given them nothing. Okay. Except for Hellranger and B Long, nobody on Global Esports has aggressive positioning. Everybody is playing from their default and the safest angles marked. They know for a fact that Velocity are going to get desperate and Global, with touching distance of victory, don't want to give up this victory that they've worked so hard Standing to ahead. acquire. They would have assumed that this would be an easy game, but Velocity did make them sweat. I just hope that Global Esports now do not Threat. They do not regret any action that they take, any overextension they make, and Velocity Gaming 
Well, they are the ones looking for the cake, but they don't even have a morsel of bread in their it mouth. 30 seconds left. No information acquired. No map control left. taken. They've got to do it all, and they've got nothing but a knife ball headed towards them. Ranger, he falls. Here comes a showstopper from Lightning Fast. Got up in the hookup. He actually points oh. to the center of help. MW1 going for the opening. MW1 able to double down now. Sends out those paint shells. Left. Able to do a little bit of damage to separate Rossi and his teammates. His skills going the long route, taking the extra swell block. But is that enough? Is that the play? SK Rossi still wary of the flank, which means skills is isolated, alone, without friends, but without hope, though. Death Maker falls 2 on 4. What a way to take the first map if this can be converted. Rossi, he knows aggression is likely. Trying to hold this close angle, inviting a peak now, inviting a mistake from Velocity. There's a swing, oh, there's the no. opening. Skills good for the first. Suddenly, Velocity are bleeding a little bit. Right to ace, though. That kill came at the perfect moment. Skills has to ace, but Helleth won't let him. Three rounds on the bounce. This is by all means doable. <sighs> But it didn't seem doable up until like the last 30 seconds of this round when Velocity Gaming decided to just wake up, dump everything they've got. The Nightfall did help them to some extent, but what helped them even more is that massive satchel jump that he did out of hookah. MW1, he's got spring in his feet and probably a jetpack on his backpack, but that flight helped him quite a lot. But that's not something you can do very often. It also came down to the fact that the person he was facing had his pants around his ankles. But will Global Esports falter once again? They can't afford to do so. No ults for either side as well. Which means that we're really going to be seeing a, 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 a difficult position to come now for... Oh, uh, look at this. Lost sites. There's the aggression, lightly fast for one. Deathmaker to trade. He knows there's another player here. That boom bot location reveals lightning fast. He just about escapes using both blast packs and I believe the shells as well. Rossi elsewhere. Judge, jury, bad execution of a Deathmaker. He wants to give Rossi a run for his title. Three on three. Velocity now desperately trying to find an opening. Anything, something to give them an advantage. Oh, wow. Rossi has five HP, but that does not matter. The chamber difference is real. Deathmaker out of the round, potentially out of the map now there's velocity a left in a 2v3 yeah but global esports were completely aware that this was just a ruse just a fake they only made sk rossi go over there and everybody else stayed towards the side left. in case velocity gaming decided to swing but now that they've collected the spike they need to plant it as well and sk rossi is probably not gonna let them do so but instead of going for the plant look at what mw1 is doing he's trying to go to his dt instead knowing full well that sk rossi is isolated Smoke somewhere down. towards showers but what they don't Still know is here. that he's repositioned himself towards you halls and showers is completely safe. Oh, but the swing Still wide, right to ace. He's going to put a bullet Open in his face. And with that, he's got the orbital strike One available as well. Eski Rossi gets burned alive as right to ace channels his inner arsonist. Hell Ranger needs to be the conqueror over here. But right to ace will embrace this victory. Keep his team alive for one more round. What a round from, from Velocity. However, the ults are coming online. Do you know what's going offline, though? That's the economy of global. We see a tactical timeout from Velocity here. I imagine Coach Sia is going to be uh, whispering all sorts of sweet nothings into their ears to figure out just what global need to do to, uh, uh, for Velocity to punish here. But uh, this, this game has overtime written all over it. I might like your grips. <laughs> oh, well. I'm not gonna lie to you, Kramer. I saw this coming. I expected nothing Did but you? a three mapper with an overtime in every single game. That's what yeah, almost happened like in the previous series as well. Harder. I mean, your life's harder. I'm still fresh. I'm still feeling myself. <laughs> oh, that's true. Right. Well, I, I suffer. You can you can go ahead and just talk about let's talk about Valorant. <laughs> oh well. Let's see what Velocity Gaming have been talking about. This, got, this round got much closer than it should have been. I mean, sure, Global Esports decided to take some initiative to its Shahs, something that they haven't done before, but Velocity Gaming, they bounced back from it. They came out on top. That made things better for them. And 
Global Esports realize this, right? They realize that as long as they keep on pushing and as long as they keep on prodding and probing, you they're going to play, find success. Let's play. And it should have been the formula which leads them to the map win, but Velocity Gaming are proving it wrong. They're proving that this formula still needs some more calculations. Now, the only calculation that Hellranger should do is the amount of risk he wants to take. And with almost no money, the police will just look to make the lives of Velocity Gaming harder. They know for a fact this round may not be destined for them. You also know that right now, Global's economy is on the absolute Grenade. precipice of collapse. If they, if this is actually a make or break round for the Global. They lose this, yeah. it's over time. Purely because they'll have to go down to headhunters and sheriffs and whatnot. I want to highlight, though, is even if it does go down to the final round, Global do have an ult advantage. And it's one they'll be able to boast for a while. And Kappa, low HP. I really want to see Kappa be a little bit, a little bit more passive now. Purely so he can get the mileage from that hunt. Hunter's Fury. That was harassing. Perfect flash. There's the aggression oh. of the judge. There's the kill. And there goes the Hunter's Fury. It's now all down to the... Um, that's about to say it's all down to the Rolling Thunder. But that's also about the equation. Velocity, they may be very well be taking us to work inside here. Russell remain. from above, caught out by Rake's waist. It's all on to Lightning Fast. And he's got a nearly impossible task ahead of him. As fast as his reflexes are, there's just some tasks that cannot be completed, even by Flash. And he's just better off saving this weapon now. Oh, this figure won't even let him do that. And global Esports. They've got only a bunch of ultimates to work with. And sure, all of these ultimates can be impactful. They've got the Hunter's Fury, the Rolling Thunder, the Orbital Strike. All of these are lethal abilities. They're not the kind of abilities that you just give you information. They're not the kind of abilities that just create opportunities for you. They create bloodshed. They destroy things. This could be the end. Or the overtime once again. Oh, but yeah, I, I mean, there was a difference in this round. Global Esports didn't go all that aggressively in this, in this day. Yeah, I bet both Rush and Sentinel right now, the owners of Global and Velocity, I bet they they are currently breathing into a pa giant paper bag. Like, <laughs> grey hair is starting to sprout from every e smoke. every every orifice. And for Velocity, I mean, this combat is quite good. I like that. There you go. That's what we were waiting for. That fighter doesn't get pinged anymore, so he can play dodgeball around these laser beams and car parks. It's going to be so salty. That's one massive ultimate invested and no result found on the back of it. Global Esports. They didn't have much to work with except this one, and Hell Ranger's got his arms primed as well, ready to let this rumble loose as soon as he hears even a single footstep in his direction. And Velocity Gaming, their only objective right now is to bait out these ultimates, wait it out, make sure they don't give away the spike, and just hope that Global Esports end up using all of this so that there's nothing left for when the actual legacy happens. But time is off the essence of the year. And Hell Ranger, the moment he sees that guiding light, he's gonna throw away this massive ultimate. One kill acquired, left. another to follow up. Deathmaker avoids death for now, but he's not gonna be able to push up. Switches to the Headhunter, and he's not accurate around. But Hell Ranger, he's got the flash outside. Both of them whipping across just a little bit, but skills oh, picks up the base B. and the pieces. It's just yeah, right yes. to ace. Will he be able to get this round for his team? It seems like left. it's all done and dusted. He's gonna run out of time before he can ever recover the spike. And Global Esports will be able to shut this game down. Oh, what an anticlimactic win for this team. But they do it in the end, regardless. It was tough, it was labored, but Global Esports take the map. Climactic or not, the reality is the El Clasico, we knew full well that the El Clasico would bring us some quality Valorant. And I tell you what, for what is only that one, it certainly has not disappointed. Just a moment with my head for out of this desk, but before we go, Rips, do you think we're going to be able to play Breeze? Um, honestly, that's not a question I would answer right now. Uh, Velocity is right. the stronger team on Breeze, I believe so. But hey, Global Esports haven't shown us Breeze in quite a while, so they might be holding a couple of surprises in their Breeze. And with that, Global Esports are probably going to take a nice little huddle. Velocity are going to take a nice little uh, introspection check. 
look deep within and figure out what's going to happen. And I'm going to look at the face of my co-caster, Tanya, who's been joining me since the start of this panel. What happened? Yeah, me too. Uh, and map of mine, definitely I and Vivek had a discussion that if at all global esports is winning the map of mine, there's nothing that can stop them on the map of freeze. But on the contrary, Crips, according to our discussion, Team VLT has got the strongest hand on breeze. So do you think 2-0 stands an opportunity for the day? I hope it doesn't. As much as I would like to believe that global esports have the potential to finish this series in a 2-0 fashion, since it's Val Classico, since the stakes are so bloody high, I would want this to be a three-mapper. And I know I'm being a little selfish right now, but let's be honest, isn't that what the audience wants too? Not only audience, not only you. I believe the players also want to play a little extra hand. Oh, trust me, they don't. <laughs> they don't? At least global esports don't want to play uh, more. They want to finish the office. Global esports is at the safe bet. They wouldn't want to, but uh, Team VLT would definitely want to go ahead and win it out. But I would want to appreciate the way. There were several rounds which I want to make sure. Amit Rasu, the way in the round 22, went for a sky flash, got a double frag, and then moving away from there and winning the round. For a while, the momentum was all gained, and there was nothing that could have said that they might again not be able to do it. But then comes the round 23, the round of victory for Team Global Esports, where Skills and Hellranger cleared everything except for the one man, uh, which, which was not too tough to find. And five seconds for a dream to go ahead and plant the spike. And this dream stood no chance. Five seconds, and he also had to make a move. Oh yeah, some of these rounds came down to the wire, especially in the later half of this game when Velocity Gaming were just pulling the timer down to the bare minimum. And even Global Esports did really well in situations like those. They know that Velocity Gaming are looking for a pick, they're just spreading out, defaulting and holding all the angles possible. And the moment Global Esports try to go for any of those aggressive pushes, Velocity Gaming will try to punish it and then play on the back of it. And remember how I mentioned, like, I think it was somewhere around, around 17 or 16, I don't remember the exact number, but there was this one round where Global East was pushed out of B-Long, and they surprised the hell out of uh, Velocity Gaming. That was the round when Velocity was like, all right, we need to pull back, we need to start holding the defaults once again. And immediately after that, Global Esports flipped the script. They just pumped the brakes and make Velocity wait. They were forcing Velocity to execute in the last 30, 20 something seconds left. And that, at that point, there's going to be so much commotion that you will end up making a mistake or two. And that was round number 17, where, which you were mentioning to be... Huh. It was 17, uh, right? It was yeah. 17. You're absolutely right. They initiated with the Rolling Thunder, vacating the site. Lightning Fast was able to take down MW1, where he did go for an entry. He was put to shut down in terms of not love to use the show skill. Proper. But the revenge was later taken, uh, where he did not love lightning fast as well to use the showstopper and take down. So within themselves, the rivalry was definitely seen, spotted. They wanted to show who the best race was, and I re the the more stats will make it clear who the best race was. But definitely, global esports stood a step extra by not committing more of mistakes because we both know these two teams are few of the best teams indeed. By now, they were the only best teams in India. Yeah, that's the funny part, right? These two used to be the best teams in India a few months ago. Enigma Gaming, sure, they were doing really well in the previous VCC. In fact, Enigma was the one to beat both these teams in the previous VCC the first time. But towards the finals, Enigma faltered once again. Yeah. And now, a couple months later, after the souvenir land is done, once we are in SCS, Enigma Gaming is just so far ahead of these guys, they seem to be out of reach for everyone. They've already secured their slot at VCTA back, and very soon we'll find out whether they go to the play-ins or directly to the group stage. But before that, it is about uh, Global Esports and VLT. And even if they win today, still there's a long journey to follow about who is going to, how to move the second, uh, who is going to get the second slot. Let's head towards the highlights of the match. Oh, and there's going to be so many highlight moments in here. So, in the first few rounds, it was all even Stevens. Both the teams using somewhat vanilla strats to get into the sides, and even the postman positions were pretty normal. Nothing out of the ordinary. 
nothing to write home about. But after round number five or six is when we start to see the unique pushes and the brain games happen. There's gonna be this one amazing moment where in an eco round, uh, the members of Velocity just all jump into the teleporter. I'm sorry, members of Global Esports all just jump into the teleporters and they walk right into that thickest process. But Global Esports were like, screw it, we're not gonna let things take place at their own pace. We're gonna take the pace up and we're gonna turn it all the way to 100. They start aggressing so much, they start doing these bonanza executes at such breakneck speed that Velocity Gaming have no choice but to just give up the site and play for retake, which to some extent worked in their favor quite well. But after the few rounds that did go in the favor of Velocity were over, Global Esports just varied the pace back and forth so much that Velocity Gaming had just no idea how to play it. They were sometimes going for these breakneck base executes, sometimes holding things back, and that was just not enough. I mean, remaining. Velocity Gaming had no idea what to expect, so they were just kind of letting Global Esports set the tempo of the game. Uh, talking about tempo, those every time the tempo was hurt or hindered on either of the sides, except for round number 10, where exactly we are within 8 times from the side of Lightning Fast, and I believe this was the very first for the day and we hope we get to see many more. Then followed by this particular execute, it was an exchange of frags happening. But they did tend to get the control over the spike. And global esports never would allow an easy entry but also allow an extra icing on the cake. So the, the plant was denied to Again, the switch mode was towards uh, the sizes which happened Solo. once again and there was a little bit of confusion about they would want to clean into a side A, they did dump in some utilities and here is the round which you're talking One about where remaining. all the players Last jump player into standing. nothing but uh, the teleporter and the shed staff to some seven players. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what a round to even pull it off in, right? Just the pistols and you're gonna go teleporting around. That was a ridiculous run and I, I really like it. I like when teams try to go for these kind of approaches where they just throw off their opponent's balance, even if it means that they're going to lose the round. It's these mind games, it's these stories that you write, the narrative that you build in the back of your opponent's head, which are going to make the difference. But as we jump into the second half, Velocity Gaming, the execute is pretty clean. It seems like just the meta how these teams have adapted, that both of them are able to pull off rounds only on the attacking side. In Velocity Gaming, when they were on the attacking Down side, now. they used all sorts of utilities and the, you, uh, the, the sky and the fade abilities, the prowlers, the trailblazers, and the seekers, and all these sort of cabbage-like looking creatures flying at you to clear the area and lead the charge for them. Which is a very different approach from what Global East was taking, right? They were just setting up Lightning Fast for success, hoping that he satchels into the side deeper while his team is covering from behind. So, while both teams were able to get more rounds on the attacking half, the way in which they do it is just so different, and that's what makes this game so interesting. Thunder allowed one, one enemy frag remaining. followed by the Seekers as well and Flash saved the day by getting the frag and let alone Flash, there was the final round where all the work was done except one player was allowed to survive for a while but he was also left with only 5 seconds so that, for the last round, every single round a team DLT definitely took time and better time and better function, they tried to close in but for the last round, Global did not allow that. Coming back to, uh, to towards the scoreboard, we are going to see Death Maker on the MVP on the on the counter side. We are going to spot skills on the MVP. Well, if we compare the score, it both of them are just above one, a little extra for skills. And on on the other hand, the team were the the team which Global Esports possess of SK Rossi not spotted on uh, as a chamber not spotted on the mvp card still doing something more than what skills did no doubt average combat score is going to matter but if you look at the kd ratio which is more than what skills procured yeah the stats speaks for themselves and skills indeed is the mvp in a situation like this he was the one plugging the holes in the armor of global esports making sure that the chain mail has no open uh, open links 
Hill Ranger, on the other hand, he was not playing like his usual self. He's usually the kind of guy who will set up his teammates for success, but today he just took matters into his own hands. There were so many rounds where he was just flashing for himself, and he was only using his fault line as a delaying tactic, hoping to buy time for his teammates so that rotations could come in, the cavalry could arrive, and yeah. things would hopefully get easier. Things got easier for Global Esports, though. DLT played tank for quite a while, and it did work out well, where match point was denied for for two occasions consecutively. But realizing this time ticking is not working in, uh, with us for Global Esports, they decided to hold on to not move an inch. And ultimately, as soon as they realized that one side is going to be pushed away, they all joined in the party, except for Deathmaker, who was not sticking with the team. They all were washed out. Last player also got flushed out. And that is how Global Esports get, gets one map point. And uh, they are on the series point. They are on the match point if they win the map of Breeze. Let's see, is it going to be any breezy or it is going to be hot and humid? Uh, because having velocity on the other side, I don't think anything is going to be breezy, especially on the map of Breeze. Oh, don't even get me started on heat and humidity. I'm sweating bullets over here. And honestly, Chennai is a hot city, but you add to it this action. You add to it this bonanza of Valorant and the sheer amount of talent present in just one place, the heat is going to be infinitely stronger, exponentially stronger. Global Eastfields, my goodness, they were on fire all throughout. And even in the second half, when Velocity Gaming were kind of making a comeback, it was all very close. Velocity were always boiling it down to 2v2s, 1v1s. And those rounds don't do justice to how close this scoreline is. 13-11 seems like Global Esports were able to just edge it out, but it could have very well been an overtime. Yeah, and it could have. just on the basis of those last few individual frags, the last 1v1s and 2v2s, these outcomes were decided. And I mean, I wouldn't exactly want to call them clutches, but so many of them came down to impactful duels. Well, objective wins, if we talk about that in particular, it was all equalized. But frag potential, if we talk about, uh, Global Esports made a little extra. And uh, match stats speak for itself. And uh, really had clean plans. They had very uh, very perfect uh, very perfect time, time, uh, time outs that they placed. They also made the most use out of it. But Global Esports realized that they are playing on time. Now we are not going to allow them time. And literally, they did not allow. Because last man against which there were a total of four players or three players. And he had the spike control though. But reaching towards the side stood no chance. So Team Velocity had a very brilliant plan, genius plan of rushing and creating chaos and commotion in the last 40 seconds and it worked every single time except for this particular round. Yeah, except for the round that needed it to work the most. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the, I, I would like to point out a couple of rounds where that wasn't the case. They would try and boil it down to the last few seconds, played in a very Navi-esque fashion, but there would be moments where the spike would still be in base and these guys have already captured site control, which then required someone or the other to go back and collect it. And that is just such unnecessary movement. And mm. that's what creates these opportunities that Global Esports were able to exploit. And I just kind of feel like the placement of the spike and the carrier of the spike, if that guy was protected, things would have been a lot easier. But regarding the pace of the game, I was very happy with velocity slowing things down and i always like it when things are going in a very methodical in a chess like fashion hmm. well we have head to head comparisons hell ranger and amitrasu 181 exact combat score this is for the first time if i'm not mistaken we do see two points of buffer one points of buffer what sort of a head to head comparison is it as the days are progressing as the matches are progressing these comparison are, comparisons are getting insane yeah and these this acs is also calculated in a very unique way right for 
every kill that you get, mm. every opening kill that you get, you get more points. Every closing or exit frag that you get, you get less points. At the same time, it also really depends on how many enemies are alive on the other side when you do this and how many assists you have on the basis of your utility. So the way this ACS is calculated, it just kind of shows how much impact you've had in the game. And I kind of feel like both of these players being below 200 ACS doesn't do justice to these guys. Okay. Sure, the game takes data, only numbers, when it comes to calculating ACS. But you got to consider that the reason we are comparing Hellranger with Amaterasu is because both of them are the IGLs. And the brain activity is not something that the game, uh, that the game can measure. They can only measure the impact that they have created yes. inside the server, but the decisions that they make are what make this game beautiful. Absolutely, and if you have a look at the player stats right now, it is Death Maker. Well, he did pro, he was uh, in general Death Maker for several times, saved the round pretty well, cleared the site, and uh, he uh, he's having almost KD of 1.5. And which is which is tremendously good. Any player above one and in, at this stake is going to be great as well. But they need to level up because the competition is going to is going to be leveled up. In, indeed, it is going to get multiplied. So they need to make sure that they give a clean uh, they give a clean improvement, self improvement as well because they are doing very well, still losing. And to no mistake, they, they create no mistake and still losing with one map, one round. So uh, let's see how the things are going to pan out for the next map, which is going to be Breeze. But then again, Global Esports are not going to be too salty about losing Bind. The fact that they were able to make a comeback from 9-3 to 13-11 itself is a pretty big deal. And sure, they might have lost the map, but this was Global Esports' pick. And the fact that they're able to make Global Esports sweat like this is a good thing. Which means Velocity is more than prepared for Breeze, mm -hmm. their own comfort zone. I just hope that Global Esports also don't start mounting comebacks like these. The fact that they're in the lead kind of indicates that they don't need to make a comeback in the first place. But Velocity, they are the masters of Breeze. And especially in the last few months when the new uh, variation of Breeze has been in rotation, these guys have just improved so much. I can't even begin to think about the agent selection on Breeze because Global Esports, while their agent selection is more or less staple, Velocity keep changing things up. Especially with the role reversal between Right to Ace and Hellfighter, with Right to Ace picking up the controller role and Hellfighter picking up the initiator role. There was this time when Hellfighter used to play Cypher on Breeze and he was just so bloody potent. He would make the entire team go somewhere else while he used to play alone on A halls. And when he does that, he's able to command so much respect from the enemy team. They have to commit through or two or three members in that region just to keep Hellfighter in check. And with him pulling off two, three members of the opposing force towards himself, the rest of the map was just left open for his team to exploit. And sure, he may or may not pick up the Cypher once again, it may or may not be in meta in Breeze anymore, but Hellfighter's killer instinct can make that performance happen once again. He can replicate it regardless of the agent he chooses. Well, once again, as we are talking about agent selection, I would again want MW1 to go ahead and be the Neon because he has been playing Fracture pretty well with Neon. And though Fracture and Breeze are equal and opposite, we can say they are exactly opposite polar uh, places, but still, he has done good work playing Neon. Let's hope he is able to continue here or whatever he is comfortable with, because now they have to they have to jump out of comfort zone to get the victory. If they don't, Global Esports is going to wipe them away. I think instead of the Neon, he probably is going to be better off picking Jet or the Reyna. Keep in mind that MW1 had played Reyna in a map like Icebox before, and yeah. that is much less conducive to the Reyna. And in Breeze, when you've got the Leer, which covers like such a long region, I think that's going to be still pretty great. So let's see what he chooses. But I'm still pretty sure the Chamber is going to be picked up regardless. The second operator available on a very large map like Breeze is going to be very impactful. 
And in this game, we saw both the chambers pop off, right? There were several rounds where both of them have regular operators in their hands and two of their forces in the pocket if required. Yeah. And they were just holding onto the two of their forces for like two, three rounds at a stretch until their economy was broken. So, yeah, I think I would love to see the chambers once again. Now, whether Deathmaker plays the chamber or whether MW1 plays it, it's most likely going to be Deathmaker. Deathmaker. Yeah. But then again, MW1 also has the potential to pick up the operator and start fragging out, right? So what happens when both of them pick up the double op setup? That's going to be disastrous. And my question would be SK Rossi has been playing Jet quite too well on the map of Breeze. And uh, we did see them uh, losing a map like Breeze where they are pretty comfortable, getting pretty comfortable. And I would want to see if he's going to go ahead with a staple pick of uh, Jet or is he going to go for a chamber because it Jet is definitely helpful when it, it includes verticality and which is a map of verticality. Now, Chamber is also going to provide same off angles uh, with the TP points that he is going to place in. So, I believe if they want to win the map of Breeze, Rossi should be going ahead with the same pattern, going ahead with the same Chamber. And yeah, I do love his Jet's play, but here they are for the win. I, I would want to go ahead and get him the chamber pick. When Global Esports played Breeze against Orangutan, both the teams had this problem. They were able to cut off, cut off each other's rotations. When Orangutan was splitting up, Global Esports, uh, especially when they were on the attacking side, they used to hold elbow quite a lot. And after Global Esports hold elbow and after their teammates have made contact with a halls, these elbow players would then try to sneak into top mid. That's a pattern that Orangutan felt victim to. But on the flip side, Orangutan used the exact same pattern against Global when Global went on the defensive side. And I'm pretty sure that Velocity will have been watching this game. This pattern of Global Esports playstyle on Breeze has already been revealed. Will Velocity be able to make anything out of it? Will they be able to counter it? Or if not necessarily counter, just avoid it? They are going to create some new notes for themselves to make sure that their answer, sh answer sheets is better compared to what they did in uh, against Orangutan. But coming back to right here where we are discussing about the map of Breeze against Team VLT. VLT has been performing pretty well and uh, as we have discussed beforehand as well, they are the very first one initiating by, by the pick of map of Breeze and starting to win towards victory and much more, but they have lost as well. And they have lost against uh, Team Revenant, if I'm not mistaken. And losing against Revenant, who's not, who, who are already uh, into the elimination, and now it, it, it is into the global esports part. Do you think they are going to fall prey or are they going to be the monsters here? Um, I can't exactly tell that they're going to be the monsters, right? I still assume that this is going to be a pretty closely contested game. There's no way in hell that a game like Breeze is super one-sided. The only one-sided Breeze game that we have seen in this entire tournament so far didn't even happen on LAN. It happened in the online phase where Global Esports was making... Ex I, mean, I think it was Exili Esports or maybe Kumbu Esports, one of those two. I do believe it, it could have been Kumbu Esports. And they absolutely destroyed them on Breeze. And that was the only one-sided Breeze game that we have seen in the entire SCS. We haven't seen anything that one-sided on LAN. And I'm actually happy about it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see one-sided games on LAN. I would want these games to be as close as possible so that our audience over here inside the arena can scream their lungs out. And they have been doing so, right? They've improvised as well. Uh, I do believe Suki from Global Esports, uh, their owner, he has recorded his own voice on a phone and he's now playing it via a Bluetooth speaker instead of screaming out himself. Now, that's pretty creative, right? You still get to cheer for your team, but you still get to conserve your voice. He, and has, he has already lost his voice. He, yeah. He, because he has been supporting with the way right now, GE fighting, and he needs to conserve because Global Esports have got an upper hand already, so they have to fight furthermore. And GE keeps on fighting, but on the other hand, are we going to feel the velocity? Oh, are we going to feel the velocity? I definitely think so. But given the amount of noise being made in the arena, I do believe that Global Esports have the more energetic fans right now. 
maybe the fans will feel the velocity when we feel the breeze itself. But for now, we're just going to wait a little bit longer till we hop into agent selection. And while Global Esports do not seem to be that chill, even though they've uh, taken the map, it's Velocity Gaming who are just waiting for their time. They know that they can shine once again, and Breeze could be the game where they make it happen. Velocity have already seen what Global Esports can do against Orangutan, and Orangutan, let's be honest, were the more unpredictable team. Global Esports, on paper, are supposed to be more predictable than, yeah. than Orangutan, and Velocity must have done their homework. So, I want to see what happens. I already pointed out the elbow tactics of Global Esports. I already pointed out the Hellfighters tendencies on uh, on a, a Brown Halls. So both those teams have something or the other that is public knowledge, that's available in the public domain. What do you make of this information now? Everything is open, but do you think the brain of uh, the coach is going to be open? They do have some unpredictable moves, and today it's going to be... Uh, what we call the final exam where they are going to use everything to be in the action to be in this tournament and they are going to put or flip all the cards open at least for these two teams i'm pretty sure they are not going to leave for enigma i did mention it to you Crips, that they are going to save two hmm. but for team vlg and team ge this is an elimination round with a lot of pressure. There's nothing that they are going to reserve for the future because they are here now for saving the future. And when you have to save it, you have to save it 100%. Oh, and there's several ways of saving it. Speaking of all those waves, let's explore a few possibilities over here. In the past, whenever Global Esports have played Breeze, especially when they were on the attacking side, they love to default and they use mid quite often which is quite the opposite of what Velocity like to do. As much as Global Esports like to exploit the middle region, mid being the pillar, the double door and elbow, global e that, that's Global Esports, right? Velocity, on the other hand, love to explore the A-Halls region. And they do it in varying styles. Sometimes they just flip the switch, open the door and try to crunch the A-side from both the areas. Yeah. Sometimes they will just want to get as close to defend a spawn as possible and pick off rotations. Both of those have different results, but it makes their lives easier. If they're trying to go for the A-crunch approach, they must try to block out the doorway of A-halls and just use that timing window to crunch as quickly as possible. And if they're trying to go for the rotation pickoffs, then their teammates must make as much noise towards B as possible to bait out those rotations from global esports. And yeah, sure, while these two options are available to Velocity, what do Global do in a situation like this? Both the teams have such a different approach to their attacking side on Breeze. And uh, Global Esports is going to start on the defender's side. Hmm. So. All right. Global Esports starting on defense. Mm -hmm. One very cool thing they did against Orangutan was whenever Orangutan successfully took mid control and Global Esports were not able to contest it, Global Esports, they just played from the back of sight. If they're on the B side, they will play from either Berlin or from Arches. If they're on the A side, they will play from the orange box and they will give up the pyramids. What this does is, while they're relinquishing mid control to this team, they're focusing on the B connector and the A double dose region instead. Okay. They're not letting the A main and the B main uh, areas okay. affect them at all. Mm. I mean, even if Global Esports come through A main and B main, they can still stop them from the position that they are in. But, I'm sorry, if Velocity come in from A main yeah. and B main, they can stop them from the positions they are in. And Global Esports, being on the backside, they relinquish map control deliberately, but they play hard pincers. And uh, it worked against Orangutan. I'm not sure if it can work against Velocity Gaming, but it is a solution that can be viable. It is a solution that they can pull off in dire circumstances. And they have to do everything that, that is required to pull it off. Let's see if they are going to repeat this. Because today, on the map of Breeze, I, uh, it is my personal in instinct that uh, we are going to see something unique coming in from the style side of global esports. And VLT is still going to stick to their own basic rules until and unless they are going to create something. Once they realize that uh, they have lost a lead or they have lost the economy, 
and uh, talking about global esports rossi we did mention in the noon that he is on number one position in top five with the best of headshot ratio having on his opponent side which is death maker now who pops off more head yeah velocity global esports sk rossi death maker these two names have been spoken by every single caster in this country so many times <laughs> everyone is aware that these are the top two players but there are two rising stars as well mm -hmm. while sk rossi is the guy in the spotlight lightning fast is doing all he can to fill his shoes yeah. mw1 went on a year-long break to complete his education that's when he left velocity for a little while and deathmaker was doing all the heavy lifting himself but now that his educational responsibilities and IRL responsibilities are taken care of, MW1 is here and he's here to kick some ass. They uh, both have been helping their shining stars so much that they might become the stars themselves. And while they may or may not be on the number one and number two positions of the leaderboard of this tournament, they have more than enough firepower to get there. And we did mention about how Orangutan had a damage ratio of about 50k. Well, Lightning Fast is crossing the marker of 60k oh, shit. Yeah. to 65k. So what we talked in the noon is all wasted out, Crips. We have Lightning Fast on our screen, who is supposedly now the maximum damage dealer. Well, also MVP for the four times, for blood 50 times. And KD ratio, what else do we have to compare? Which is almost alike. It's kind of unfair, right, how this guy, Lightning Fast, has 10,000 damage more than MW1, but MW1 still has 10 more first floods. And if you put 10 kills together, you've basically done just 1,500 damage, yeah. which isn't all that much. No. But because the impact frag of a first blood is so damn high, the damage numbers just simply get dwarfed in comparison. That is a matter of fact for sure. And uh, if we talk about the agents that they have been picking, KO and Raze, Neon and uh, Raze. Raze is also a delivering extra bit of a damage in terms of their utilities, KO as well with the frag. But Neon now, after being nerfed, is not delivering that sort of a damage. So I believe that is also something where... Uh, the damage must be counted and indeed it is counted we are again at the map veto global esports must, must be feeling proud about it their name stamped on the map of bind Whew. that's a big beautiful stamp right there in a lower bracket when all the pressures against you having that map advantage can lift so much pressure off of your shoulders and they know that they're on velocity's map pick so even if they lose this, they're not going to be feeling any bad. But, yeah, because they've got that little sense of security, they might even try to pull off something unorthodox. Oh. Maybe they can try something new, which they've never done before. And in this land phase of SCS, we've seen Global Esports play more Breeze than we have seen Velocity. True. So, while Velocity have the advantage of keeping their strats hidden, Global Esports, even if their strats are out there in the open, even if people know about their tendencies, they can always switch things up. True. You have to switch it up. Something unique, you have to pull it up. Something strange it no which nobody has done homework on. Now what is that going to be? We might be we might be able to picture it out once we are open with the agent selection. But right now we are open on the player stats, Hell F uh, Again, we do have the KDR of one. He has been playing a uh, commendably well role of an initiator. May it be Sky, may it be Fade. And he has also delivered the almost damage of 50,000. Though 3,000 away without a doubt. Because Sky and Fade cannot deliver damage with their uh, utilities. It is all about the firepower being done here. So, talking about kills, which is on point 250. And... Uh, First blood, 15. And a headshot ratio just 2% away from SK Rossi. It seems kind of weird that he's only got 15 first bloods when 
his teammates have like 50 or something like that. Now, that does seem kind of bad, right? Yeah, that does seem like, okay, okay, I don't know what it is about, but somehow, Hell F has been doing pretty good job, and he's also he's also using his utilities to get the site entry, let alone get the site entry, post plant as well. And uh, he has been doing more than he shall. Huh. Okay, I think I have an idea about why his first bloods are so less. I mean, consider this. Everyone on Velocity Gaming has uh, MW1 as their primary fragger and Deathmaker as the designated lurker in the form of chamber. If MW1 is assisted by his teammates, he's going to go ahead, get all the frags, blah, 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 boost up his first bloods, pad the stats. If they don't find anyone in the place where they are going, if MW1 and his teammates don't find any other person, who else is going to find the frags? It's going to be Deathmaker on the other side of the map. Surely, like, let's say if they're going towards A, they don't find anyone there. The only option left is B, right? And that's where Deathmaker is. He's lurking. So if MW1 doesn't find the opening frag, it's going to be Deathmaker who does it. That's probably why those two guys have all the opening frags in the world. And Hellfighter, since he's always the second guy to enter, since he's been playing the initiator, that's probably why he has less number of first bloods. But he does get the trade down every time. And that's one statistic that doesn't show up in these numbers. I think there should be something that we do. I mean, this is just general feedback for ourselves. This is just me speaking to myself. Maybe next time we look at these stats, we should also try to look at some of the other number which measures how many trades were successfully pulled off by these players. How many times did they fail to get the trade? How many times did their teammate die in rain and revenge wasn't exacted? If that stat is available to us, it could mean a world of difference. But then again, I mean, it's, it's not something that we can do, right? It's something that the game will have to do for itself. Maybe an API or maybe a stat tracker. I don't know. This is just feedback for Riot, I guess. <laughs> Give us some more numbers. Give us something more to build storylines out of. Globally, sports and velocity... When we see these two teams together, it does ring up a lot of nostalgia in terms of casting, in terms of viewing, in terms of being fan of both the teams, appreciating both the teams in all the manners possible. And now, we, talk, we have discussed enough about Breeze. Let's talk a little about the map of Heaven. And uh, Heaven is again going to be initiated on the defender side for Global Esports. And uh, Heaven is pretty clear for Global Esports. There's no, no uniqueness happening there. If there's something unique happening, it, it has to be the map of Breeze. Oh, I love Haven. That's going to be like the absolute neutral ground. And in the previous few series, we've said that Ascent is going to be neutral ground, which cannot be predicted and stuff like that. Haven, for both these teams, is going to be the most neutral ground of them all. Every single time, these teams have faced each other. They have always played Haven. And, I mean, how many times have these guys faced each other? Probably like hundreds of times now. It's yeah. called Val Classico for a reason. Because these teams keep on playing each other very often. And I'm sure they guys, these guys must have faced each other at least 10 times in like 10 different tournaments. And every time Val Classico comes up, these, time, these teams will have some of the other unique maps. But they always have Haven. True. So, when we get into Haven... There's going to be so much historical context to discuss, right? There's going to be so much that these teams know about each other. How do they even keep on innovating? Sometimes you don't have to innovate anything. It is just the normal recipe that keeps on working. And uh, that recipe is d delicious. And the name of the recipe is Victory. Let's hmm. see who is going to have that delicious victory for the day by the end of the day, who is going to go for the celebration. Because, yep, if you win this, it calls for a celebration. And Global Esports, are they going to go for a 2-0? Or, or are they going to see the map of heaven? If they are seeing map of heaven, I don't see any uniqueness coming in from that side. But, 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 if at all, Velocity had to do something unique out of it, uh, what would you say? 
Okay. I don't know what exactly Crypt has to say about the uniqueness on the uh, on the map of heaven coming in from the side of velocity. And ladies and gentlemen, casters are ready and so am I for the second map of El Clasico. And I hand over to Kramer and Crypt. Good luck with the casting because you are going to need it. And please go ahead with the agent selection. Oh, thank you so much for the lovely welcome, Tanya. And uh, I would like to invite my friend Kremer to whisper some sweet nothings into my ears. How are you doing there, buddy? Uh, after, a, after a big delay, I've had a chance to do a bit of research. And I'll tell you what, buddy. Oh, Breeze is going to be right. a hell of a map. A of hell course. of a map. Of course, of Losty, uh, they played against uh, Global, uh, not the last time we played them, the time before that, in the best of five. Breeze went 13-8 in favor of Velocity. Um, what I quite like about Velocity's uh, Breeze, particularly, is the utilization of MW1 on that Neon. It allows for some very, very fast plays. So that, for me, is a player to keep an eye on now as we move into this matchup. What I'm really surprised by is that SK Rossi has chosen to go for the Reyna instead of the Chamber. They've picked up the Cypher, but... I would have fancied a double sentinel approach as well. I wouldn't have been completely against it. But no surprises on the side of Velocity Gaming. Sure, we have seen this agent composition from them before. I would have even expected Deathmaker to pick up something along the lines of Arena. But SK Rossi on Arena is not something I've seen very often. We've seen him on Chamber, we've seen him on Jet, but hey man, I would love to see what this guy can pull off with the Mexican monster. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to enter the second map of the WoW Classico. It's Breeze, it's the beaches, and let's see if we can see some heat. Raider does sort of favor Rossi's play style, though, doesn't it? It allows yeah, it does. sort of maraud around the map, lurk a little bit more as well. And when you do have Lightning Fast over on the Cypher, the static defense gives Rossi a lot more freedom to move. So I'm going to be really interested to see how that works out. But for the time being, Velocity stacked out outside A, looking to slowly make a few inroads to this position. We've already got a Viper Wall in place. Up that will Here comes the attack. No messing about here, Crips. Let's get to the site, get the spike down, and then kill some global members. Oh, Velocity have already deployed MW1 into the depths of the A site. The spike is yet to make its way to the site. Hellfighter will go for it. And this is going to be a 5v5 retake. MW1 extending well beyond the safe region. He's been detected by the fragment and he's going to be forced out by skills and utility who does dispatch him to the nether realm. Can Deathmaker send some more people to greet MW1 over there? Will the nether realm be populated with more members of Velocity Gaming or will Global Leaf fill it up with their own populace? Hellfighter lose the duel against Flexi Boss, and that's gonna be their cue to inch closer and closer to the defusing point. Oh my goodness! One second, three wow. frags, and all of Velocity fall at once! Make that, make that half a second, three frags. That was incredible. It was like one player got like over three bullets, or, or three kills yeah, with one bullet. Like, like every single, around. every single one of them won their individual duels. Yeah. And now, now that we have Global starting pretty damn strong, Velocity definitely needs to be a bit careful. They need to be a bit wary. Remember, this is they're going into this a map uh, down. Yes, it's their map pick, but you can't give Global more than an inch because they will take a mile. Uh, you said you wouldn't give me a prediction. Now you've been pissed around. Do you feel like you're inclined to do so? Um, I do feel inclined to say that Global Esports can probably finish off, uh, finish this off in a 2-0 fashion because of the Asian composition. It's unique, I haven't seen it before, so maybe Velocity won't expect to be there. But right to A, expect Hell Ranger to walk down that corridor. Despite losing the pistol round, Velocity Gaming have invested quite a lot of money into this one. They really want to turn the pistol momentum in their favor and make sure that Global Esports can't run it off. Oh, but Shields is running MW1 out of the server. He's chasing him down to the Dreadnought Realms back again. This Toxin Screen that's been deployed by the members of Global Esports, it's going to cut off any lines of sight that Velocity Gaming have. And this is making their post spawn positions kind of redundant. From this position, Velocity Gaming really can't do all that much to, to, to stop the spike from being diffused. And sure, they don't mind losing this round, but if Global Esports keep on using this Viper Toxin Screen again and again, Velocity Gaming are gonna have to come up with new post plant positions, or maybe yep. kill the Viper before the before the plant even happens, so that uh, this vision denial isn't really something to have to worry about. 
we, we do see quite often the sort of retake setup on A with the Viper Wall, and as demonstrated, it works so damn effectively. I am really looking forward to seeing how Velocity adapts to that. For me, the main thing to highlight thus far is the fact that skills, his Viper, this tournament, particularly in playoffs, has been incredible. And that was a second round four spike for Velocity. He goes round three, he's got to be another eco. Global are going to farm a lot of cash here. Oh, Velocity can get up to full power. Okay, so they do fall back for now, but lucky they haven't really taken any casualties. Global Esports on a bonus of sorts here really want to close the distance before they can engage with Velocity. That's why they're going to use skills as quite a ball. Close the distance, and SK Rossi, he doesn't just close the distance, he makes sure the Mothra closes his eyes for good. The Leader Point once again, and he just pops off. He's pushing through all this green goo as if he just doesn't care about his life. He only cares about picking up some kills and kicking some ass, and that is exactly Exactly what he's doing. Spike dropped in no man's land. Hellfighter, he's gonna have a lot of difficulty trying to recover it. Both of them have been detected, and any surprises that Velocity could have thrown their way are now gonna be caught for nothing. One enemy remains. Lightning Blast though, he doesn't need any flashbangs, he just needs bullets, he needs his trusty guardian and some targets to shoot at. Hell left now, left alone in a 1 versus 4, just trying to hide, hoping that no one finds him, unfortunately. The Bloodhounds of Global, they just hands with that. Hella, he's taking someone with him, unfortunately, it's just not enough. With that, Global are going to continue a very dominant start here, but now, at long last, we finally see the full bite, the velocity. But at this point, Global gets play bonus. Yeah, yet another bonus round for Global Esports. This should have been their bonus round if Velocity didn't decide to riskily go for the force in the second round. But yeah, Global Esports are going to be happy with this one. They're like, yeah, sure, give us as many rounds as you can. We'll take them up every day and twice on a Sunday. Interesting camera there. Camera taken out. I haven't seen it just yet, and they might have been able to hear it, but lightning fast. All these innovative setups are going to keep Velocity Gaming on their toes, who in this round are looking to dip their toes deeper into mid. Let's see what the water is like. Deathmaker on the rotation needs to be very careful of Hell Ranger for the time being. Can't risk a fight. Instead, Velocity, as they make a push through mid, Revealing you can area. see a lot of utility deployed here. That's a really nice recon bolt from Kappa, able to garner some information. But so Global aren't really fighting for mid regardless. So Velocity, they have made their land grab. The question now is where do they pivot? Where do they then go Flashback. with mid control? We're seeing Amaterasu just fake a little bit over to way, and it's done it. That flash is perfect. It's pulled two players away. Just now all onto oh, a very no. lovely Hell Ranger, who's called out, and now Global needs to high tail it. They need to get straight back to this A site. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to Toxins, retake himself. Oh, the Toxic Queen is not going to create all that much cover for this team. But MZF1, he doesn't need cover. Left. He just needs blood. Amaterasu wants some action as well, and he's going to participate in it. Global Esports have been played like a fiddle in Velocity Gaming. Want to keep the music flowing. Oh, they want to hear it again and again, and Global Esports might just have to Getting save this ahead. round. Unless they can get a kill onto a Matarasu, or maybe even up the numbers in some way, this is most likely a done and that's a drown, and Global Esports will probably have to concede this one. Kappa still looking to push the advantage. Of course, why Stop shouldn't down. they? They've won three rounds in a row. They've got more than enough money, so they down. can afford to continue fighting this one and push the envelope. Lightning Fast has been waiting for a long flank, but right away is well detected. And at this point, Kappa will probably just save. In this case, he'll probably just go straight to his grave. Oh, but Kremer. Uh, this this round, oh my god, I have to feel so bad for Hell Ranger, right? You, you, you look at this, Amatras who's just throwing flashes towards B. Under normal circumstances, if Velocity just throw flashes, just throw utility towards the B side, without really committing any bodies, Global Esports wouldn't fall for the fake. But in a round like yeah. this, Hell Ranger had already pushed out towards A main, and he hasn't seen anybody. So when those flashes start to pop towards B, and he doesn't see anyone on A, they think it's real. The rotations from Global Esports take place, and then Hell Ranger dies, and then they realize, oh no, we've just been bamboozled. Oh. Oh. Jesus, so good, man. He is so good. Remember as well 
that, as you mentioned, that round shot, it did come down to, um, did it come down to some bad time for Hell Ranger. But I want to highlight the fact that it was still a bonus for Global. Velocity now definitely on the back foot and if Rossi's taking shots like that then I'm certainly feeling fairly apprehensive as to what Velocity are going to be able to do on their attack remember Breeze is a fairly attacker sided map the rotation times between A and B are so long you need to pack a, yeah. you need to pack your hiking bag to get between these sites and that's something that we've seen in attack sites exploits time and time again but exploits are what avail in Velocity's case because Global I mean let's be honest it looks like nothing's going to stop them Boys, the toxins going up. So far, Velocity Gaming have found absolutely nothing to work with. The mid attempt at land grab resulted in them just turning this area into a landfill of dead bodies. As they now look to move towards connector, SK Rossi lies in the wait. Thirty seconds left. Tamathurasu awaits One his enemy fate, remaining. and Lightning Fast will dictate the pace, and he will not only do that, but he will send them straight back to the next round, straight back to spawn. Global Esports get all the advantage back. You see them shouting a lot as well. They're hyped. They realize that 2-0 is not only a possibility, but a likelihood at this point. And for Global, remember, they, I believe, were the champions of the uh, first event in Mumbai. They've got a title to hold. Whew. Mumbai. Global East was able to lift that, the truck. That, that was a damn good play. event. Let's play. And yet the energy over there was just as high as it is here, but Global Esports back there were nearly undefeated, lifting the trophy. Right now, they are fighting for their lives in elimination, and sure, they're on the high ground. Sure, they've got the advantage, but they cannot afford to look downwards. Because if they do, they might just stumble off this cliff. The angle oh, that Eskerossi are holding is just so narrow. That maker finally shuts his killing spree, but this Hunter's Fury isn't doing all that much. Sure, it's going to clear out some of the more common angles, okay, but Global East will still have this fight. They're holding on to it with an iron grip. Hellranger, he doesn't just go for the grip, he will rip their heads off straight off their shoulders. This is, this is heartbreaking for Velocity. It's like Global, they end up being pushed back. Velocity's executions and their setup for executions is just perfect. But once it actually comes to shooting people, Velocity, they, they turn into conscientious left. objectors. And Global to punish them slightly fast for playing with his food there as he brings Global another fast win. Whew. Look at the crowd just chant Hell Ranger's name, Bhavan Kutwani, his real name. I mean, gamers don't really refer to each other by their real names, but when the crowd is just chanting your name like that, you just cannot help but feel so powerful. And Global Esports are feeling exactly that. They've not only exercised control over this ace site, Hell Ranger with that lovely spray down was able to destroy Velocity's economy, and they're back down in the economic dumpster. They're gonna have to dig their way out of this one. And it's a long, steep Here. climb. I hope they've got their hiking shoes. Oh, Kappa? Look at his position there. The timing. Kappa's in such a strong position now. And I, I, don't, think, I don't think there's anything Boys that Velocity really could do to get him out. Because he's already in a exactly. crossfire with Rossi. And Velocity, I think their best option here is actually just ignore it and go away. Which... I think by maybe by a little bit of luck here, they are they are doing just that. They're setting a few players through mid. I like the flank of death makeup. They're really trying to exploit the fact that velocity, oh that global, sorry, are uh, being really really passive at least on what is surface level for their defense here. Oh, Amaterasu goes for the solo peak. It's just simply area. not enough to break the spot by a top off. He doesn't even need any backup. All of this is enough. Enemy even remaining. Deathmaker's flank towards the top of it has been taken care of. And this is a flawless round. Velocity keep all their guns. I'm sorry, Global Esports keep all their guns. And with that, their economy is just going to start getting stronger and stronger. Meanwhile, Velocity, they've just about climbed out of this economic dumpster. And they're just on the edge. A little push is all it takes to send them back there. I'm really curious now to see if uh, there's if there's any solution for Velocity. They've got five rounds left of the half. That is by 
all means enough time to recover, adapt, and then even end the half fairly successfully. But this is big bats. They have a buy here, nothing else behind it, and they're already a player down. Kappa is going on a rampage. We've got no one on Velocity oh. who's stepping up to the pedestal. No one who's matching this pure firepower and output. Oh, Kappa was not smoked up. They had a clear line of Welcome sight. Velocity thought they were safe as they were trying to make the cross, but that's what they say. Always look ways before you cross the street, kids. And Hellfighters laying out all the bodies on the street. Maybe this is exactly what they needed. A 3v2. These are about the best starts that Velocity Gaming have had in a while. And this Viper Spit can definitely help them solidify the round. The Hunter Beauty should be able to clear out some of the common angles that the Viper can hide inside, but so far it's found nothing. SK Rossi has also been taken down. 2v2. It looks like finally Velocity will be able to put up another round on the board, unless Lightning Fast has something to say about it. Kappa must make sure that this Owl Drone tags right to Ace. If it tags him, then he's gonna be a Toss dead man. Down. Unfortunately, the nerf Fight makes planted. sure that the Owl Drone doesn't have enough range and these guys will be safe inside their pit. Timing's gonna be everything here. One oh, enemy remaining. Is. There's the opening. Now it's down to one very lonely Where Viper in a one versus hiding? two. Right to Ace. This would be perfect. There's the ping for the Cypher. They know he's hiding Toss in the pit now. Down. Ace. Timing is just going to be so difficult here. He actually leaves the pits. Is this expected by Kappa? It doesn't look like it is, remaining. but slightly fast falls regardless now. Kappa dancing around these pillars, desperately hoping for right to ace to make a mistake. Just stay up, himself at the wrong moment. But he switches guns, he bundles in. Right to ace brings Velocity their second round and a beautiful 1v2. A beautiful one indeed. Velocity Gaming needed this. They were being starved of rounds, starved of money. And this power that they were inside will finally be lifted off, courtesy of Right to Ace's strong, capable shoulders. But the pressure that's mounting on these shoulders is insurmountable. Will they be able to handle all this? Will they ever crumble once again? Keep in mind that while Velocity Gaming have won this round, it just takes one more win from Global Esports to send Velocity packing back to below poverty line. Oh, and they're in such a precarious position right now. Such a delicate, fragile economy. One I'm pretty excited remaining. to... I mean, yes, it's around one by one. Here's remaining. the thing. They had to commit the Viper Spit to that. And it feels like that Viper Spit came as a bit of a Hail Mary. Yes, it worked. And for Velocity, if it means turning the momentum off the base of a Hail Mary, then so be it. Yeah, that's what Hail Marys are for. My worry is how frequently can they mimic that? How frequently can they get to that site, get that plan, and then end in a 2v2? Oh. But this round came on the back of some massive ultimates. They're not always going to have these. They're not always going to have a wiper spit. Not going to have enough fuel in the first place in that toxin screen to create a safe avenue for their team that they can use the fiber to venture inside. And the fact that they are not able to cover up this mid-region means that Kappa can once again go for spray downs like those again and again. He did it in the last round, there's absolutely nothing to there's absolutely nothing stopping him from doing so again. But this time, Flight. instead of sending more people from mid to double doors, Velocity Gaming are still hanging out towards the right hand side of Filler. They're digging it nice and slow. See, hoping for an opening here. It's an MW1. Just shoulder peeking occasionally. I like how Velocity, once they actually have their land grab, they go really quiet. They really yeah. want to hate Global into fighting here, which is impressive considering how Global actually haven't shifted. They just haven't moved. And it takes some real uh, steely determination to be able to do that. But regardless, Global real dedication there and i like how they've kept their cool despite the fact that velocity are dumping util 30 seconds left now velocity they have to hit this beast site and for rossi he's had a quiet left. few rounds he's hunting Push. for some kills and my god his dinner about to arrive spike down b to arrive but he's got a big appetite already opening his mouth wide to swallow mw1 hole even lightning fast wants a piece of the pie and this has been served to them on a silver platter. Left. Right to Ace has no time, no space, and absolutely no HP left. 
This is their worst fear coming true, Kramer. We already established that Velocity Gaming, if they lose a round, they're going to be back in the economic dumpster. And they find themselves there yet again. They've just been dwelling there constantly. They gave Rossi too much space there. They yeah. allowed him to just dance around these angles and fight again and again and again. And, again. and as, at which point the rotation's Last already come in. Standing. Remember, the defensive breeze, it's not killing players. It's not getting them off the site. Because the amount's so big, they're getting to a site if they want to. Your job is to delay for the rotations to come in and then spring a retake before your opponents can get into an after plant. That is exactly what Rossi did to the nth degree. And for Velocity, as you saw, even when Rossi fell, any other map, that site's taken. Suddenly it looks very even. But because the rotation's are already there, there was no response from Velocity. And now that you're making another deep in road through corridor here, it's going to be another split to A. But his thing no is way, already there. Run. There's already a full max in this but Yes, there's 100 oh. But will that even stop Rossi? Oh, absolutely not. Keep in mind that this a hall region is something that Velocity love to exploit and in the past this has been their win condition. Uh, but this is the first time they're choosing to exercise any execute based off of this brown hall region and even when they do so, they don't find any success. Sure, we can account for this loss to the lack of weaponry, but Amaterasu sees an opportunity. He's gonna go for them both, turns around to get the shot onto Eskirossi as well. And this is the mistake that Velocity were making for. An opportunity has been handed to them and Velocity cannot afford to let go of that. They cannot afford to have a butterfingers moment. Velocity, real difficult position here. They need to find a kill and quickly. 20 seconds isn't enough time to get this Viper to the site and to plant. Skills. All he has to do is get one kill here, and it has to be the planter. And that's the round. There he is. There's a big there's a kill. There's a planter. That's the round. Global. They are playing so oh, oh, oh. perfect Valorant right now. And as they finally get to the site, Amaterasu, <coughs> no worries. The blank's already there. This is in. This is the global that we were expecting to see in the group stage. We are expecting to see day one playoffs. We are expecting to see day two playoffs. But no. They took a moment. They brewed. They simmered. They boiled. They brothed. But now. But oh now, Crips. Have we seen a monster emerge. This monster loves its steak rare and bloody. They take their time to simmer it cook it Revealing and area. serve it in a way that entices your taste buds right here that makes you relish this beautiful game and right now global esports are relishing the amount of map control they have kappa has tasted this place before and he wants to make sure that he can deliver some justice again oh ho, ho. mw1 slides into sk rossi's crosshair but his teammates Revive Amaterasu and take the B site. After what seems like an eternity, Velocity have some map control to show. But there is already a flank coming in from skills. And if this one goes unaccounted for, it should be a disaster. Skills has already killed Ace. Amaterasu does bring it back to some extent, but they are yet to face the captain. Hell Ranger tagged and finally bagged. Velocity Gaming are able to put up a round on the board, and it's about time they did so. Here's a question for you, Crips. Mm -hmm. Shoot! The 9 3 curse about to happen again. Oh my god. You know, I, I, I'm the kind of person that doesn't believe in superstition, but because it's happening so often, I think it's a sign. I think it's a sign from the gods above and maybe even Satan below. Double up setup. May, may, yeah, global, they definitely want this, uh, this ninth round, that's for sure. They want the cast. <laughs> you want to play? Let's play. This double option should indeed be a blessing for Global Esports, but Velocity Gaming are going to be staring at the wrong end of the wrong sniper. They've got both the avenues covered. And that's why they've been, they've been so patient. Global Esports, usually they split up across mid, but this time almost all of them are towards the A site. While they have people watching the mid pillar region in case Global East was decide to go for a push, they haven't really they haven't really taken the initiative to push out there themselves. So Rossi Gaming this time are waiting for Global East Boots to make their move. Hello Ranger. Damage where he can. 
does back off though, and with this plant going down as well, it's a little bit of scatter damage to velocity, but they got onto that side relatively unscathed. Skills going very down. aggressive, sees that there's hardly anyone in position here. It's going to be spotted to the initialization. MW1 fragmented out of position. That teamwork is breathtaking over in mid. Lightning Pass catches out the flanker as well. All of a sudden, Velocity, they desperately need to get back what? onto the site. But how can they do so? Global, they're falling over it. They kick the Hornet's nest. And now Global, oh boy, they swarm. Huh. Like moths to a lamp, Global Esports just stick to the spike. They cover Hell Ranger while he goes with the defuse, and they act like human bodyguards, protecting their queen, making sure that their hornet's nest is the one that's the biggest. And just like that, all attempts from Velocity to take this round have been failed. They were so happy when they managed to plant that spike and get back into aim main, get back into post plant positions. They even made sure that in case Velo uh, that in case global esports deploy that viper toxin screen that locks them out of aim main, they're gonna have someone or the other on the flank who has an angle, and that someone was right to ace, but he just missed the timing. He wasn't able to get there, and SK Rossi is gonna get everything, destroying MW1, decapitating him. He's gonna find Amaterasu as well. He knows he's got him cornered around the other side of the pyramid. Hellfighter is here to provide some backup. But will he peek ahead of the Stockton screen? No, he wants to. Amaterasu knew for a fact that oh, SK Rossi will get a little greedy and he wants to punish his greed a bit more than just wrath. There is absolutely no slot in Hellranger today. Suck in a 1v2, but he's got all the odds in his favor. Time has passed, and he's managed to isolate Hellfighter as well. Oh, this is all coming together. Oh, no. Can't use this. Oh, Can't use that. Does the this is so Can't much for Hellranger. He has had such a dominant game so far. Gonna try and smoke the spike, try and buy a bit of space and a bit of time, but even then, is that enough through the smoke? Hellranger trying to find an angle. Can't quite find it. Right, so he wins it, but my. God, that came close for comfort. Oh, too close for comfort. Ball down to a 1v1. Hey, but this is exactly what they needed. This is exactly what Velocity Gaming were hoping for. The 9-3 curse is only a curse if you can win the pistol round. If you lose it, well, then the other team is just going to steamroll over you. And then probably once again, Velocity would have had to go for a force spy round like they did in the second round. Just to keep things equal, just that's just just to keep things competitive. Otherwise, global esports would have run away with the top. And now, with added weaponry in their inventory, can Velocity Gaming convert this? You know, for a fact, global esports want to upset the economic momentum right here. Maybe go for a full toss. And they've already snuck Orphan into the site. Minute. It's just SK Rossi who's made the crossing so far. Right to Ace may not be aware about this one. He's about to get caught off guard, but the position behind Berlin keeps him safe for now. SK Rossi's got the big gun and he's sneaking closer and closer. As soon as he sees Ace, he's gonna put a ball in his face. And Mazaras is about to catch Hellranger off guard, but no, Hellranger still lose the duel. That's all fine. He's keeping them engaged towards the A side. Meanwhile, the spike is already gone down on B. Look at the flanker skills as well. Even if this just buys time, that's actually all, all global need right now is time. Rotation comes in. Velocity going to get this pretty quickly. But Rossi's already there. Rossi's unstoppable. He's going to the next player. Give him another target. Line up one at a time. Rossi will put you down like it's nothing. swings out. Death Baker does finish the job, though. One person to do for him now. He's trying to garner some control when he can. Lightning fast, though. There to finish the job. And just like that's global they respond to a pistol round they really think they should have won and the player i want to highlight more than anyone at the moment yes rossi's having a good game but hell ranger is the one to step up to raise his head above the parapets and show exactly why this global side is one to not fear but one to rule oh you speak about the head about the parapet this is just hell ranger pulling off big head five head moves Keeping so many members of Velocity Gaming stationed at the age site away from the action while SK Rossi runs rampant and he wants to go for something like that once again. He somehow fumbles 
He even finds himself again, and when he doesn't, he dismisses back. He's the queen, the king of this court. He is the alpha and the omega, but Deathmaker puts him in his grave. This could be the opportunity that Velocity have been waiting for. Both the teams have a shabby buy, but Velocity are the ones who are more desperate over here. El Ranger, he's just using the uh, he's just using the cyber cages as another prison, which he wants to put Velocity inside, but right to Ace and Hellfighter might just be able to go for the prison break. This is the perfect fight. Lightning Fox being the board and he's scribbling all over the place. Just playing like a madman. And Lightning Fast, like the madman he is, avoids that recon down, finds the angle onto Hellfighter and denies him the satisfaction. This is this is turning into an absolute slaughter, Chris. This for me now is is it's gone from El Classico. It's ascended that. This has turned into Global's Jubilee game. This is the global that has dominated esports in 2017. This is the global which have risen above and beyond. Who in the 28 times they have played against Velocity have won that matchup. I believe about nine of them. They are so damn good and right now this isn't even full power rossi's having a quiet game by rossi's standards what on earth happens when rossi wakes up oh you better be sure that even when he's quiet he's Boys gonna be a silent predator an assassin in the dark making sure that he plunges velocity gaming into eternal abyss Right, two ways turns around, but not quick enough. SK Ross is faster and he's hungrier. Wins the duel against MW1 as well. And he's keeping everybody at bay. Velocity Gaming have no say in this take. Global Esports are taking it for themselves. And they are running Velocity Gaming out of the server into the hills. And once again, Velocity Gaming will be forced to save their guns. They don't even have guns that work, but it's only a Matras who's got a handle. Deathmaker's got only a Tour de Force which he can't carry forward into the next round. Hopefully he can retrieve a weapon or two, but I don't think these guys will be the crew that reaches map point first. Hell, it's gonna take way too much effort for them to try and push this game into overtime. The amount of energy that requires that to come true, I don't think Velocity Gaming possesses. it. Oh, they don't even possess the weapons that they were looking to save. Remember, Crips, this, is, this isn't just a game for yeah, points. It's not a game for stature. This is an elimination match. The winner, they are going home. The victor, they will play against Orangutan tomorrow to see who will get a space in VCT APAC. This is an opportunity that does not come by often. And if you're on Velocity, if you're on Global, if you're in the Val Classico, you desperately want to win this series and for global i mean let's be honest while velocity have given them a real run for their money on vines global now are looking like the kings the martyrs of sa valorant an instant execution to be the one side velocity have left completely unguarded and with their tail between their legs and a shoot regroup before they commit to this retake and in velocity they've already given enough time to open the game oh the no now. They start not like this we found our archer kappa nails her left to the wall it's onto the viper's bit of velocity but that's it for ultimate it's just not enough hurry for the next player amos rasu gets his trace but what the agree it's a back and forth, it's a two and fro. KO knocked down, down to the two versus three. Now Rossi able to get the next day of the matter. It's on MW1, 5 HP, but it's just not enough. Global, they knock out and eliminate Velocity Gaming. They go to the lower bracket finals, where they will play against the likes of Orangutan. Global Esports find an opportunity, and they turn this into the obituary of Velocity Gaming. Several times these teams have faced each other, several times Global Esports has tasted defeat. But when the moment of truth comes forward, Global Esports step up. And now stepping onto the stage is my dear friend Mamba. Global Esports still carrying on with the hype from Mumbai. Coming here, had to survive, had to win the match to save the tournament. But Global Esports once again coming out on top. Unfortunate for VLT, they've had a blow in Mumbai. Once again in Chennai, they're going to get thrown out of the tournament. Unfortunate with Bhavin, 
Can we have you up? Come up on the stage, where's Bhavan? I need to find Bhavan. Not quite sure where he is. Bhavan is here. See ya. Just a second. I'm gonna need Bhavan. I have to bother you for a second. I, I'm, I'm really sorry for this. But, there you go. Yeah. Sure, you're rivals in the game, but you share their pain outside because you've been friends for a very long time. You've been teammates as well yeah. in the past. While you're happy for your victory, but your heart reaches out to them. Yeah, I mean, I just told Anuj that I'm really sad that both of us couldn't make it. Like, it's the first time that we have not been able to make it or been in a finals. So, yeah, I mean, after two years, uh, it's sad that one of us has to go, but that's good for the scene, I guess. So, uh, yeah, props to them as well and props to everyone here. No, that absolutely means the scene is evolving, the teams are getting better, the competition is rising, but now you're still surviving in the tournament tomorrow. You go up against the Apes, yeah. and one more match and make it to the Apex Challengers. Yeah. Of course, a lot of work to be done, but this was a clean sweep. This was clinical. So there was some. Was there something different that you tried this time around? No, I mean we were just in the zone. We were calm, uh, and I think that is what was lacking the last three days. And today we were calm. We were all, you know, just talking and playing the game like it's a game and not like it's a, you know, fight to the death. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that worked out and. If we do that tomorrow, I think we can put up a good fight. Orangutan has one nil against us uh, in terms of series, so we are the underdogs. And I always <laughs> love being an underdog, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a nice storyline, but nonetheless, once again, congratulations. Hopefully tomorrow you have a wonderful match. But, Global Esports, can we have a huge round of applause for Global Esports, please? And for VLT, on my cue, can you make some noise? Make some noise, Chennai! <laughs> Tough luck, but nonetheless, we need to go back to the analysts who are waiting for us. So over to you folks. Welcome back, Tanya. You've been in the spectators, amongst the audience, watching these guys with unending amounts of energy just scream and chant for their favorite players. How are you feeling after watching all this? Well, I was expecting a 2-1 shot, but we did talk about there's one card. Indeed, there's going to be all the cards that will be unveiled. Now, Razer is going to make new cards, sure. There's no second doubt to that. But globally, for the Rossi as a Rena, getting operator flicks and picks. Who would have imagined? Not in the my, not even in my dreams did I think about it. That Rossi is going to go Rena and insane Rena, berserk Rena, rampant Rena, whatever you want to call it. I believe Rossi made it with the support of Lightning Fast and three other fellows. Yeah, exactly. The all the adjectives in the world that you throw in front of Rena are not going to be enough to just the amount of nuttiness SK Rossi possessed in his veins today. I, I, I was a little skeptical, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit skeptical because I'm used to seeing this guy on the chamber, right? Yo. And I thought, yeah, sure, with the chamber he can have a lot more map control, he will be a little more aware, and yada, yada, yada. I was thinking of all these things in my mind, but SK Rossi was like, screw it, I'm just gonna go, press W, press mouse 1, win! Easy formula. And I now see the potential of this Reyna, you know. I mean, he's just going on an absolute tear. He's going beyond his own teammates' toxin screen, sometimes to punish the other members of Velocity. Sometimes he's just going to be in his dismissed form. Like, you know what the Reyna does? She does this whole little kung fu action thingy. <laughs> he just does that. And he's dancing in front of, uh, in front of, Hell, uh, in, in, uh, in front of Hellfighter. And I'm like, bro, you don't have to rub it in like that. <laughs> That, that, that was insane, dude. Uh, he did sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper all together. <laughs> he was uh, the perfect chef to the recipe towards the victory. Congratulations, Global Esports, for moving ahead a step closer towards the second slot. Still a long journey to go, but nonetheless, VLT also gave a very tough competition in first map. But talking about second map, I, I did really would want you to put uh, perfect words to describe about what went wrong. Breeze is the strongest map of Team VLT. Exactly, that's what we all thought, right? But I think Global Esports this time had just way too much area to work with. There were several times where Kappa was able to get under the window of B main, and now he's got a crossfire with SK Rossi, who's opping from the B site. In the rounds where he's not doing that, he's picking off the members of Velocity as they try to walk from pillar to mid-double door, 
and they've got no smoke to cover their uh, to cover their entry into the double door region. So Kappa just goes around, sprays down two people, and at the same time, SK Rossi is present on the A side, and he's firing them from on top of the stairs. And because SK Rossi keeps on changing his position so often, his teammates make plays on the back of it. Like Kappa is not the kind of guy who usually goes deep inside enemy territory, right? It's gonna be someone along the lines of Lightning Fast or maybe SK Rossi. Hell, sometimes even Skill goes for those deeper flanks, but never Kappa. Kappa is not the guy who goes for these aggressive plays. Today, he's making those aggressive plays. Why? Because SK Rossi making him feel comfortable. Well, now we do have the scorecard to reveal something that we all want to know. Rossi was not the MVP on the previous map, but now he is spotted on the MVP cards with Rena. Now that is not so unique, yet too unique. I, be I believe you understood because we are too used to see him as a jet and a chamber. Seeing him on the MVP is nothing of uniqueness, but Rena and Rossi being the MVP stand something of uniqueness that led them towards the victory. Yeah, it's kind of a nice, cute little alliteration there, right? Rena, Rossi, redemption, revenge, oh maybe even a little shot at real glory. Who knows? Tomorrow they're going to be facing Orangutan and. Uh, that's going to be a much tougher opponent than Velocity were today. Let's see what these guys do against them tomorrow. But the unsung hero of this game, in my opinion, is going to be Skills. Is going to be? Skills. Skills. Now, keep in mind that Skills didn't do anything unique. But what I really want to appreciate over here today is that toxic screen that he put up while on defense. He puts up a toxin screen which basically cuts off A main from the A side. Mm. And every time Velocity Gaming go for the plant near the pyramids, as soon as they go back into A main or as soon as they go back towards those caves, that toxin screen basically cuts off the line of sight that Velocity have, in which case Blue puts in easily go for the defuse. Mm. Now keep in mind that toxin screen is textbook. There's absolutely nothing unique about it. But for that toxic screen to work, skills must have enough fuel. And he knows exactly when to activate it, deactivate it. And he's just playing it like he knows exactly when Velocity Gaming will be at their most vulnerable. He wants so much space for his teammates in the first half without even having to press his mouse button. He just pressing E, putting that wall up and down. Well, he did press a lot of buttons here because he's having more KD ratio compared to what Rossi on the MVP card is. But though plus first bloods, ACS, everything is going to get counted. And Hell Ranger being the uh, being the highest of AC, uh, highest of KD ratio producer here. Talking on the other hand, the death maker for sure. We were going to spot him on the under the spotlight. And if I had to give my uh, my words for Team Velocity, I would say there was a lack of team support. Deathmaker did, could not procure that those required first bloods, which were tentatively, supposedly to be taken by Amitrasu sometimes, or maybe Hell F, to be honest. And that work was done. Amitrasu also show, show, uh, show us some of the best pieces of his... Uh, Best of trigger discipline near to the caves, if you remember. He let Rossi go away. And oh, yeah. as soon as he saw Kappa moving in, he went for Kappa first and then just flipped, switched, took down Rossi. So exactly. Amitrasu as well gave the best of everything. But uh, today, globally, sports on the map of, of Breeze, they were above and beyond comparison. Yeah, definitely. The few rounds that Velocity Gaming were able to garner came on the back of some of these individual brilliances. The trigger discipline from Amaterasu in those caves where he was able to kill both Kappa and SK Rossi, that got Velocity one of the rounds. Then there was this 1v2 which Ace was able to pull off because of the Viper's Pit. That gave them the second round. Mm. Two more rounds they were able to garner. I guess one of them was the pistol. That's the third round that Velocity got. But unfortunately, they lost all the subsequent rounds after the pistol. So whatever momentum they gained was also destroyed. And, I don't know, the fourth round, they must have gathered it here or there, somewhere or the other. But out of the four rounds that Velocity did get, three of those came on the back of individual brilliance. If those brilliant moments didn't show up, if these guys didn't shine in those particular moments, 
this goal would have been something even more devastating. And the scoreline itself is devastating. How could have we accepted velocity with only four points? And the buffer massive. It, it is a massive victory for global esports. There's no second opinion there. But velocity could have done better for sure. And I exactly don't know what went wrong. But they are going to learn out of it. It is just a game. And they have played so many tournaments already. And now we are going to talk something about the, uh, the detailed match stats. If you talk about the damage. Closing oh. to the double for global esports. 25 percentage that is four percentage more than what velocity had and 10 frag finishes victories well that is indeed massive on the contrary we just fought three and objective rounds as well we do get to see total of three victories Th this is the map which i would say in the entire phase global globally sports nailed it yeah, we've never seen such a dominant win in the entire land no. phase now, have we? No. The closest that we have come to a one-sided game has been, I guess, 13-5 when Revenant lost. Yes. Other than that, I think this is the, I think this has to be the most dominant victory, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong over here, but I've never seen Velocity Gaming look this flustered, look this discombobulated. And Global Esports, my goodness, they were something else today. While I can't really blame Velocity Gaming for their loss because most of the times that they were making mistakes, it was because Global Esports were baiting these mistakes out of them. Velocity Gaming by themselves didn't have too many errors, but because Global Esports gave them a false sense of security and then ripped it apart when they think that uh, the opportunity was right, Global Esports basically made Velocity walk into a trap. And then they activate the button and Velocity fall down into the cold, cold abyss. It is the apt point which Global did, and I believe it was amazing to see Global Esports forcing them, forcing the players out of their comfort zone and setting up all the traps required to go ahead, get the victory, and they made it through. Now, tomorrow, if we compare Global Esports and Orangutan side by side, we are not going to give any any predictions happening because now I not today. predictions don't work. and. Uh, this is going to be the only Val Classico without an OT happening. And uh, they, because they, we have seen OTs, if not in hmm. all, we have definitely spotted in uh, one of the maps. Today, yeah. Global did not love in the map of Bind. On Breeze, there was no second chance that they could have even come closer. Because hmm. within the first half itself, they created the difference too huge to close up. Team Velocity did not delay try, trying to close it, but the more fierce they gave the tries, the, the slower they got. And this is such a stark contrast from the first game that we had today, right? Enigma versus Orangutan. Ooh. Boy, that game was something else, let me tell you. Over time, and then there was a super close second game. Third game was even more closer. It was just of non-stop anxiety attack that first match between orangutan versus enigma this game also could have been the same it could have been an emotional roller coaster for both these teams given the way that bind concluded 13 11 is definitely no joke and i thought the velocity gaming can easily bounce back from their loss because that was veloc um, uh, sorry because that was global's map pick and velocity never expected to uh, never expected to win that one in the first place but then velocity losing their own map pick breeze in such a disastrous fashion. Oh, you got to consider what else is Global Esports hiding in their sleeves. Maybe these magicians have some tricks still left that they haven't shown us yet. All the tricks, I believe, has been uh, show has been seen shown by the players today. Now the new tricks will be created because against them there are going to be new new opponents, and Rangtan is the team who has done a commendable work on the map of Breeze as well. Now, let's talk about head-to-head. Kappa, Hell F, 27 first bloods coming in from the side of Global Esports. And on the other side, we have got 16 first bloods. And if you have a look at ACS, now this is pretty close. Yeah, we don't see the exact numbers, which was 181 when we got to see about uh, 
uh, about Team Enigma versus Orangutan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was indeed the same, but it is pretty close here too. Yeah, the ACS is close, but then uh, the number of frags that Kappa has been able to accumulate in this series alone has put him much, much closer to all those people who are sitting yeah. at the top of the leaderboards. He's jumped up from somewhere less than, <laughs> somewhere close to 51 something thousand to 56,000. That's like four to 5,000 damage on a single day. And I know my math is absolutely terrible, but he's done enough damage today. He's been like one damage of the key. Dealer? No, he's not the biggest damage dealer, but he's definitely created space for his team. And he explored some new avenues today. I pointed out, right, that he's not the guy who will go and play in those aggressive forward positions. But today he did, because why not? They're feeling it. They're feeling themselves. They wanted to feel themselves. They wanted to enjoy the game. And I believe Breeze was the map where they had all the fun they could have because I was in the audience as well for a while hmm. and I was seeing their face smiling, their, their faces getting excited, the player getting up in the chair after the 3k sometimes, after the clutch situation, hmm. which clutch situations were very rare though, it was pretty clean, uh, it was a teamwork entirely, it was mm -hmm. not one player to, trying to go 1v4, unlike what we saw in the previous game, mm -hmm. in this particular game it was all about team support, Hell Ranger getting the best of uh, KD ratio in this map, Kappa following the lead, Rossi being a Rena. now what more do we want to see? Uh, exactly, <laughs> what more do we want to see, that's actually a damn good question. Oh. Shit, Tanya, you put me in an existential crisis now. There's so many things I'm, I want to see. There's so many things I'm just imagining in my head. All these violent, drastically, tactically advanced scenarios. Oof. Okay, I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to throw the question to you. What do you want to see tomorrow? I want to see the map of Breeze again. Breeze again. You want to see Breeze. You want to see Orangutan take on Global Esports in Breeze? Actually, that's a damn good plan, you know? If... Global Esports can beat Velocity in a map like this. And Orangutan and Velocity already have played this game before. Yep. And that game was pretty damn close. I want to see if Global Esports can beat Orangutan in the same dominant fashion. I think I would put Velocity and Orangutan on a similar power level when it comes to Breeze. Because when they faced each other on the same map, it was more or less... I don't remember the exact score, and but it definitely wasn't a one-sided game. It was still a pretty close game. So if Global Esports can dominate velocity like this by definition by association they should be able to dominate orangutan in the same manner but will they be able to do it but then now they have been studied already hmm. rena is no more going to work if at all they decide to go for the same agent fix there is going to be the counter rena as well so they need to prepare something overnight against team orangutan and i believe they might be having something and what will be that something that will be revealed once we are into that picture? Sure, we are, we are going to talk about it, we are going to think about it overnight, but today it was a clean sweep coming in from side of Global Esports, which was least expected from me. I was personally expecting trips that I will see 2-1 at least, without a doubt, but Global has their own plans, their own way, their own victories, and they are going to have their own ways to celebration, and it calls for one. Speaking of celebrations, I think there's another reason for you to celebrate today. For those of you who don't know, it's her wedding anniversary. So in the chat, let there be some love. Congratulate her. Well, thank you so much. I wasn't expecting that to go this loud. But yeah, <laughs> thank you for the wishes, Krips, and also to whomsoever is commenting. Well, thank you for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been a lovely audience.